is it's very important to get those numbers up to show what the grassroots can do and to show and to flex our grassroots power. I'm very proud of everybody who got involved with this film. So I keep everybody posted when the ticket sales go back up for microphone check and it will be on microphonecheck.com microphonecheck.com so we're waiting on everybody to get everybody pile on in some of the new people if you're new you guys give me a follow if you are new here you're popping on in the room give me a cool follow ladies and gentlemen a few things we got to touch on before we get calls Family, family, did y'all see the story? And shout out to my sister, Nikki the God. She um, she posted this story early on. It was a black kid in Georgia. Now, this happened about a month or so ago, but um, the family is still trying to get justice. A black kid went off with his white buddies and ended up drowning somewhere. He went somewhere with his white friends, a little black kid, and didn't come home. The parents got worried, found out this kid was with his white buddies and drowned. Family, black folks, black folks, black people, black people, black, black, black people. Family, let me talk to the, the, the black people in here. When did y'all start doing this, letting your kids just go off with the, the little white friends? When did, when did this start happening? I, I'm old school as hell. Do y'all remember when that was a no-no? Let, let's keep it a, a bean. Man, when I was growing up, back in the day in FBA society, that was a no-no. And for good reason. That was just a no-no. Look, I, I remember as a kid, I had a, a white friend at school. I was in like the fifth grade, something like that. Maxwell, big fat white boy, but he was cool as hell. That was my buddy. Maxwell, real smart buddy, real witty guy. That was That was the homie. And, um, and that was like one of my best friends at school. You know, we chopped it up all the time. And, um, you know, we correspond on the phone. And then he was like, hey, man, why don't you come? Ask your mom, can you come um, spend the night at our crib, at our house? And I asked my mom, hey, mom, can my, my buddy Maxwell, the, the little white homie, um, they want you to know if I can go spend the night over there. So like, hell no. Like, why? That's the homie. He's real cool. Just know. You'll understand when you get old. <laughs> So I remember she was adamant about not that because I got black buddies. I had black buddies. We used to stay at their house all the time. So we kind of back then it kind of threw me off because yeah, my, my the little homies we stayed at the house all the time. But she was like, no, absolutely not. Hell to the damn no, no. And our parents and grandparents at that time they didn't let us stay at our white friends' homes. They just didn't. That was kind of an unspoken rule. Like, yeah, you don't really be up in the house posted like that. And even black people, let's be real, black people who were domestics, a lot of our grandparents worked as domestics. That was another thing where black people didn't like eating at white people's homes. That was a thing. They didn't like, unless they were making the food, but they didn't, there's a thing about black folks not going to white people's houses and eating their food. That's why, at, and, and even to this day, at your job, when you're, you're black people, where you at? How many of y'all got a lot of white coworkers and then they bring stuff from home? They bring you little dishes that they made. Hi, Shaquisha. I made a delicious casserole. You should try it. It's for the whole office. Y'all know good and well y'all don't be eating that shit. Y'all sit up there and y'all smile, but y'all know good and well when they turn their backs, Y'all run right to the dumpster. Y'all know not. Y'all don't touch none of it to this day. You know you don't. And they bring that stuff to work. Oh, thanks, Karen. I'm. I'm a. I'm, I just ate. I just had lunch, but I'm gonna tear this up when I when I leave. I sure am. Mm -mm. Boy, your ass leave from work and drive right to a dumpster <laughs> and alley hoop that shit into the garbage can. You know good and well y'all don't eat that stuff. Yeah. So what the, the these cases I'm seeing where black folks are going to white people's houses and you end up missing, you drown, something weird happens, you go on a hunting trip with them and you don't come back. What the hell is going on? Well, 
Who's raising these? Fo- what, what, what? I'm confused. Are y'all tethers? What's going on? Where? Who's raising these people who don't know the rules? Listen, where I live, you know, it's kind of racially mixed. And my, my sons, they have white buddies and Hispanic buddies. And my sons be like, hey, can I go to such and such house to do a sleepover? Um, hell no. Why? You'll understand when you get older. And I just, I explain to them now. I don't even wait till they get older. I explain to them now, hey man, I don't trust them. But they're good, they're this and they're that. I don't trust them. No, no, no. I don't trust none of them. I don't, man, black folks, there's an unwritten rule. Man, you go up in a white person's house, they can literally legally do anything they want to do to you. You have no legal recourse for justice. When you get around them inside their homes, they can legally damn near do anything to you, black people. I really want y'all to get that in your head. You got to be careful. This is a very real thing. Don't let people fool you into this racial equality. And man, the people in the dominant society, they got unwritten protections. There's a common law of white supremacy. And one of the rules is if a black person is in their house, they can do whatever and most likely won't get punished. It has to be so egregious in order for them to get punished. Like Jeffrey Dahmer. Look how long it took Jeffrey Dahmer to get brought to justice. He It, it had to be just body parts piled up to the ceiling in this man's house for them to say, okay, yeah, we, we might need to arrest this guy. Because people, remember, Jeffrey Dahmer, people had been telling on him for years. The black people were telling the police, hey, man, this dude is weird. Something is off. Something's going on in his apartment. They'd called the police on that man dozens of times. They didn't do anything. In, in one situation, there were some black girls in the neighborhood. They actually rescued one of the damn victims. The cop came along and gave the victim back to Jeffrey Dahmer. You understand what I'm saying? When you are in these folks' homes, there's an unwritten rule that they're allowed to do whatever to you. Family, there's a case in um, West Virginia. Did y'all hear about this case where this white couple adopted these black kids and they're like, got the black kids living as slaves. The white couple just got arrested. They had black kids living in a barn during doing like field work. They had them like literally enslaved, like in the 1800s. They were... They were on that. This was in Virginia, West Virginia, right? It was a Virginia or West Virginia. Man, these folks are sick, dude. We don't. We got to understand what we're dealing with out here. We really got to understand what we're dealing with. Yeah. And letting your kids go off with their little old buddies, who's non-black, man. What are y'all on? When did y'all start doing that? I'm telling you, that was a no-no when we were growing up. Big time. So, yeah, we got to stop being on this naive kumbaya thing. It's very real out here just because these white supremacists are in denial. Just like um, the sister who was the FedEx driver the other day. We posted that story about this sister talking about certain towns in Wisconsin and Illinois where... They, they feel a certain way about black people coming into those towns. And as a FedEx worker, she has issues there. And she's saying that, hey, some of these places, some of these little towns, they, they don't really allow black people in there. So she felt a certain way about that. And then there were a bunch of white supremacists in the comment section. Oh, no, that's fake news. Oh, God, that's not true. Oh, that's, uh, that's cap. There's black neighborhoods that I can't go to. So what about that? What about the black neighborhoods? Let me say this. That's a damn lie. White people can go to any neighborhood, black neighborhood and all. There's not one black neighborhood that white people are not safe in. White people are safe everywhere. Let's get, don't, don't get it twisted. White people are safe everywhere they go. White people stay in the hood. They be in the hood all the time. All right. You name a hood, there's going to be some white people in there. 
white people are the landlords and some of the they they run some of the businesses and on the underground tip they be in there tricking off and buying drugs and all they always go to the little red light district don't let them fool you white people stay up in the damn hood all right there's no neighborhood where they can't go also we got to understand these sundown towns um these unwritten rules are reinforced by law enforcement in these sundown towns. That's what makes it so egregious. It's not just the regular citizens. It's the regular citizens um, with anti-black antagonism, and they're backed up by law enforcement. You understand? Because a lot of these sundown towns um, where black people would get hemmed up, it was the police helping with it. You understand? In many lynchings, it was the police helping the vigilante citizens. You don't have a a black version of that. There's no neighborhood where black people are working with the police against white people. Zero communities like that. None. Nowhere. Don't ever let them try to make some kind of um, equal oppression game by talking about some low income neighborhood that might be somewhat dangerous, but it's not dangerous to them. It's dangerous to people who engage themselves in street activity. But yeah, we got sundown towns out here and it's very, very real. We're going to get calls in a minute. Y'all hold tight. Ladies and gentlemen, we're going to get calls in a minute. Um, did y'all hear about Denver? Denver was giving out, um, and a couple of cities were doing this. They were giving out money to like homeless people. And I think in Denver, they were giving out like $1,000 to some of the homeless people there. They had some kind of program. And what happened was this kind of helped. It helped the city save money because a lot of the people kind of got up and um, used that money to get themselves together. So a lot of them got off the streets. A lot of them got it together to get gainful employment. A lot of them were not exhausting the resources that the the shelters and the mental institutions and places like that because that cost a lot of money maintaining them damn shelters so that little thousand dollars that they were giving people that low-key kind of boosted the economy because it got people up out of a rut so this is why the reparations thing is a great idea the reparations thing, man, when we get our reparations, that's going to boost the economy. That's going to be so phenomenal for the economy. The only problem people really have with it, just the psychic, um, psychological defeat they're going to feel that we actually pushed and got something done and implemented and we got a leg up, which is what we're supposed to get. So it's more of a psychological thing. It's not going to harm the economy whatsoever. Us getting reparations is going to be the greatest thing for the economy. That's going to boost the economy. That's going to limit a lot of exhaustive resources to some of these what I call abuse institutions because you have a lot of institutions out here that's maintained to systematically abuse us. So a lot of these drug treatment centers, we can dry those up because we won't have so many folks strung out because of depression. Some of these homeless shelters, some of the, the city and the state funds won't be exhausted maintaining those. The These prisons, you understand, we can kind of cut back on the, the resources going into those for-profit prisons. Um, some of these janky little predatory pawn shops and payday loan institutions that are um, very detrimental to us and exploitive to us. We can dry some of that up because that doesn't help us. You know, that that's to capitalize off of our um, being down bad to a certain degree. So us getting reparations will definitely boost the economy. So we really, really got to um, stay focused on that. All right, let me get... Um, we got a lot of folks in here. Malcolm, the mayor in the building. Malcolm, the mayor. We Yo, got, Rick, can you hear me? Can you hear I me? I can hear you, brother. I can hear you. What's going on? Yo, man, salute, bro. You know I'm a day one. You yes, already you know, are. man. <laughs> all day, all day. Uh, where you, a, what I'm city a, you in? Are you still in Atlanta? Yeah, yeah. You know, I, I live in Atlanta, but I'm part-time out the country, too, man. You know, we already spoke about the... 
the foreign the foreign domestic the foreign and domestic play man with the, you get the foreign money and you get the domestic money man were we you down start... in Costa Rica weren't you down in Costa Rica somewhere <laughs> man you keep saying that man <laughs> where was that I, I mean... forgot bro I forgot <laughs> for, for some reason Costa Rica keep pop you must love Costa Rica nah I'm in Colombia I'm in okay, Cartagena Colombia it's close it's there I knew it was in yeah South America. nah it it's with close a Right. Okay. Yeah. Then. Nah. Definitely, man. Listen to all my FBAs, man. But this is before I, I I speak what I came up here for. I just wanted to drop this on my FBA people. Listen, man. Dumb people fleeing and coming to our land, getting money. Let's go to their land and get money too. I'm traveling, and I brought uh, a couple properties, man. And I'm out here getting this Airbnb money. Let's get this money. Don't get don't get it twisted. The dollar, pesos, pound is all currency, man. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. All right. Oh yeah. Let me let me just say this, uh, Reek. Listen, man. We didn't need no help. FBAs to all my FBA people. We didn't need no help making rock and roll. We didn't need no help creating house music. We didn't create no help. Well, I mean, we didn't need no help creating country. What the hell do we need help for creating hip hop, man? Right. Come on, man. Come right. on, y'all. Right. It's, it's common sense, man. It's common sense. We created it. We did it. Them folks was there. Like I said, they was across the street looking around. They seen. They wanted to be down. They helped. They helped. I'm not going to say they wasn't there. I'm from Brooklyn, New York. They what? I'm not saying they wasn't there, but you didn't create it, bro. Please, right. do, Dr. Cologne or whatever your name is, stop. Stop. Oh, yeah. I land my plane, man. My man, I appreciate you. Thank you so much. But yeah, man, that's why y'all got to really support microphone check, man. Keep this truth out here. Yeah, the, 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 the anti-FBA tethers are real mad and salty because this movie has taken off. And it's telling the truth. Um, um, Renee? Yeah, hi. Hello, Renee. How are you? I'm well, thank you. Thank you for having me in this space and giving me an opportunity to speak. Absolutely. So what's on your mind, Renee? Uh, well, my my name is Renee. It's actually Melissa Renee Frobis, but I go by my middle name, Renee. And okay. um, I, I saw your space and I had an idea this evening that was so urgently important that I just had to uh, get online and share it. Okay. Um, so I uh, recently decided that um, after seeing the trends and everything that's happened historically and currently um, that I was going to run for president. Um, I have inter-ethnic children, so um, I have experienced racism in my life as a result of having mulatto children. And um, I'm familiar with the reparations discussion. And it's ironic that you were literally just mentioning this as I was coming on, um, because um, I'm initiating a campaign that um, is called CREED. And that stands for Crime, Reparations, Education, Economy, and Democracy. Okay. And the basis of my campaign is to, uh, so we in America, we've learned that we're free. We're told that we're free, but our government was created during the height of antebellum slavery. It's literally not designed for freedom. It was designed by slave owners who were intent on controlling the economy and the people of the country. And that entitlement attitude has continued in the government ever since. Um, if you look closely at uh, politics, you'll see that um, gaining entrance to politics costs money. Um, like, for instance, I live in California, and uh, when I found out that Senator Feinstein died, I decided that I was going to run it to fill her position. And that's how I discovered that in order to register as a candidate, you had to pay 2% of the uh, first year's salary which was for about $4,000. So, uh, and it's like that in a lot of states where you have to pay to gain entrance to even be a candidate. Okay. So um, that now Creed, um, it's the basis of Creed is going to co completely reset the global, well, the American economy at the very least. So this is the thing. The only reason why politicians get away with and um, uh, capitalists, corporate owners, the only reason why they get away with the things they get away with 
is because we let them. We are 333 million people strong and the, cor the corporations, they, they are such a small percentage of the population and yet they control us. They hold us in economic slavery so that the majority of people are unable to have financial stability. They don't enjoy their lives. They don't have enough time, money, and resources to be able to have leisure and to enjoy their leisure. Um, so what I propose is, a, in, I, I'm going to need the backing of the people, obviously, but my brilliant idea this evening was that if we were to, the only way we're going to achieve equality is if we have a complete economic reset. And what that means is that we have to completely reset everything so that there's no debt, there's no assets, there's no profits. So we have to make sure so that the owner of Walmart has zero assets and the lowliest of low of like, and everybody in between has okay, zero hold on, okay, okay, let's slow it down. Let's slow it down. So where does the reparations come in with this? With the uh, creep? Go ahead. Uh, okay. So, um, I have a different idea of, so the current ideas of reparations is um, recompense or restitution for uh, past atrocities that have occurred. Right. Again. Right. So, um, and honestly, it, that's not a horrible idea, but it's not the best idea either because uh, history shows that people who get large sums of money and y'all before, I, please don't let lose me on this point. Because um, I, I know a lot of people are probably like, what? Go ahead. Um, go ahead and say it. Go ahead. Right. So, um, if, like, for instance, people who win the lottery, most of them end up pissing off their, their money and have nothing to show for it at the mm -hmm. end of it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Okay. So, and, and a lot of, honestly, a lot of people, um, I was actually just looking at the numbers yesterday. Black people <sighs> make up. 14% of the population, but they account for 20% of the entire impoverished popula population. Mm -hmm. So they're represented disparately in the poverty mar uh, market, I guess I'll call it, um, niche. Mm -hmm. um, so that means that the few Black people that do have assets have an outrageous amount of assets so that the rest of the, like the majority, like 90% of Black people live in poverty. And that's crazy. And, and the only mm -hmm. way that we're going to fix that is if we completely equalize the tables and we give everyone the same opportunity. So um, my idea of reparations is opportunity. Right now, it's proven that in communities of color, uh, the education system is not as good as in uh, more affluent areas. And it's an absolute fact that in communities of color, there's a lower rate of uh, secondary education. There is a low, a significantly lower rate of um, employment, not employment, but skilled employment. So people with degrees, people that are well-educated. There's a very, very few black and brown people that are well-educated and have opportunities to get good jobs. And so um, my idea of reparations is if we make it accessible, education accessible and, um, and create employment opportunities, then, and oh, but we also, we have to restore the respect of the community. So um, what, as part of my economic reset idea, um, every, we're gonna do a complete reset in America where everyone has zero dollars and from there, Everyone will receive a, um, I'm calling it a safe, um, safe entitlement, and that stands for subsidy and family entitlement, so that everyone has a basic income to be able to afford a basic standard of living. And from there, if we make education free, so that everyone in, like, everyone everywhere can get access to education, there will be no student loans involved, there will be no debt owed, and everyone so will have an equal... Well, let's slow down. So you're talking about almost like a socialism, like a socialist society. You just remove I've, capitalism? Uh, so, uh, kind of. So um, my idea, uh, if so we have, um, I forget about your ideas of economy and how everything works for just a second. All right. 
if we have um, if if we convert corporations from corporations into public trust companies, so that companies like Walmart they can't independently set a uh, profit price margin, so they won't be able to set a price for okay. on something. Yes. Okay, let's scratch all of that. Let's scratch all of that because that's that. Uh, just give us our checks. Okay. And let's just give give a, give foundational Black Americans their checks. That's all you got to do. What okay. you're saying is so impractical. It's all around the world. You got to do a whole re. It's, it's too much. Hey. That's, it's too is much. It? it is. When it comes to foundational Black Americans getting what we're just owed, what we're due, all of a sudden we get these crazy far-fetched ideas where we got to just scrap the whole economy and start over and liquidate all of the public and the private sectors and make them... No. Just well, give us our checks. That'll, that'll be simpler. Give what foundation. about equality? How are we ever going to achieve equality if equality never existed the only way that equality no, no equality exist existed for people in the dominant white society and they got they got more than equality they got right. preferential treatment based on race we were forced with inequality i okay? i know so what about correcting the inequality okay so i i hear what you're saying the inequality that exists is an economic position so um when the government was established they abolished slavery the 13th amendment abolishes slavery except for the uh punishment of a crime which institutionalized the jail and prison system from right. there that they targeted created black people that exactly. targeted black people let's be very exactly. clear I, all I, of these institutions were revolving around Attacking it, and abusing regaining them. slaves. <laughs> it, the Go entire ahead. institution re revolved around <coughs> regaining <coughs> slaves, and so that's why af after that point they created an economy and laws that focused on keeping financial oppression on people of color. But it ended up no, 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 no. Let's stop that. It wasn't people of color. It was black people. <laughs> when they had, no, no, let's stop that because when they had up them signs, it wasn't people of color. Like, niggas ain't allowed to get it. What? Damn, brother. Sorry about <laughs> that. Guy with all these weird sound effects. So it wasn't, when we were going through Jim Crow, Jim Crow was all about anti-black racism. Black right. people were being targeted. It wasn't the people of color side of town. It was the black side of town. Coloreds only. Blacks uh -huh. only. Whites only. Black people are not allowed in those housing contracts. It was black people they were targeting. Hey, black people, no Negroes. So it right. wasn't people of color. We, it was a very specifically targeted racism directed at us. So it has to be specifically rectified, ma'am, right? Okay. I, I understand. And I hear what you're saying. And what I'm proposing is going to it's going to reduce the level of entitled white people so that if we equalize everything so that nobody has anything more or less than anybody else, then that is an absolute equality starting point. No, from no, no, that you're talking about one of these, again, it's, it's a all lives, all lift all program. It's a lift all. You elevate everybody and that's going to include black people. No not going to do that. Affirmative action, that affirmative action was a lift all program and we ended up getting the short end of the stick on that okay well like i told you you remember me mentioning i have inter-ethnic children my right. children are half black mm -hmm. i they're growing up in a society that is still oppressed by racism uh -huh. and i find that completely unacceptable so i would not ever consider a a program or a, a line of action that would have my own children be targets they're I, already targeted if they're non-white you're already targeted in the I, system. i'm well aware of this and i am experiencing it right now now I, the father now hold on the father of your children where is he from atlanta georgia um well, columbus columbus georgia yes sir got two kids yes sir 
Were you and the guy married before? No. Okay. Um, is he a foreigner? Is he a foundational Black American? Where is he from? From I know he's. You say he's in but Georgia. He's he's from. Um, well, he's from. He was born in America, Columbus, Georgia. Um, so I. Um, his family. Where is his family from? Uh, um, you mean like his ancestors? Right. Uh, I I don't know that. I I do not have that answer. Okay. You, uh, did did he have any immigrants in his family? Did you know of? Or? Uh, no, he he was he's not like a dark skinned black man. So he has he has some um, white back in his ancestry somewhere because okay. he's like a caramel color, com a caramel complected man. Like like a little Lenny Kravitz type of thing going on. Uh, uh yeah. Okay. Okay. I, I'm, I'm just trying to see if he's a descendant of slaves, descendant of freedmen, um, a foundational black American, if his lineage goes back to slavery. Honestly, in, anybody in America who's black is, uh, a, a, is a target. Honestly, it doesn't matter if you're a foundational black American or a descendant of slaves or not, because you are still equally liable to be targeted. We understand that, but we're talking about compensation for slavery, and the only right. people the only people qualify for that are foundational Black Americans. That's why I was trying okay. to see if your I daughters. So, I was trying to see if your daughters were qualified for reparations. I, I have that's, a son and a daughter. Son um, and a daughter. Okay, got it. Yes, sir. So, what what's your view on reparations for Africa, though? Because Africa is still they. In fact, Africans are suffering so much more greatly than even the poorest of poor black people here mm -hmm. in America. Uh-huh. Uh -huh. And because I personally, like I communicate with Africans on a regular basis because as part of my um, my creed is um, if I'm able to attain the office of president, I'm planning on um, uh, sending aid over to Africa. Not not uh, money specifically, but I'm planning on sending tools and resources for agriculture, livestock, and mm -hmm. people who want to volunteer. Um, and I'm planning on demilitarizing the United States and converting our military establishment to a builder society so that people who choose to enlist, so to speak, they will be joining to go overseas to uh, participate in building in nation building Lord, and bless, bless our heart bless your heart man you don't ma'am i i know it's a, a tall order i know <laughs> Ooh, that what i'm suggesting is a tall order but this oh, is the thing them. in the interest of having a sustainable free world where everybody has the things that there are people in india and africa right now that are dying from starvation and uh -huh. from lack of clothes that they, they, they are literally walking barefoot two miles just to get water. Right. I find that unacceptable. Well, let me, let me and say here we this. Are in America, oh, no. oh. Here we are in America. We've got every modern convenience and contrivance that is the result of slave and military labor. If it wasn't for the slaves and for the military members, modern technology would not exist. Mm -hmm. Okay, now if hold, it wasn't on. For hold on. Slow down, sweetie. The slow Industrial down. Revolution occurred slow down, because Renee, of Renee, slavery. Renee, hey, slow down. I got it. Here's the thing. It's like, what about reparations for Africa? Do you know Africa, some of them, when we get our reparations from the U.S. government, we're going to have a little talk with some of the, the African tribes over there because they owe us too. How yeah, how do the African tribes? Uh, oh, you're said because of the uh, historical of them, the enslavement, the uh, brother on brothers. Some of them were selling us. Oh yeah, yeah. I okay. We got, yeah, that that ain't been rectified. We're gonna have to rectify that with some of them over there because some of those tribes they kind of brag about how they were slave traders too. So we gonna holler at them a little later. We ain't tripping on them now. And as far as the Indians. They can hold their own nuts because those Indians come over here, they're dirt poor, and then they send Vivek Rimaswamy and they send, um, what's his name? Um, um, uh, what is his name? The Republican guy. What is, family, what's his name? Vic, Nikki, hold on, let me get my sister Nikki in here. Why am I brain for it? I'm, I'm, Nikki, you, who am I talking about? What's his name? The other Indian tether who hates on us. Nikki, what's his name? No, I don't even know his name. I came up to ask her a question. Okay, okay I got to think of this guy's name. Um, what's that? What's the guy's name? The Indian teller who went to jail and he's always denigrating. 
why am I? God, I can't think of his name right now. Yo, is it Dinesh uh, D'Souza? Dinesh the damn Souza. Why did not? Yes, Dinesh D'Souza. Yes. Oh, he's one of the, the. They come over here from the slums of India, denigrating foundational Black Americans, doing everything they can to undermine us. They can hold hey. their own nuts. Nikki, go ahead and ask her a question, dear. Okay, my question for you is. If you are so much con more concerned for the people, for immigrants in other countries, why don't you go run for office in an African country or an Indian country? Because over oh. here, we're trying to get foundational Black Americans our reparations. So why don't you run for office abroad? All right. Well, because, like I said, my children are, ch they're Black they're half black, they're here in America. And I was raised in America. I served in the military in America. I was homeless in America. I've experienced police brutality in America. I've experienced every hardship that, that, that America has to offer. And I'll be a good goddamn cooked goose if I let them get away with it. With what they did to me and my children, I will be a cooked goose if I let them do that. So I'm, I'm not disputing that there is a debt owed I'm simply suggesting that there is a more uh, sound way to go about it than just get issuing out lump sums of money. There's that more to it. There's why, more to. They do equal. that for other groups. Why? Why? If it's good for other groups, why wouldn't it be good for us? I uh, um. Are you talking about the Native Americans? Absolutely. Um, yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, you you do realize that if if one thousand people, there were only eight percent of natives left by the time the the trail of tears was done so mm -hmm. if you stood up a thousand people 80 of them were left 80 and we're just 14 percent of the population so we're 43 million so they can do the same thing with us they can do and that's going to stimulate the economy they can do the same thing and distribute the funds the exact same way they do with some of the red native american tribes I, if what I'm suggesting too, though, is it's going to equalize everyone. And so giving out lump sum payments isn't going to fix the underlying problem of racism yes, and disparity. We're not trying to fix racism. We're trying to get a debt that's owed, mm -hmm. pay people that it's owed to. This is for slavery. It's not to fix racism. Right. And so um, I it, don't don't get too defensive on this point, but I'm going to ask you a question right now. Right. Um, <clears throat> In it, it's been several generations since slavery has ended, and mm -hmm. honestly, black like I said, like I mentioned, black people in America enjoy a better qual. Even the poorest black person in America enjoys a better quality of life than the tribes of Africa from where slaves originated. And and, and so, if it honestly, if it, we enjoy a pretty good standard of living. And if it's necessary, so we have to fix the on, big on. social problem. Hold on, slow down. Our debt that's owed to us is not contingent upon how bad other black people are doing globally. All right. That's not going to be the bar. Y'all not going to hold them up and say, hey, look, they got flies on them. They're starving. Just be happy you're not them. No, that don't work. We got higher standards. Our okay. standards are very high and we're owed something. So you're not going to point to somebody else who's down bad. Right. Like, hey, you can be. No, no, no. That It don't work like that. We're owed so something. I, and, we have and, a, and we live good because we've created a comfort zone for us to live good as foundational black Americans. This wasn't something that was given to us. I, I know. Could, but black right. people had to struggle tremendously to gain status. Right. And still do. I'm very, I'm very well aware of this. I've, Like I said, I've, I, I've transitioned the lower and middle classes because of the event, the government, what the government did to me. I've, I've been a victim of a federated racism program that caused me to suffer significant loss. My, my children were taken from me for no legal basis. I have been targeted by the government because simply for the fact that I have mulatto children. Mm hmm Mm -hmm. Ray Ray hop on real quick and chime in How you doing Tyreek How you doing I'm good beloved how are you What do you think oh, about I'm me? blessed amongst all this hot Caucasian Caucasity mess um, How are you doing uh, uh, Renee 
I'm well, thank you. Okay, I'm gonna get down to it, Renee. We're not messing with you. Okay. Okay. The last time we listened to a a a, a white woman, it led to feminization, uh, feminist movement where y'all benefited the most. Okay. Okay. And our mm -hmm. homes were broken up. We're not doing that again. We're not African. Okay. The forefathers of this country bred us. And then we were mixed. Some of us have some other DNA. Some have a little bit of admixture. The Africans argue with us all the time. They're rude. They're ignorant. If you look at the long line of y'all, again, dumping them, you know, in our communities, right? Mm -hmm. You'll see the depletion of New York when we would say, well, why is black people before we knew who these people were in other cities? Because we all didn't have that problem. Well, why, what is in the water in Florida? What's in the water up there in New York? Now look at D.C. is going down. Look at California, okay? Mm -hmm. So, no, them are not our people. We've decided to delineate from everybody, including mm -hmm. you, because you go in under minority, and I, you don't want, I, I, I'm going to just tell you this, you're not going to like it, whether subconsciously or consciously, you have a problem. Even when you have a black Whatever, you know, um, nationality he is, husband, boyfriend, you don't want to give up that white woman privilege because you raise. We also know that white women raise these um, men that have shot up schools, killed people. I, I don't and, support and, that And are refusing or fighting us. Now, excuse me. I didn't interrupt you. Okay. Okay. We're not going to do that. Okay. Uh, so the audacity of you to come in here like everybody else including everybody you name, the Jew, the, the white races, uh, the white one that don't want to give up their little supremacy. Y'all always come telling us about world peace. We ain't never invented none of that. What land have we, we uh, stolen? Huh? What land and, have we stolen? Who, who have we enslaved? Huh? Hey, hey, you know, that huh? is one of my who biggest Who have we taught our people. children to be racist? Who have we been blamed knowing damn well when you say black for decades since the 80s, we've been having all type of people from all these other places that may look like us, but skin folk ain't kin folk. But y'all tell us, oh, the statistics, the st black Americans ain't going to do hardly no statistics. We don't trust y'all. We want to know why you're in this room. And then, and when you come asking questions in the manner that you did, right, like you're entitled to tell us to vote for you. I, I no, think, I came for feedback. I think I think that you should worry about mothering your children. I think that you should be taking them to the um, library and letting them know about who they are and their lineage, and taking them around the other side of the family. Black America, we got our own reparations. It's a debt owed. You forgot to mention segregation, okay? Because mm -hmm. I know my family. They came from Arkansas. It's still mm -hmm. sundown down there. And in and, and and, and 1919 was the first war. It was the Red Summer where we were just fed up and they were willing to fight or die. Okay? Mm -hmm. So um, I'm going to leave it there because there's other people that want to talk. But Thank you okay. so much, Ray. Wait, Thank you, and, right, um, go ahead. Just really go quick, ahead. I'm and I'll, I'll land on this note. Um, so to answer your question, Ms. Ray Ray, I came here because um, I had this idea that I wanted to share and I wanted feedback on it. I know that as a, a a leader and as a even a person in life, we must have the uh, respect and coordination of our community and the people around us in order to accomplish anything. And so I wanted to uh, present an idea and I wanted to get feedback on it so that I could get some critical feedback so I could get right. an understanding That's of what's the needed of what people's expectations are and what needs to occur for everyone's needs to get met. So right. that's why I came here. And yeah. um, I, like I and said, I appreciate feedback, you. But the feedback is we ain't really buying that program. This is another one of these trick bag, um, keep your eye off the ball, um, lift all programs that helps everybody. And it keeps black people in the same bag. We're going to have to get specific compensation exclusively for us. We okay. were specifically targeted. We were specifically abused, specifically disenfranchised, and we need to be specifically compensated. I don't want another lift all program based on our suffering. So we just need 
checks written to foundational Black Americans as a form of compensation and compensatory justice. That's all we need. That's going to make everything better. That's going to boost the economy. And that's going to relieve a debt that's been lurking like a dark cloud over this nation for the last couple of hundred years. It has mm-hmm. to be. You understand? So okay. that's where. But thank you so much, Renee. I, I thank you so much. Family, we got to watch out for that. You got to watch out for that. Man. That was a learning lesson, family. They'll come in, hey, I'm I'm white and I got some mulatto kids, so I'm not like the others. And here's my plan. And your plan is like the others. All right, you saw that? She tried to qualify herself with the the black kids, which she don't even want to say that they're black. That's a lot of the white women don't never like to admit that the kids are black. They say, well, they're mulatto, they're biracial, they're children of color. They got some black kids. So you'll lead with that so that you, so I'm not, I'm not on the white supremacy thing. And then you start talking and you're on code with the white supremacists. And part of their code is to not give us specific compensation for justice. So it's another con game and we ain't buying it. Duchess, hop on here. Yeah. Good evening, sir. Um, Thank you for having me. Yes. Um, Where are you from, Duchess? Where's that accent? Canada? Where's that accent from? No, my accent is from Armenia. Uh, okay. By Kim Kardashian, yes. <laughs> oh, yeah, even though she's like a disgrace for our people. Uh-oh. Why do y'all look at her as a disgrace? Uh, well, she doesn't really represent anything our people represent, you know, which is family uh, values, you know, um, you know, um, a uh, close uh, husband and wife and just like, uh, uh, you know, for example, like no sex tapes out in public. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Kind of uh-huh. Uh-huh. <laughs> so, uh, what's on your mind? so what's on your mind? Yeah. You know, I really love your logic. You're a very intelligent man. Mm-hmm. And uh, I love what you're, um, you know, what you're promoting. Obviously, I'm for for reparation, but yeah. I really don't like the way you're promoting it. If how, I'm, how, how I was, feel like fine. you are creating a division. I think there is a healthier way to promote it. But how am I promoting it? I don't know. I mean, I feel like I'm not. Um, in I'm I, I'm not able to do justice to uh, do a debate on this subject. Not you. even a debate. You made a you made a statement, and you're not qualifying what your statement yeah, is. Yeah, because not. you're you're very wise. You're very sharp, mm-hmm. and I know you're like you're immediately going to be able to like debunk whatever I'm able, whatever I'm going to say. You know, right. so. I mean, I would love to set up a debate with you and uh, Thomas uh, Sotomayor, if I may, if you are interested. That would be amazing. So why would you as a white person want to set up a debate with me and another black person? What What is that going to be? So that's because weird. I think it would be amazing. Two brilliant minds. I think so why are you trying to hide behind no, no, just, no, no, because why are you trying to hide some of your suspected racism behind a black person? Now you you're playing your card. No, right? no, 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 no. This is yeah, not, yeah, 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 yeah. Racism. Why are you trying to hide your you, racism behind you, a black this person? This is what I don't like about you, Tariq. No, 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 no. Don't you know no no don't try to use Tommy. This is what I say no, 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 no. Don't try to use Tommy to hide your racism. He's not your slave. That's disrespectful to me and him. You understand? He's not your your Sambo slave. Don't try to use another black person to facilitate your racism so you can hide your hand. You understand? So he can say stuff that you can't say because you will be perceived as a racist. That's very exploitive of him as so a black person. Armenian, that's the problem. I have no that's the, no, 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 that's the problem. No, no, because you want to know you're being, no, you want to be exploitive of black people. I'm not going to sit here and bicker back and forth with another black person because of you. 
It don't work like that, beloved. We don't do that. You should be stand on your own racism, ma'am. Don't try to get some black person. Now, y'all, people love doing that. That uh, what's that? That Colombian woman was up here denigrating Juneteenth, and she used Candace Owens. Well, Candace Owens said that Juneteenth was ratchet, and it, I think it is too. So you you use a black person to hide your racism. That's very exploitive, ma'am. You understand? We got to watch folks like you. That's very cold blooded and exploitive, Duchess. You understand? This is exactly what I was talking about, Tariq. The divisive part. I, I was literally. I am sure do want to divide myself away from anti black racism. racism. I, I divide myself from anti black racism. wasn't talking about racism at all. But and that is racist. To trying want. to get a black. It's racist trying no, to exploit no. black people. It only had to slow down. It's that's very racist trying to exploit black people. You're trying to exploit black people. And that's very racist. You're trying to pit me up against another black person. No. We're not doing that for you, ma'am. I'm not I'm doing only that for you. To level you to your psychological level. It was psychological level. What are you saying, ma'am? You're just saying words, Duchess. I was saying he was at your level logically. He was he would have been able to handle you logically. But I don't really sit around debating other black people because we're both victims of white supremacy. So it's absolutely pointless to Do just I look go in like white supremacy to you, sir. Now what now? Do I look like a white supremacy to you, sir? I don't know. I suspect that you could be, ma'am. I don't know. But if you try to pit black people against each other, it's safe to suspect that you possibly could be, Duchess. You understand? That's very exploitive. Okay, what about a, uh, if I look. To Go ahead. Another white person. Is that also like, would you consider that racism too? No, 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 no. Because I, I like debating white people because they're the ones in power. I love debating them, especially the white supremacist. I love Amazing. Debating. Okay, I have the best person for you then. Can Who we do that? Actually, you know what's interesting? I had somebody else in mind, but I was afraid to mention him. Because I thought if I mention him, you're going to call me racist. Because I mentioned him. So I went with the black person. So then I mentioned the black person and you called me racist. Yeah, because the only black person. Yeah, because the only reason you want the black person is because the black person is known for just using your talking points because he gets money. And I, I ain't mad at him. He exploits the white supremacists by using their talking points. That's the only reason why you wanted to use him. You understand? What white person did you have in mind, by the way? What what was the white person you had in mind? Go ahead, dear. Unmute your microphone, Duchess. Duchess, unmute your microphone, dear. Oh, sorry, I was muted. Um, um... Yeah, I, I can I, I can send you a message. It's it's I mean it's not important. It's not no, like I probably already debated him. So who is it? Who's the white person? It doesn't matter. It, it, the okay. point is like that that was like the plot twist. I was afraid to mention a white person, thinking it's gonna back. No, you uh, weren't. You weren't. Oh, you weren't. You weren't. You weren't. No, you weren't. It's all cap. But that's what ended up backfiring. That's the plot right. twist. That's really funny, actually. Right. You're right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you, you didn't plan on me. No, you were you were just using a black person to try to hide racism behind. So we're hip to that game, Duchess. So don't do that. Don't don't do that. We're hip to it. Any form of white supremacy or suspected white it's supremacy. It's not white supremacy. Oh. I was being I was actually being sensitive towards you people. No. You know? No, you weren't sensitive to us us people. No, you were not. Do you live in California, Duchess? Where do you live? Uh California, sir. Glendale, living Glendale? Uh, no, sir. Okay, okay, just asking. And what was interesting, you're talking about all the family values from the Armenians. Boy, I know a lot of Armenians, and family value is 
they some of the Armenians got some of the biggest scams going on out here. They run all types of scams. And I know you're very well aware of this, aren't you? Duchess? Uh, it, Tariq, this is what I'm talking about. You're like this uh, division, your negativity, <laughs> like you know, but you're don't, so but you negative. Just, oh, how, how is it negative? You know, is there any Duchess, Duchess, Duchess? You know, especially out here in California, y'all be running a gang of scams. That's not negative. What me pointing out what y'all do? Really? That's the negative part? How about all the scams y'all got going on? I'm not I'm not even being judgmental. You know, I, the, I used to be I used to hustle. Are, the, the I used to hustle. With, I, used to, listen, I, I used to hustle with a lot of Armenians. These guys had so many intricate scams that were just beyond belief. These guys had so many scams going on. Yeah. And you know that, ma'am. And I'm I'm not saying that. I'm not being negative. I'm just pointing that out, ma'am. Not all of them, but a lot of them did. They had a lot of scams and hustles and a lot of street business going on. Yeah? And you're talking about all of the family values and all of that. Okay. All right. Anyway, Duchess, what else is on your mind? Any any last words, Duchess? Turn your microphone on, Duchess. Um. My, uh, no, I mean, honestly, like the the kind of Armenians that I socialize with are definitely on a, a different caliber. But mm -hmm. I I also know of the kinds that you're speaking of. Mm -hmm. I'm not delusional. There you go. Real talk. Yeah, of the, course. Um, yeah. Armenians be having the hookups. Hell yeah. Yeah, of <laughs> course. <laughs> I know. Yeah. Now you know. You already know. You already know. Obviously, yeah. Yes, indeed. But um, um, li listen, uh, the reason I came up is like, you're really sharp. You're a mm -hmm. good uh, mind. Mm -hmm. I just wish you would use it in a more positive way. It's very positive. <laughs> I, I okay. look out for my foundational Black American family all the time. I'm very protective of foundational Black Americans. I go out of my way to make sure they are good collectively. So that's very positive. All right? Unmute yourself, Duchess. I don't have you muted, dear. Well, you know, sir, you say that, but like, do you have any solutions for your community? Like, absolutely. Solutions to oh. your community. Oh, yes, I do. Reparations, reparations, reparations. That's going to be the solution. Let's get these reparations. We're not going to move on the political needle until we get the reparations popping. Reparations for foundational Black Americans. And then we can get this thing cranked up. We can get this economy stimulated. We can get some real compensatory justice happening that needs to happen. Right? So, you know that the white people, which you call them, which I don't like to call them white people. I like to call them, you know, European uh, Americans mm -hmm. because they do come from European background. Um, you know, they don't have power, right? Uh -oh. They hold the shots. Uh-oh. So, whatever, you know. Uh -oh. it, it, uh oh, who who calls the shots then? Who really calls the shots? Not the white you, people. Uh oh, uh oh. Well, I I would say it's the Jews. Oh, out in space. Okay, me. Don't it. hold my words against Tariq. This is not Tariq. This is me. God. Um. So whoever's listening, please. Um. Tariq is. This is not him. Um. Uh oh. Here they go. But, the yeah, Oh, like this is a deflection. This is all about deflecting. No, it's not about deflecting. Deflect from you know, white supremacy. It ain't white supremacy. It's the Jews. No, okay. then no, if, if, it, okay, if the Jews are running in, why? Okay, why do Jewish people? So many of them change their names so they don't sound more Jewish, so they can blend in with white if they're running. <laughs> white. 
people, <laughs> do white people, where, who are the white people who change the <laughs> to Jewish names? Um, Irish, Scottish, you know, English, Polish, Russian, Italian, you name it, everything but Jewish. They changed their last name to everything but Jewish. What are you talking about? Come on, man. Uh, you're proving my point. You know that, right? That's a, you're proving my point. Oh, how? They changed their names. They changed their names to sound more Anglo-white. And it's not the reverse. That shows you who's running things. If you're running things, you don't have to change your name to blend in. You understand? You feel me? So you you just proved my point, ma'am. Anglo white people are not changing their name to Jewish names. So that shows you who's running things. It's run by white supremacists. Yeah. That makes sense, dear. Turn your microphone on, Duchess. I don't have you muted. Definitely doesn't make sense to me, sir. Oh, it, yes, no it does. No disrespect. Seriously. It makes sense yeah, I respect world. you, but I definitely don't get this. Yeah, you get it. These people have so much money. They can pay. They can change their last name. They can pay to get whatever the fuck they want. You know, they can get, uh, they can pay to get their nose jobs. Mm -hmm. okay? <laughs> the fact that they have to, to do all of this stuff they to can look Anglo, that, that shows you the, the, the white supremacists are running. Down European, have a European last name, pretend to be white people. But right. Why you that pretend the end? to be the ones who's running things, and that's the white supremacists, no. ma'am. You proved my point. It's not. It, you think the it's white you, it, you just proved it, ma'am. You just proved that it's white supremacy. They're trying to be more like the Anglo whites. That's what white supremacy is all about. The closer proximity you have to Anglo whiteness, you have more stake at being a suspected white supremacist. You see? You just proved that, ma'am. So you're helping my argument. I thank you for that, Duchess. I thank you for that. We brought it back full circle. So I guess this was a learning experience for you, ma'am. All right, Duchess. Um, let me get you up out of here, dear. Any last words, Duchess? <laughs> no, I'm done here. There thank you go. You. Thank you so much. All right. See? There we go. Um, I had somebody up here I was going to get. I had somebody up here I was going to get. Oh, yeah, they try to do all of that deflection. Notice it's all about deflection. Boy, these people try to deflect. They try to deflect on, well, let's do a liftoff program and an equality program. And it's not really white supremacists. It's really the Jews. No, 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 we ain't going for that. And we got one of our professional white supremacists in here, Dr. Davinsky. One of our professional white supremacists. And I got a, I got a personal question for you, Dr. Davinsky, by the way. What's up, doctor? How are you? Salam alaikum, brother Tariq. How are you doing today? Um, good. Real quick question before you go into yours. Now, are you technically a doctor? Because a lot of you guys, you know, white supremacists are pretty smart. You guys know how to kind of hustle your way into things. Or is that just a title for online? Well, I have, I have a double degree, but no, I'm not a doctor. Okay. What kind of degree you have, by the way? Law and accounting. Oh, okay. Did you ever go up? You ever pass the bar? No, I just worked in insurance. Oh, there you go. There you go. So what's on your mind tonight, Dr. Davinsky? So my question for you is, why do you always run cover for the Jews? I thought oh, Dutch brought up Lord. a good point earlier. Oh, and God. you talked about how they changed their name to, to um, sound more Anglo, right? Right. But what, uh -huh. what, about, what about this example here? We've got... Okay, Leon Trotsky, born Lev Davidvich Bronstein. So they're not just changing their name to sound more Anglo. They weasel their way into every country and every political structure. And uh, you always just talk about it. how come you can delineate from the Africans, but we can't delineate from the Jews? Because you all share the system of white supremacy and you benefit from it. What benefits do the Jewish people who are classified as white, what don't they get that the regular white supremacists get? What don't they get? Uh, can't say that again. 
what are white Jewish people excluded from in the system of white supremacy? What don't they get? Y'all get the same benefits and privileges and protection. That's why we don't delineate. You guys, we don't look at you as a different group. You all uh, who believe in anti-black racism, you all are on the same page with each other. So why would yeah, we but look- a lot of the Africans they uh they, they benefit from affirmative action when they come to America they want to claim to be this oppressed minority and we all know the real privilege in the West is being a minority and I can prove this it's and because when you have hold on let me let me go back and you were like um why do we delineate from Africans we're doing that because of a reparations claim we're owed something based on our lineage. So that's why we delineate. We're saying, hey, we got a reparations claim and we have to make it very specific to who's the money the money is going to go to. So that's why we're delineating. Now, we, you know, I still look at some of the African and Caribbeans who are cool with us as our brother. We're still cool. If you're a rider, we're going to look out for you. If you're a rider and if you're on code with me, if you're a foreign black person, I'll ride for you. I'll look out for you. I've been over to Africa. I've helped several people over in Africa. So. The white supremacist Jewish person and the white supremacist Anglo, even though they might have some ethnic differences, they all get on code when it comes to black people. And that's the only thing that matters. It's impractical for me or any other black person to break up suspected white supremacists and all of these little groups because they have some ethnic beefs that they have behind closed doors. You understand? And all it is is a deflection, Dr. Davinsky. It's, it's a deflection to keep our eyes off of white supremacy, which is the only problem that we have. Go ahead. Yeah, I mean, but if you look at the core population of America, the foundational white Americans, those aren't no Jews. Such thing. No such thing. Who's, who's the core population of America in terms of ethnogenesis? Who built the country? Um, well, foundational Black Americans built the country. Um, do you actually? Black, hey, you black, actually believe? Look, I'm not saying that Black Americans didn't help. The foundationals didn't help. But if you're going to give the credit to any one group, it's going to be our foundational White Americans. No, because they failed. That's the problem. You can't give them credit because when they tried to do it on their own, they repeatedly failed, sir. This is very well documented, right? So, so if you took away all of the um, all of the input from the foundational white Americans and you just had the plantations, America would be like, what? It would ha- you'd have some, some plantations. You'd have maybe half a railway. Uh, there's nothing there. How so? When it was black people like Horace King building um, the railway, the railways and the bridges and many of the homes, many of the people who were the architects were the foundational black Americans who were enslaved. You had the Benjamin Bannockers designing. He was the real one designing Washington, D.C. They try to give the credit to a Frenchman and say that Benjamin Banneker memorized the blueprints. I don't believe that worth a damn. It was us doing that. It was us coming up with um, books about electricity and electric lighting. It was foundational black Americans doing that because we were doing all of the hard work out here. So we were coming up with the more ingenuity type of plans to make work easier and to make the workflow better. We were coming up with that. That's why after slavery, we got over 50,000 patents immediately. We couldn't even get patents while we were enslaved. So we are literally the foundation, sir. The white supremacists came and just colonized and took all of our ingenuity and took credit for everything. And then they started to expound on it. But when the white supremacists tried to do it on their own, Dr. Davinsky, history has shown they all failed miserably. So do you think that in, in, in Tariq's view of a, like early America, the whites were just sitting around like drinking tea and blacks were doing all the work? That's basically what they were doing, sir. They were only 5% of white Americans owned slaves at the height of slavery. Sir, it was the government that had us locked in slavery. This is why they would send the armies down into Florida to try to get runaways and try to get some of those black Seminoles. It was the U.S. government that had us locked down. That's why they had the Fugitive Slave Act, which was a federal law. The U.S. government, the entire government was completely complicit in it, sir. So I don't want to hear about the, the certain percentages because all of the economy was built off of our backs. 
every institution was born out of anti-black racism the banking the insurance companies the railroad systems even the medical system as we know it started off well the anti- irish americans built uh, half of the railways at least irish americans didn't do a damn thing but scratch lice off their asses and eat potatoes <laughs> They didn't do a damn thing. They were indentured servants. Um, They barely survived that, and they got paid afterwards. They got freedom dues. They were Have you ever seen those early videos of, say, like 1920s New York or 1920s Chicago or Birmingham or Sydney? You look Mm -hmm. at these kids, the the little white children. They look like 40-year-old men because they're working in coal factories. They're working sweeping chimneys. Uh, So the whole idea that, like, white Americans weren't hardworking or white people weren't hardworking hard work and there's just blacks that were doing this is disingenuous i think that you need to put some respect on foundational white americans there's no foundational white american in the early days of america we were doing all the work the white supremacists failed when they tried to do it on their own they tried to get these colonies they ended up cannibalizing each other they ended up disappearing they tried to build up roanoke out there in north carolina they all disappeared um san miguel del guadape well, the, the black people ran them out, out of there. When they tried to build St. Augustine in Florida, they kept repeatedly failing down there and begging for black folks, begging the Spanish crown. So the if there's people. no foundational Come call on, no, to... Hold on, no, 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 let's run it all down. I'm just telling you your, your, your resume of your people. Jamestown, before the that, that slave ship came in around 1619, Um, Before that, a couple of years before that, they almost ate each other in Jamestown. They were starving and eating each other, sir. They were down bad. So they didn't get it together until the black people got involved and really helped them out. But go ahead. And and also, let me get my brother, Dr. Randy Short, in here to chime in. Dr. Short, are you here, sir? Oh, yes, my brother. Oh, yes, my brother. And what Dr. Davinsky is saying, sir. Can you please chime in? Well, yeah, what I want to say is his understanding of American history is off because even the Irish that were brought over, because he doesn't know who he is, and they definitely doesn't know who we are, that there were people who were not white who were in Ireland and Scotland who Mm -hmm. were brought here. So there are no foundational white Americans. There are only foundational people of Moorish descent brought here who were the majority and you had the rich English patricians and many of them of which I'm descended of, sir, you're speaking to a descendant of Margaret Buford. So (laughs) this idea that even the foundational elites of England, a lot of these people are Moorish mixes. Mm -hmm. Okay. It's just a fact. And one drop of black blood. It's a stupid rule you guys made, made you a hundred percent black. Therefore, there are no foundational white folks doing much. And yes, they were drinking tea and getting paid and, and drinking rum and raping folk. They didn't do the work that built the country. Black folks built New York. They built Charleston. They built Jamestown. They built Richmond. They built Boston. They did most of the railroads. However, to bolster the sagging egos of people who got 3.6 million square miles of land off of genocide, slavery, and brutality to tell you how you earned all this through some manifest destiny, which you killed so many people until the greenhouse effect on the planet changed. So what you did was you killed, you stole, you destroyed, you enslaved. That's who you are. And that's why we're owed. And I don't even want no, because I actually have a damn doctorate and you don't. And so I don't, I have one, you, you, you don't. And therefore, let's not even try that. So that's racist. So you can sit up and try to tell me something and you don't even have the training in the subject area I have. And so wherever you went to school, I went better. What's your doctorate? Uh, absolutely. It's it's in history. Doctor? It's in history. And you said you what? Accounting? And law. And we know who we're accounting and law. What kind of law, sir? General law is a bachelor's. General, which means you don't know history. 
And in fact, law. Hold it. Uh, 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 because no, we, we can't do education, sir. A law degree in reality is an undergraduate degree that was professionalized for lawyers to make more money. So in reality, you have a exaggerated undergraduate degree, and I have a PhD and three masters. We're not equal. Okay, so I think you're alluding towards Cheddar Man, and if you look at genetic no, studies, I'm alluding to the fact that you don't can, can, that you, we're not on, we're not equal. And brother Tariq, brother Tariq is right. Well, no, I don't care. I can take fifty. We just listened to this woman who called herself a daughter of El Ducci, which means that she supports fascist Mussolini, who did mm -hmm. genocide on people in Italy. I'm sorry, in, in in Libya and in Eritrea and in Ethiopia, and she's going to lecture this our brother Tariq our hero about how she has a problem with him being divisive. What's more divisive than Mussolini who started World War II doing mm. genocide on black people in Africa? How dare somebody say anything to Tariq? So, you know, we're tired and we see this whole thing and I see the setup. If you go to that lady's thing, she's got this guy, forgive me for forget his Jones, Michael Jones, Eric Michael Jones, who is an, a person known for attacking Jews. They're trying to put Tariq Nasheed as an anti-Semite so they can silence him. That's what oh, this so bullshit's all about. <laughs> no, 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 no. I didn't say a damn thing about Jews. So you, you I talked talk about, about you. You, you came about right, you came right hey, oh, behind. This is, this is you came, no, 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 no. You can't tell me how to talk about my oppressor. You can't tell me how to talk about my oppressor. You can't tell me how to talk about how we've been treated. You can't. Yeah, that's you that's can't. No, no, no. Not only, not only is it hilarious, not only is it hilarious, the people that you think are Jews aren't. So as a person of Hebrew descent, I'm offended. You mean the little European people, the Kazarians? Your okay, so type, Tariq, your, your hey, type, on, your Tariq converts? Okay, Tariq. So um, is, <laughs> is it correct what he said? Is it correct that you are worried about getting canceled by the Jews. That's why you can talk about white people all that, day that, and not no, have that fear. Well, no, that, that that doesn't work. That little weak peer pressure thing where, oh, are you scared? Are you scared? That doesn't work because I'm never taking my eyes off the, the real problem, which is white supremacy. The problem is white supremacy. The whole, well, it's really the Jews. That's a deflection that you guys try to use, and it just doesn't work. But he said that you would get canceled if you spoke about the Jews. You'd be on that uh, Nick Cannon kind of world tour of yeah, apology. Because what, what, oh, I'm sorry, yeah, because Jews. I'm sorry. A, yeah, because what you, the, the white supremacists, you and your white supremacist brethren, that's a trick bag that we're not falling for. Because if we start saying something about Jewish people, you guys will be the first ones siding with them against us. When they were going after Nick Cannon, y'all white supremacists weren't supporting Nick Cannon. When the when the ADL and all these people go after Minister Farrakhan, you side with the ADL. You don't protect. Why is it? Why is there no ADL for white people? You understand that? Uh, why you, is there no you, ADL for white people, Tariq? The hell you don't. You already got an ADL. It's called white supremacy. That that's <laughs> ADL within itself. That's white supremacy. Uh, you already uh, have a I... court system. You you have all of the systems that's already in your favor, sir. But you don't why need, could you come you on need, here and defame white that. people 24-7 and you, you don't, don't have that. any social repercussions, you don't have any you do cancellations, what? you're on YouTube, you're on Twitter. How come you can say all of this stuff about white people, but you'll shy away from the Jews? Because doctor said it himself that you would be well, cancelled. So that shows said, who has the power. What you said isn't true. I don't say anything negative about white people at all. I only talk about white supremacists, sir. Okay, so let me address something. Did you, 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 you feel me? Did you do you feel me though? I don't say anything. Look, Tariq, I know that you have to run cover. You're in LA. You make movies. No, you're in that. No, you're in that no, media no, no. You're business. Project, you're projecting. You're projecting. I don't say anything about white people. I talk about white supremacy. I have don't. You, go, I don't go after you, people because of what they're born as. If you're born as a Jewish person, there's nothing wrong with that. If you so are, do you love white people, Tariq? No, do you oh, love no. white? people? Going because you're trying to. I'm, I'm telling you what the deal is, and you're trying to explain your way through it. I don't go after people because they're Jewish. I don't go after people because they're white. I don't go after people because they're foreign. I don't do that. That's called bigotry. To sit here and say the Jews are the pro that's bigotry. I don't believe that. I don't talk like that. That's bigotry. 
Now, the white supremacists, I got a problem with because that's an action. They're doing something that makes them white supremacists. That's action based. A person who's a foreigner undermining us, that's a tether. I got a problem with a tether. You understand? But I don't go. I don't go after people based but on Judaism on, is look look Judaism's not it's an ethno religion right but there is a supremacist uh, aspect to no, Judaism because they they posit themselves you as know, God's chosen people and in a lot of their you prophecies the Jews have will have slaves two, called the goyim and you can't have two supremes it's an oxymoron it's illogical you cannot have two ethnic groups who are supreme you can't have white supremacy in some other type of supremacy. By definition, sir, by logic, doesn't make no, sense. No, of course, if different groups have different kind of power systems in different countries, then you're going to have supremacist groups of those regions. In in China, no. for instance, the supreme group has been Han Chinese, and they've done a but Hanification the white of supremacy, Xinjiang province. The white they've done a Hanification. But the white supremacists, they can decimate China anytime they feel like it. All right. When we talk about ethnic groups, there's only one supreme. That's the white supremacists. So you're saying that, like, just innately we're supreme because other groups have national no, movements not innately, that have racial innately, supremacists. Not, in, uh, not innately, but systematically. They've created a militarized system to back up their supreme views. And they can, wi- they can wipe people off. Anytime so in China, know. in China, there's a Hanification. It, it's been a Don't long matter. process white throughout China, China to absorb all Don't of these other matter. ethnic groups. They got European warships on the coast of China waiting on China to act bad, waiting on China to get froggy. So, yeah, they got China in check. All right. There used to be a saying, you don't have a Chinaman's chance in hell. The China, yeah, China. and Ireland used to be the poorest country in Europe, and now it's in the top ten continuously for Human Development Index. Right. So, so what's your point? The the point uh, is white supremacy is the point. That's the point, sir. I'm just telling you what white supremacy is about. Okay? What about Arab supremacy? Well, you know, there's, there's more. Arab, there's more slaves alive today than any point in human oh, history. Most Arab, of those are in the Arab no, world. There's no Arab supremacy. Okay, I'll give you an example of. Arab- oh, oh no, there's no Arab supremacy. The white supremacists, they go over there and smack the Arab community around anytime they feel like it, sir. They always got a Look, war. Look, in that. every popular... Sir, they got the Arabs by the nuts with the oil. They just use them to get that oil over there. They got them guarding their oil. That's what they use there. you're feigning ignorance because you know that different not. countries have different ethnic struggles. Sir, and in the Sahara... And the white supremacists can go over there and topple any Arab leader anytime they feel like it when they want to go get a Qaddafi and knock him off they can do it anytime they feel like it right but that doesn't help the people that are oppressed in so in that, palestine for instance was, one of the most oppressed sir, countries on earth sir, this is this we're talking about white supremacy white supremacy means my group can kill your group with impunity and you can't do it to me that's what Dr. Francis Cress Welsing said. That's what Sorry, Supreme you won't let you won't let me speak for more than ten seconds. No, 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 no. Because listen, you know I'm about to no, cook your entire world. No, you're not cooking anything, sir. I'm just telling. I'm going to cook you. I'm going to cook you like some bush meat. Okay, white supremacy is my group can kill your group with impunity, and you can't do the same. Now go ahead and cook me. Okay, so every country has uh, a dominant uh, majority and then they have uh, repressed minorities within that group. And I brought up slavery because we always want to talk about reparations and we want to talk about the transatlantic slave trade. You but family. if you look at the Sahel, if you look at the Sahel region of Africa, uh, Mauritania, Chad, Niger, there's a group of people there, and this predates the transatlantic slave trade, and so it's a racial stratification of the Berber caste system. At the top, you have so-called white Berbers, Arabs, and at the bottom, you have uh, blacks, uh, they're called Aklan, and that translates to be black. And this trans this predates transatlantic slave trade. About 10% of Mauritania's population are currently enslaved. So black people ruled by Arab Berbers. If these people run away from their slave masters, they're returned. Uh, in Palestine, one of the most oppressed countries on earth right now, there's still a racial stratification there where the Arabs are on top. You can look up the Afro-Palestinians. They refer to these people as slaves. They refer to their quarters in Palestine as slave quarters. So you'll always talk about 
about white supremacy, look at the ethnic tolerance index. Australia, uh-huh. Canada, America, all of the Anglospheric countries are in the top ten, top twenty nations for the least racist. But you okay. want to, you want, no. you want to look at white okay. people. Slow down, because you're talking about some Mauritania. It don't matter. Mauritania was colonized by France. Okay, so you, you, you're talking about countries that got colonized by the white supremacists. So you're proving my point, sir. You're it proving- doesn't help. The, look, even if they were colonized by France, it doesn't right. help the millions of black people enslaved by them today. How does that How does that matter? So, they, well, so what? Well, hang on, hang on. Listen, listen, Tariq. If you're in Mauritania <laughs> right now <laughs> and you're a black slave, they're like, oh, well, these poor Arabs were colonized by and France. The no, they're like, we're enslaved the- to these Arabs. We're and the to... French are still running the show. They're still running the economies over there, too. The French are still running the economies, sir. So you're, you're proving my point. So, uh, it, so, it, goes, so look, it goes back my, to My point is, Tariq, is that you want to blame everything on white supremacy when because, in actuality, <laughs> okay, like in actuality, if you're an oppressed ethnic group in, in Palestine, the Afro-Palestinians, they aren't talking about white people. They're talking about how the Arabs are oppressing them, the same in the Sahel region, the same all over the world. Look at how the Indians and East Africans are treated in the Gulf regions. They're treated as slaves. They're forced to sleep in shipping containers. They get their passports stolen. Is that white supremacy doing that? Yes, I don't it, think is. So. Oh, it is. It is. The white people in Europe. They're getting those Europe. slaves in Look. the European white people. So the market is there. It's a simplistic world about view that you have. It's the same thing that white people do with Jews. All- oh. Oh, no, sir. We're still talking about white supremacy. The slave market up there in Northern Africa, the buyers are European, sir. So we're still going back to... Hang on. Hang on. Can I go... Yeah, yeah. Slavery is alive and well. You got Europeans going up into Africa, adopting children and taking them back to Europe and treating them like slaves. So yeah, there's a buyer's market. So and I, buy- I can go to the slave market in Mauritania, which they still have. I can go buy a black slave and I, then I can bring my slave into Europe or Australia. I can just put them in like luggage or whatever. Is this is this the world that you live in, Tariq? Sure. They, they take black people to Europe and Australia all the time and treat them like slaves all the time. We're dealing really? with... Yes, they do, sir. And you know that. So I could go buy one. Okay, yeah. And now you're playing dumb. No, so no, thank- I'm being serious. Okay, now you're being dumb. Yeah, you can go buy somebody. It's a slave market. That's what a slave is. You get a person and sell them. Uh, you're trying to play dumb. All right. Anyway. Let's get um, Mama Lindsay. Mama Lindsay in the building. And we got we got over a thousand people here in the middle of the night, as we always do. Mama Lindsay, you good? Mama Lindsay. All right, Doctor Davinsky, I, I, you 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 cracker babbling right now. I don't want to hear that. Okay, because now you're playing dumb, and I don't want to hear. It. All right, De Sabio, D Sabio. Hop on D Sabio. Unmute your microphone, sir. And Mama Lindsay, if you can unmute your mic, that'd be good. D Sabio, what's up, brother? Many blessings to Tariq Nasheed. Yes. I, mean, I appreciate that. What's on your mind, D Sabio? No. Yo, you know what it is, is that he is uh, trying to say that it's not the white supremacy that is doing all that. Um, things in uh, the Arabian continent, but it is the white supremacy because they're doing exactly what the thing is in society. When the racist tries to show out for the white supremacists to show they're a person of color, but they're for the white supremacists, that's exactly what they are doing. Right? That's, yes, that's what yeah. they're doing. Yes, it is. Thank you so much. Let's get um, Voluier. Voluier. Valuier. Valuier, how you doing? There you go, brother. You Haitian? No, I'm not. I'm actually, um, I'm black. Okay. Just an interesting name. The name has a little French thing to it. Yeah. That's, so uh, what's on? No, what you saying? What, what so what, saying? What, what's the name based on? 
My name is based on my logo. Okay. So what's on your mind tonight, bro? Uh, just listen to different conversations. And, um, you know, I, everybody has their own point of view on things. And, you know, I listen a lot. And uh, really don't want to take action unless action is basically where we need to take it. But uh, I've been hearing a couple of things. And as um, far as the, the white lady, I uh, forgot her name, but uh, she just didn't have her facts together. She could have wow. did a lot. She could have did a lot on this platform, but she didn't have her facts together. So uh, me and her talked on uh, DMs while y'all was talking. And um, I'm actually talked to her to get her facts together. And uh, I've been hearing a lot of things about reparations, um, how the black people should actually uh, have reparations and, and, and have our just do. I just got to keep it real. We, we, we build entrepreneurs over here and we build black entrepreneurs uh, as far as Oakland, California. We build them. Uh, different cities. I've been in Texas. Uh, we have a lot of entrepreneurs over here, and I feel like we 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 cry for reparations. We we ask for reparations, but at the same time, we are the reparations. And what I mean by that is, we can be the most successful. Uh, heritage in America. But what we don't do, we don't do just like uh, we have Jews on here talking, we have white people on here talking. We don't really stick together like the Chinese do. And the reparations, because I, I, I sent a lot of messages, and what we do we don't really care about the reparations, even though black Americans should have reparations. We don't really give a, a I ain't gonna, I ain't gonna curse on here, but F about that. Even though F is our just due. Okay, we'll give it to the people that need it the most. You're losing me, brother. I don't know what you're talking about. What do you mean we don't? What? Where, where are you getting that? Well, we don't care about reparations. Based on what? You got no, no, no. When I say when I said we, I mean my organization. We don't care about it. We just want other black people to actually get it. What, brother? Are you, I'm so lost with what you're saying, brother. I'm saying like, far as far as me, I'm an entrepreneur, and we actually came to a point to where it's we thought about it, we talked about it, discussed it, and said, okay, let's make our own reparations. That's cool. We're doing that, and we're, we're actually good. How? How are how you making your own reparations? That don't make sense. You're not making your own reparations. Because uh, America is, is beautiful. You're not making your own reparations. You didn't harm yourself. You, If you're running a business, you're making a profit. That ain't reparations. Reparations is something that a group of people took from you, and they're compensating you based on what they took from you. So you're not giving yourself reparations. What are you talking about, sir? What I'm saying is America didn't really take nothing from me. They took something from my ancestors. Which is that up. Which I would like to get back. But if I don't get back, my reparations to my people is helping them with jobs, helping them in the community. No, but here's doing... the thing. Hold on. No, here's the thing. Okay, I'm listening. They took money. Mm -hmm. They got a lot of money off of that free labor of our ancestors. You're right. And guess You're what right. they did with that money? They passed it down to the next white supremacist generation. Exactly. And that money built up, and then they passed it back down to the next white supremacist generation. That money didn't go anywhere. That money is still here, being compounded, being aggregated, and being boosted up 
into more trillions of dollars. That I agree. Still here. And the debt is still here that we've been passed down. They passed down the debt. We couldn't get our shit together because of the lack of resources that they've locked us into. And we have to fight our way out of it. So some of us can come up um, because we are phenomenal people, but we shouldn't have to struggle to come up. We should have what's owed to us. We should have compensatory justice. You understand? I do. I really do. I do. And this is the reason why we're having this conversation. And this is the reason why I, I, I jumped on your, your, your platform. It's because, yes, we do. But how many years do we have to wait on that? How many years do we have to talk about that before we decide to say, you know what? This is our reparations. Y'all gave us a little bit and we're going to take a lot. And what I mean by that is y'all gave us the freedom. Well, actually, we paid for our fucking freedom. But we fought for y'all gave freedom. us enough Y'all gave us enough to actually do what we need to do. As far as who gave us what, what, who gave what, what did, who gave us what? What are you talking about, brother? Who gave us what? Who, who gave us enough? Who and what was enough? What What are you talking about? Okay, let me break this down. Can me and you agree that we built this country? Right. Who gave us enough? Okay. Who gave us enough? Yeah. I, I keep saying we. We gave us enough. No, okay. To where it's, okay. We gave us enough yeah. to where we can do. Have our- a good night, brother. I'm not about to hear plebiscite babble. This is the damn problem when it comes to conversations about reparations. And when we do these hearings, a lot of times we get these plebiscite babblers who just pop up just to be talking. It's satianisms, just saying shitisms. All right, that's all that is. Let's be real. There's nothing constructive about that. Cats say, okay, there's a lot of people in the room. People don't be listening to me. This is my opportunity to get on the mic. <clears throat> um, yeah, first of all, um, I like to say I'm a black American and uh, um, we are giving ourselves reparations um, because we don't need reparations from the government because uh, they don't owe us anything because we are really from a distant planet in a parallel universe called Sputnik. All right. And as a Sputnikian, when I came to this planet, I came with $2 and now I got $30 and that's from my own ingenuity. I gave myself reparations. (sighs) Okay. You see, plebiscite babble, damn plebiscite babble, just talking to be talking. Goodness freaking gracious. Beth K, let's get Beth K in the building. Miss Beth K. Hello, how is everyone this evening? Everyone is great. Beth, how are you? I'm good, thank you for asking. Um, what city are you in, by the way, Beth? Oh, I'm in Wisconsin, Milwaukee there area. There you go. So what's on yeah. your mind? Um, I was just curious. So the crazy comedian, Owen Benjamin, he laid, he laid out an idea or a plan uh, for reparations mm-hmm. where where instead of paying out reparations, he could just have... Um, people on his plantation picking cotton. Uh, what are your thoughts on that? A lot of y'all suspected white supremacists. Y'all really got to work on your wit and your trolling. Y'all really got to work on that. Because a lot of you have a lot of vitriol and because we're making progress with the reparations conversation, y'all don't know how to deal with it. So you fall back on this real weird, out of context, lame trolling, and it makes y'all look bad and it makes you look like you're shook and it makes you look afraid and you hiding your fear behind that weird trolling. 
What are you really afraid of when it comes to reparations? Let's talk real. I'm not going to even dignify that troll shit with a response. What are you really afraid about reparations, Beth? Um, I'm not afraid of anything. I mean, the fact is, um, this government has been throwing reparations around to uh, troll you, the black Americans, for the last, I don't know, 50 years. It's never going to happen. They did it as a carrot to say, oh, you're going to get reparations. Just vote for us. It's never mm -hmm. happening. Yes, not, it is. No, Beth, it's not. Sweetie. Beth, it's going to happen. You know why, Beth? Because what happens is the money that's being... That should Tell be me useful. where it's coming from. Tell me where uh, it's coming from, from our budget in this right. country, from taxpayers and all the money that's being printed. Tell me where it's coming from, please, sir. The U.S. government, ma'am, is going to come from the U.S. government. No, the U.S. government is the taxpayers, which means right. all of us that are working right. for our money mm -hmm. and the GDP and everything that's going out and coming in. So where is it that's coming from coming. when we are broke? Where we're not broke, we're not broke. We're giving money to the Ukraine. We're not too broke for that. We're giving no. Money. They're printing we're, money and giving right. it to the Ukraine. We're printed for us. We are printing money and giving uh -huh. it to well, they, Israel. It broke. is we're printing it money. It's fake money. Right, right. No. It ain't that fake. It's they're not our money. Uh huh. You, you're just babbling, ma'am. I want the same money. They're not that broke to give money to the Ukraine. They're not that broke to give money to these illegal immigrants coming over here. They're not that broke. So we're going to get that money, too, for us. Then. Correct. Right. So we're well, going, that's you what you just the, said. We're not that broke, but we are. And no, you know not. we are. Yes. No, we're not. And you know we are. No, we're not. You know this we are. Why, why we are a bank. Oh, stop, stop, stop the little man's mouth, ma'am. This is why reparations for foundational black Americans is very important because we're the ones who we're going to stimulate the economy. We're not going to be like some of the immigrants who send money back and some of the Ukrainians and that money is not being spent here. We're going to boost the economy with what's owed and we're going to get reparations back. We're going to get it and you're going to be very happy because the, the economy will be boosted. Beth. Because listen, Tariq, Beth, it's not. No, listen. Don't Best think people. that I don't want you to get reparations. You don't. That's oh, not what it is. Of course you don't. You, you, uh, we know you don't, but it's going to happen. No, you Beth. don't know. You don't know what I think in my mind. Beth, you came in here with a uh, uh, an anti-black troll, um, some lame troll. I you... asked you a question about right. Owen Benjamin's joke. Right. right. Okay. You came in with some lame anti-black troll material. So that shows your mindset, Beth. So, Beth, we're going to get reparations because, listen, Beth, the money... You're not already, going to get reparations. We get, we get, it was, Beth, 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 listen, dear. They can't just keep... They're already throwing the reparations money out trying to contain us. They spend billions of dollars on militarized police weaponry and millions of dollars on payouts for non-justice for cops harming people in the city all around the country these cities have to pay out millions and millions and millions of dollars it's Man. all a manipulation sir <laughs> they are not going to pay a dime and yes they are ma'am because they're already throwing the money away and at some point ma'am they're going to have to just be practical about it and just give us the money so that we can produce justice you cannot sustain a society militarily and just keep funding a militarized society to suppress people. The money what runs What militarized out. society are you talking about? I'm talking about the system of white supremacy. They, they create a militarized white system. White supremacy? Are you yes. being serious right now? Where? Yes. What? You, you, ma'am. You are a, a, a perfect example of white supremacy. You. You came in the room displaying white supremacy, ma'am. That would be you. You just muted me. <laughs> Right, because I'm telling you, you asked me a question, and I want you said you know? white supremacy, yes. right? Correct. Uh huh. Is the majority yeah. of this country is that correct? White supremacy, ma'am. Listen, white supremacy dominates the entire planet, not just this country. No, it doesn't. All countries, yes, it does. What name percentage, a country? What name percentage a, okay. of the world All. is white Europeans? Oh, no, not no, no, Jews, no. white no, Europeans. No, 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 what no, percentage? We don't, we don't do that. We don't do that. We don't do that here, man. We don't do the Jewish deflection. We're talking about white supremacy, not religion. 
Um, the white supremacists dominate. I wasn't all talking the world. about religion. Yeah, yeah, you're trying to deflect. No, white there's, a, di there's a big no, difference no, 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 between white not, Europeans. No, it ain't. No, it ain't. No, it ain't. No, it ain't. You all practice white supremacy. Yes, it is. Yes, it no, is. Not. Yes, I, it is. I say so, and we've already debunked that, so we're not going to cover that here. But we're talking there about There is no debunking about that. Is, you it's know white. there's a difference. You're you're no, saying no, that, and you know no, there's not. a difference between no, white Europeans and Jews. No, no when y'all deal with black people, there's no difference. The white supremacists in both communities are anti-black towards us, and that's all that's that That's not true, because yes, foundational black Americans that you talk about separate themselves from the migrants that are coming out over now to USA from Africa. They separate themselves, Correct. Um, no, well, the migrants separate themselves from us, and we are delineating because of a reparations claim, because our reparations claim cannot go to everybody, ma'am. So that's why we delineate. That's for a specific legal claim. So you're so so you're you, only delineating you, you, over you share the same views, protections, and set asides and benefits as. All of the people classified as white who believe in white supremacy, ma'am. So we don't break so, people up. So in other words, we go to work, get jobs. You go what, dear? Go ahead. Say what you're saying, dear. Beth, I don't have you blocked, dear. I'm, I don't stop have, muting me. I don't um, have, go ahead, dear. So, so the white people, the white, the white uh, supremacists, supremacists right. we go to work and get jobs. That's the problem in the country. That's what we do wrong. That, that, that's some that's some janky straw man argument that you created. No, no it's I, not a stram, straw man. <laughs> it, yes, it, ma'am. You just made you just you just made up a straw man. You you being a white supremacist, ma'am. You're just saying stuff. It's I'm white and I say so. You're doing a lot of I'm white and I say so, ma'am. That's what makes me suspect that you are a white supremacist based on your tactics and your views, ma'am. But but Beth, and you're not but addressing Beth. the fact that. The Jewish no, no, people. No, no, no. What? No, no, no. We don't. We don't deflect into Jewish people. We don't man. talk about Jewish people. We don't. We don't deflect into Jewish deflect people. Deflect. Right. That's Jewish bigotry. People. That's that's bigotry. You're talking. Bigotry. We don't. Do Is bigotry. it anti-Semitism? No, no. You you you're. Is it racism? You're engaging in bigotry. That's more white supremacy. Bigotry. Man. Right. I don't know. Why am I going to criticize okay. a person based on their ethno-religious beliefs? I don't criticize white people, ma'am. What percentage of the population? Why are you engaging in bigotry? That's very bigoted. No, man. I was going to ask you a question. But no, but what ma percentage of the why population? Are you why are you denigrating Jewish people? Runs That's the country, like as in media. But ma'am, why are you denigrating Jewish? Are they people? primarily Jewish people or are they white people? They're white people. Are, are they black run people? Television. Black people. Oh, they're white, white people. White. What black? Europeans? What black people are running the media? I don't know. I was asking you. Right. No, not too many. Black people don't run the media. It's run by the white supremacists. No, it's run by the Jews. No. That's a, There's a difference. It's run by the Jews. No, there's white people, the white Jews. The no. black Jews don't well, own yeah, it. Yeah, they're white. There you go. No, there are no black Jews. That's yeah. Not, unless well, what they're do you mean? Bouillet. There's not black Jews. What are you talking about? Unless they're Bouye, the the uh, the rap people that sign over the knife. What are you knife. talking about? They are black Jews. What white what, black, black, Jews? Jews? black Jews? Black Jews all in Ethiopia. The black Jews go to Israel. There's black oh. Jewish tribes in Africa. So in the United States of slow America, down, man. Slow what down. white? Slow down. Wait, don't slow down. You you said something and you just got easily debunked and now you want to change the subject. Why did you lie like that and say there were no black Jews? Why would you tell that lie? See, this is why we, we if you're going to lie, we, we can't really continue. You can't lie and then run away from your lie. How are you going to say there are no you black You just people? changed the subject. We were talking about no. who runs the country. Right. And I was asking who Jews. runs the media. No. And you said, I said Jews. Who? And, and I said, well, there's black Jews. They're not running anything. And you said there are no black Jews. Stop muting me. <laughs> right. All right, but no, no, you're not going to talk over me. Why did you lie and say there were no black Jews? There, yes, there are I black. I didn't. Jews. I asked you, who are the black Jews? There aren't black Jews. Where are they? 
And I just told you there's a Jewish, there's Jewish tribes in Africa. You have Ethiopian Jews. You have Jews who go over to Israel and they're discriminated against by the white ones. This is very well so, documented. So what? So white is the problem all the way around. White is supremacy. White, white people are the problems. White supremacists, not white people. You sound like white a Jew. People. Are white you Jewish? People. Yeah, you're trolling again, ma'am. I mean, no, I'm asking means a I'm question. Winning. Are you Jewish? Trolling, no. Trolling, trolling means I'm winning, ma'am. You're not winning. Actually. I'm winning because you're trolling, ma'am, and that means no. I'm, I asked you a question. Well, Are you Jewish? A, do I need to take a victory lap, ma'am? Because you're trolling at this point, ma'am. I'm enjoying this. Right, because you've run out of material and black. I've not run out of black material. Daddy, black I'm enjoying daddy this conversation. You, you like getting spanked by black daddy? Oh, that's sad. No. The black daddy is spanking you intellectually. So you're a Jew. So you're just you're saying a black anything. Jew. That's weird. Okay, so now the unfunny trolling is about to start. So let me get my victory lap on. Hey, Beth. Okay, Beth. So you're tapping out. When you start trolling, that means you're tapping out. And I, I will accept your defeat. I didn't tap that, out. I'm yes, still you did. Here. No, no, no. You're trolling, ma'am. And that's, no, I'm still here. That's the white supremacist way of tapping out. And I accept <laughs> your defeat. White supremacist. Yes, I want to go ahead and... No, uh, it's wanna... really silly. There's no, no white supremacy in this country. You're being <laughs> silly about this. Everybody did, would then, agree with then it. Why no. did your people, Every why did you, normal why did, human being... Then why did your people have laws talking about white supremacy? Why did your people say that, ma'am? Why did they say that they're building a system? Stop muting me. No, ma'am. When? No, ma'am. Ma ma when? This, when? What? Joe ma Biden this or is something? Ma when? Ma when? Yes. Ma'am, you are not. You can't talk over Black Daddy now can't do that. All right. You got to calm down. I apologize, sir. Go all right. ahead. All right. All right. Use that mouth to shut up and smoke meth, but not talk over me. Um, Ma'am, white supremacy has been the law of the land. They've been practicing white supremacy by name and reinforcing white supremacy. This is their term. This is from your community. They told us they were Who's white. Who's they and when? The white supremacists. And they've been doing this for the last- When? Uh, for the last 200 years, they've been promoting- Tariq, Tariq, Tariq. It's 2024. Can you And please? we're still dealing with white supremacy. No, still... we're not. Where? Yes. Tell me where. All areas of activity. Tell me where. Then why told... does DEI exist? Because that's a figment of white supremacism. No, it's not. You're just being it's funny. A, it's you're a the white troll. Supremacy. Like, that's dude, you're supremacy. being fucking ma funny. Ma is um, DEI is another boogeyman acronym to attack black people. Just like CRT, just like affirmative action. You guys always have to create these boogeyman ideologies as a way to attack black people, which is further proof of white supremacy. Okay. I never attacked black people. You keep you muting me. <laughs> what are you talking about? Yes, you did. And you came in the no, room. No, I didn't. You came Stop. in with, with weird trolling. Beth, Beth. No, I was Beth, making Beth, a Beth, joke Beth, because Beth, Owen Beth. Benjamin. Ha, ha, what? Beth. Go ahead. Beth, um, where'd you go to college, Beth? I am super intelligent. I didn't need college. There you I go. Have hey, high IQ. My, me either. I didn't go to college either. I'm not saying that as a, um, so you didn't go to college. How many black men were you with when you were in your teens or your early 20s? Are you being serious right now? Being very serious. How many black men were you I, with? I didn't. Really? Really. I find that hard to believe, Beth. Why is that, Tariq? Because a lot of you white supremacist women had a little run here and there. Tariq, stop and then when, with the and white supremacists. And, and when you get it's older, really when, funny. And then when you get older, and then when you get a little older, you get a little long in the tooth. Then you take on these white supremacist views. My teethuses are not long. Yeah. Okay. Your teeth and your titties are long. My teethuses. Yeah. Yeah. No, none of them are long. Yeah. 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 And I think them long titties were in the mouth of a brother back in the day. <laughs> oh All right, listen. Let's agree to I handshake. Think, I think listen. them titties. I think them titties were sucked on Tariq. by a Tyrone. All right, <laughs> Tariq, you're being very gross. No, no, ma'am. I shake your hand. Does your titty uh, nipple smell like Hennessy and Newports? Ew. What? Ew, no. You had you a hood. <laughs> Did you? Oh my God. 
Uh, and no, now you want to flip. Funny. The, now you want to flip the script. No, right? but I'm having fun. Yeah, I'm I would like to too. just like Daquan had fun up in your cooter cat. All right. Wow. Yeah, come on. Let's let's. let's you don't on. have to be so rude. I, I'm, I'm um, the, y'all y'all be having a rendezvous with the brothers, and then y'all want to switch up and be on some white supremacist stuff. But there's no white supremacist. What the hell are you talking about? Man, man. Oh. My goodness. My goodness. Anyway, Beth. Anyway, thank you so much, Beth. I appreciate you, dear. All right, I'm going to let you get back to the trailer park. All right, Beth. Thank you so much. All right. Yeah, you can tell. Yeah, you can tell these women that had a little rendezvous with the brothers. All right. This this Marcus dude. You, what's with them? this? You, you're doing a lot of trolling in the comment section. Which is weird, dude. A lot of weird trolling. You got to cut that out, bro. Yeah, you got a lot of weird dudes be popping in the mix just doing weirdo stuff. Watch this stuff. You are re trolling real hard in the comment section. You got to watch a lot of people on these spaces. You got people who be deliberately trying to instigate little beefs and stuff like that on some real oppie shit. You got some real oppie cats who lurk around in these spaces who try to low-key instigate altercations and beefs and it's very clumsy the way you're doing it because you can tell that somebody didn't sent you in here to try to do something weird all right all right let me get what's we're having a decent conversation tonight we got a lot of people in here we got 1100 people in the building right now this is the middle of the night. Um, what's your name? Um, David. Hop on, David. And um, Tariq. What's um, up? I, I just want to give you um, a couple of facts. Um, Jews are not white, even though they might have uh, yeah, they are. Yeah, as they, white skin. The, the uh, white just ones listen are. to the facts. The I'm, I'm literally going to speak the truth. The a Jew will are. actually admit that they are not white. The white ones are, sir. The white ones are. A white Jew will admit that they're not actually white. They will always tell you that they're a Jew. They are not actually white. They well, might have. It's a lie. That's a lie. That's just not true. You're already lying. So that I'm not lying, Teresa. Yes, you, yes, you are. You're lying, and that nullifies everything that you have to say. What you're doing is practicing white supremacy, sir. This isn't white supremacy. This is what the it Jew is. will actually tell you. This is what I've been told by actual Jews. They will admit no. that they are not. No, there's Jewish people who classify themselves as white, and you're trying to deflect from that, sir. And that's what a white supremacist would do. So we're not buying it, David. All right? Just, Just because you can't handle the facts, you we're not fucking buying. stupid nigger oh, cunt. Oh, there you go. There you go. Yeah, I'm going to be racist as fuck right now because you, you kept go. muting there me. Instead of letting me make a valid there point, you stupid, there low you IQ. Oh, no, no, no. See, there you go. I wanted to come on out. Come on out. Just be the white supremacist you are. Don't try to hide behind Jewish people. You be the white supremacist that you're supposed to be. I like when you're very, you're very honest about being white supremacist. Don't try to hide it. Do not try to hide it, ladies and gentlemen. And don't try to throw the N-word around. That doesn't bother us, by the way. That doesn't bother us, David, because we know you're sitting in that trailer park with struggle jeans. Uh, actually, right? no, I live in a fucking stone-built house. Uh, you're the one oh, living yeah. in... You, you sound like a methed out Harry Potter, okay? You over there in Hogwarts with a meth pipe. So, sir, you're struggling. And you're you got struggle jeans, all right, the low birth rates are kicking that ass right now with your pepper uh, pig. Tariq, man. can I give you some facts? You Did can't give me nothing, little struggle genius. Irish white people were slaves before niggers. Okay, it doesn't matter because you were the N-words of Europe. You weren't even classified as white until later. They didn't even let you into whiteness. All right? They used to portray you as simians and ape-like creatures. So, yeah, so we two in words sitting in a tree, ain't we? All right? So, yeah, you think you eat? Yeah, I get called potato. You, what you say with your little broke cell? I, I couldn't hear you, your, your little struggle phone. Uh, I said, I get called potato nigger. Uh, you're just a slow. Okay, it's not really that. You're just a low IQ nigger. 
well, damn it, I'm not struggling and fleeing like you, sir, from the slums of Europe. All right. So how high is Oh, that? I didn't leave Europe. I'm still here. No, um, sir, you're probably somewhere in Canada or over here in the United No, States. I'm actually in the country I was born in. Um, I don't believe that. I don't believe that. You're not in little... Yes, old... I'm Irish. You're not over there in little janky Ireland, okay? I'm Irish and I still live in Ireland, you know. Look... Okay, you sound like a musty leprechaun, all right? Trying to get me gold <laughs> with your struggle genes. All I right? can sound American if that'll help. Okay, well, why don't you get them birth rates up? What are you going to oh, do? Oh, I am. I'm actually... Uh, How are you going to do that? Th 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 there is, what, three different women um, impregnated by me recently? And yes, they've done the pregnancy test. They are actually pregnant. They're all white women as well. Well, stop it. Stop it, sir. You probably got you an Indian refugee over there. You're about to have your little tar bash. Uh, to... No, I don't, I don't touch... Yeah, uh, yeah, 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 yes. You got you an East Indian woman pregnant, and so you about to have a, a little baklava eating baby, all right? You about to have a little leprechaun with a red dot, sir. It's about to be real funny style. No, I'm not a race mixing food. No, 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 sir. You are babbling white supremacists with struggle genes, and you're very mad. So anyway, I'm not mad. I'm, I'm yes. delighted that I'm irritated. Uh, well, I'm delighted that you can leave. Top of the morning to you. There you go. I got you up out of here. Let them jeans struggle, buddy. Let them struggle. Well, we're in here heavy. Speaking of musty, um, the Rootwork deodorant is available at rootworkstyle.com. Rootwork deodorant available at rootworkstyle.com, ladies and gentlemen. All right. Uh, well, we are in here deep. 1,100 people in the middle of the night. Um, let's get Prodigal. I think I remember having you in here before, Prodigal. Prodigal. And I got to do a, I do a shoot in the morning. I got to do a film shoot. Well, not in the morning, in the afternoon. So I ain't going to be up here too, too late. Prodigal. What's up, brother? How you doing? I'm good. How are you, Prodigal? I'm all right. I'm just confused because how many Jews are Nazis, KKK, or in white supremacist organizations? I mean, is that your argument you're making? Um, yeah, you do have a lot. Well, you did have a lot of um, um, white supremacist Jewish people who were actually in Nazi and white supremacist organizations. You had a lot of Jewish people who were connected to the alt right. So you have. Um, I, I just I just find it. I, I listen. I'm not. It, anti-semitic by any measure but right. somebody somebody said it earlier depending on the situation they identify as white they don't if you look at mass migration a lot of the groups are led by people of jewish ethnic faith or religion and this is something that affects fbas as well as other groups i mean you're being pushed out of you know a lot of your own communities look at compton look at other people the latinos are just perfect. taking it over that's the white supremacy that, that's white supremacy pushing yeah. the border policies that's what you're yeah. saying yeah, white supremacy. You are talking about Compton and all these were these places were sundown towns. Some of these places used to just have signs saying whites only. It didn't say Jewish only. It said whites only. I'm talking about the last 20, 30 years. Right, but I'm saying mass but, migration. But, but like if you're if you're gonna deal with a product, you have the, to deal with it. At, the remnants, the remnants of that, just because they took the signs down, the ideology didn't go away. So the same mindset it's still there, the white supremacist mindset. We're talking about white supremacy. So, I mean, uh, you got to you got to actually, you know, be able to talk about the facts. I'm not sure if you're paid. I mean, a lot of leaders are paid by certain groups. Right. You know, you the, Which is a you project. Look, you, look, you look at the SPLC. That's you a project. At the, you look at the ADL. These uh, th right. those alleged, allegedly led white organizations seem to right. hate white people and want to erase them. And they're no, not. I mean, what are you talking about? Have you looked at some of their definitions and, and what they state? You know, even saying it, something as, as simple as it's okay to be white and deem as racist. Like, they don't it's know, it's just weird because I heard Myron well, call you out on this and you start like a fool. And you're, well, who? Okay, you're projecting, sir. You're trying to act like you got some imaginary win. Nobody called me out on anything. I debunked about 20 anti-black races and I washed all of them and embarrassed them all across the internet, prodigal. 
And that sounds it's like why you're weird. You can't talk and, about certain. And you're salty because of that, sir. And you're mad because the whole Jewish deflection thing kept falling flat. And it's falling. No, flat. I think you're bad faith. I think no, that no, you no, can't. No, you can't no, address no, 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 no. You're upset because that ain't working. When I'm, I'm not. I, do, I, I know. That's not know, working. Starting- it's not working, Prodigal. You're never going to deflect away from the real issue, which is white supremacy. You're not going to make up on another imaginary... Well, supremacy. it's going to be hard to get reparations. With- no, no, no. Don't worry about that. We I, I don't need to. That's you're all, you're, the Democrats are replacing you. They're bringing in... Right. The, no, they're, it's, always, oh, it's always the Democrats or it's well, the I Republicans. I mean, it's clear. I mean, oh, they want... No. Oh, no, it, no, it's not a political group. All of you guys. I'm talking work. about political power. You have to have a means to an end. When you're being no. replaced by Asians and Central and South and Americans, and your voting are, block is. And the white supremacists are orchestrating that, sir. That's orchestrated by the. They're, they're allowed in by the white supremacists, sir. Right? Right? The white supremacists are allowing them in, sir. Right? Come on, man. Talk to me. Talk to me. Talk to me. I, I'm muted. You mute every two seconds because I right, make right. a point. It's pretty sad right. that you can't let really me speak. You're that scared. No, but, no, because you're not going to talk over me. You're sir. that scared. Yeah, you no, you're, not, you're not going to talk over me. This is not your uncle's penis. You're not going to open your mouth and start bobbing. Yeah, that's that's scared. It's weird. No, no, it's no, very no, weird. no, 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 no. You, you don't talk and just babble over me, sir. You, you're not going to do that now. You got to have some decorum in here, prodigal. I'll take the victory. It's, uh, thank you. I appreciate it. Right. No, 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 no. You're not going to crack or babble. You're not going to do that. You got to have decorum, sir. All right. He, he left. Right. You don't get to come in here and babble. All right. You're not just going to say a bunch of nonsense. You're not going to deflect. Y'all think you're going to come in here and deflect on the Republicans, then the Democrats, then the Jews. You know, no, no. It's white supremacy. That's the problem. And you're not going to deflect away from that. All right. We got some more white supremacist deflectors in here. Okay. Let's get Larry the camel and he got something about Zionism on his page, so that's going to be interesting. Larry, hop on. And Waquil, you in here, brother? Waquil? Waquil? I was yeah, going to yeah. Let, yeah, I was gonna say let Dr. Davinsky up. Thanks I'm for here. letting me up. I was going to vouch for him. You've had him Hold on, before. Larry. Hold on, Larry. Hold on. Let me get Waquil. Waquil, what's up, brother? What's going on? How's the brother? I'm good, man. How are you, sir? I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. Yeah, you gotta. Uh, these guys, they be bringing up this Jewish thing. They like uh, obsessed with this Jewish thing, ain't they? Oh yeah, big time. It's a major deflection that they're trying to do, and it ain't working. And they're getting frustrated because we're not letting them deflect. Uh-huh. You know, and when I was in, in the joint, the Italians, the Jews, all stick together with the Anglo's. Against the blacks, and then right. the Puerto Ricans are joining in at some times. Right. You know what I mean? Right. And they've always been like that. And I'm, that's why I don't, we're not going to divide them up in little subgroups and they're all working together. No, no, no. You work together, you get judged together. So everybody from these different ethnic groups who practice anti black racism, you're one and the same. You are all one and the same. Larry the Camel, hop on, man. How you doing? How you guys doing? I would say uh, I came up to let uh, Davinsky, you've had him up here before. I seen him waving his hand. Dr. Davinsky, I think he's in your uh, requests. Uh, he's, a, he's, a, he's, he's a white man and uh, he's got some interesting insights. I think he spoke on your uh, show before Larry, here. Larry, Larry, slow down. You're, you're, you're coming in late. We already talked to him. <clears throat> I already had him up, Larry. I've talked to him. We oh, have- you already had him up. Yeah, we had a long conversation with him already, so so you okay, can't. I'll, I'll, I'll switch down. To this. On your mind, now, don't don't try to hide behind him. What's your ideology? Where are you from, Larry? Where am I from? I'm from. I'm stateless. I'm from a sanctioned country. Oh, I'm from a God. poor African country. And I, th- I see the world heading out. I think basically what I'm seeing here is governments Stop around that. the world are behaving Larry, like third Larry, world politicians. Stop that. Stop I think uh, I think it's happened in the United States. I Larry, think I, I, Larry, 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 you stop. You don't don't start babbling. 
it wasn't a trick question. You should, don't be ashamed the way you from. Where's your family from, man? What part of Africa? Where am I from? I'm from I'm from East Africa, a country called Somalia. Right. Now, why is that so hard to say? It's not hard to say. Don't be ashamed. We know it's down bad, but don't be I'm, ashamed. I'm, I'm from a sanctioned state. Third world. Africa. Right. What was your, you know, I know your name isn't Larry. What was your name back home? No, this is my, uh, this is my. What was your name back home? Larry? Alhamdulillah. Larry? One of the 25 prophets of the Islamic faith, of the Abrahamic faiths, I would say. Larry, are you living in Minnesota now, Larry? No, I'm not from Minnesota. No, you where are you living now? Right now, I'm in uh, I'm in Africa. You're not in Africa. I'm back in Africa. I, I left the oh, West. Yeah. I left oh, the yeah. West. Currently in Africa. Okay, Larry. Why wouldn't I be in Africa? Why wouldn't I I'm be not, in Africa? I'm just going to have a musty tether sitting here lying just for the sake of lying. All right. This, fam, y'all want to know why we delineate? This is why. That's why. This dude just, he... He couldn't even get the conversation started without just lying for the sake of lying, lying and babbling. All right. And we're not supposed to de delineate from lying, babbling tethers. Huh? This man was just coming up with lies just for the hell of it. Yeah. And we're supposed to be on some Pan-African vibe with that. huh? We're supposed to be building with that. You see why we ain't never got nothing popping with that? What we gonna get popping with that? Nothing. All right. Che, let's get let's get Che in here. Che, hop on. All right, Che, your microphone ain't working. Um, Beth, I've already had you on, dear. You, shouldn't you be looking at um, a Black Planet page or something like that? Hello? What's up, Che? Hey, what's up, man? Um, I just wanted to piggyback off of what that white supremacist lady was saying, a whole bunch of bullish about um, that there's no such thing as white supremacy. If you go to her page, right. all she does is obsess about black people and specifically black women or, you know, little stuff like that. Um, these people are insane. They act as if we're not seeing what we're seeing or going with what we're going through as black people in this country. And it's just, it's fucking irritating. So, you know, I really, yes, I really appreciate you spending 10 toes down on everything regarding these, these individuals. I really yes. appreciate that. Thank you so much, Jay. Thank you so much. I appreciate no you. All right. But well, we in here heavy. We're in here heavy. Um, by the way, everybody can go to Hidden History Museum. Don't forget, we still got the Hidden History Museum. Everybody can make donations to the Hidden History Museum. Make your weekly and monthly donation to the Hidden History Museum. And also get the book on the Hidden History Museum website called Hidden Heroes from A to Z. A children's book that breaks down a lot of good historic game. Very good book for you kids. HiddenHistoryMuseum.com. That's where you can get the book. All right. Let's get some more folks in here. Um, you know what I found out um, the other day when we were talking about hip-hop and MC Shan made a video talking about how black people, only thing black people brought to rap was or hip hop was the rapping and all of the Puerto Ricans and all these other groups brought everything else. The, the They brought the fashion to hip hop, talking about how they were, the black artists were dressing like the Puerto Ricans in the eighties, which is horse crap. And people are like, Where the, what the hell is this dude talking about? Now we, we know that Shan was on the pipe at one point. Somebody asked him, and I saw it, I should have put this up. They asked him about his background, his lineage. Shan said his people are from the damn Virgin Islands. So that explains it. When he was saying that, I said, we need to check his background. And somebody asked him in like in a comment section, then he responded that his people were from the Virgin Islands. So MC Shan is a damn tether. Okay? That's why you see these people saying all this weird stuff about hip hop and who created this and who didn't 
and you'll see that they got some foreign backgrounds. But MC Shan is from the Virgin Islands. I I wish I had the screenshot of um, the sister who asked him about his background. You there? So yeah, that explains a lot. Y'all hear my zapper in the back? I got my insect zapper. I love my insect zapper. Because late at night, little bugs, my kids be running in and out the house, so bugs be in here. I know y'all hear a popping sound in the back. That's my guilty pleasure. I got my zapper on my desk, and it be zapping the hell out them damn insects. I love it. We lighten their asses up. Yeah. All right, let me see who we got in here. Well, I ain't going to be on here too, too long because I do got stuff to do in the morning. You good over there, Beth? You know, Beth, I don't know why Beth is trying to get back in. Hold on, Beth, let me get Beth in. Beth, why are you trying to get back in, there, Beth? Hop on, Beth. You, you, you're requesting to get back in. Why are you trying to get up under Black Daddy? Why are you trying to get back in? <laughs> What's going on with that? Ah. Uh. Listen, I like talking to people. Um, I, I'm not, listen, I'm not someone who likes to uh, get in altercations. Of course so, not. Right. It sounds like you don't either. So, right. No altercation at all. This is an education. It's an education, not an altercation. It I was is. Educating. Yes, I was educating you. This is a school for you. You're educating me? Yes. Yes, indeed. Oh. Well, Listen to you. you're going well, to Black I'm Daddy enjoy- Uni- you're, you're going to Black Daddy University. You're going to an HBCU <laughs> right now. Yeah? You're right. like Rachel Dolezal, but go ahead. Uh, except I didn't like brown my skin and pretend I'm a black person when I'm a I white know. girl. I know, but kind of back in the day, you know. the brothers the brothers browned that cooter cat. But go ahead. <laughs> go ahead. Dude, yes. why do you have to be so disgusting? It's That's just inappropriate. That's- no, it's inappropriate. I know you're married. I know Don't you're mute me though. Don't mute. I'm me. not, and I know you're married to a nice, nice, good white supremacist male. I know that. No, listen. And, and you don't, it's you, not. Why do you have to listen? Why do you have to do this? You have a huge following. Right. You don't have to make right. You don't have to make every white woman into a white supremacist person. But We're based not. on based on some of your actions and your words, man, it's safe to suspect. That you are white supremacist. No, I'm not. And most I, likely, you might be married to one, ma'am. No, I'm not. Who are you married to? What, what's your husband? What was he from? Oh, none of your business. That's how it is. <laughs> well, well white supremacist. He's probably white supremacist. What's right? your wife? My wife is a beautiful red bone black queen. From what I recall, I think Tommy Sotomayor said that your wife's father or mother is a Jew or something, so your wife's right. a Jew. Okay. So you're trolling. kind of tied to Jewish. No, I'm just Tro- saying. Trolling, I'm right. You're and, trying and, to get into my personal and, and shout business. shout out to Tommy, by the way. Shout out to Tommy for finessing you white supremacists. Tommy just it's says... It's not that, finessing. Yeah, it's, it's, uh, shout listen- out to the homie Tommy for finessing you white supremacists. He says off the wall shit so that he can get clicks and views and money from the clicks and I ain't mad at him. If y'all believe that stupid shit, that shows how low your IQ really is, ma'am. But go ahead, dear. And shout out to Tommy. Go ahead, dear. (laughs) Mm -hmm. Well, out of however many people are listening right now, there's me and you. Nobody this, else yeah. wants to come up as a speaker. So maybe yeah, there's a act, problem with you. No, they, no, no they, maybe dozens, people don't want to be in. No, actually, there's dozens of requests, ma'am. There's about 40 people who's requesting right now. I just brought you up because you kept making little hand signals. And I just wanted to see what else you wanted to say. You just wanted to talk to Black Daddy. That's why you. I didn't probably, make hand signals. Yes, you did. You, you trying to get back up. That's why you listen to the time. You listen to Tommy. You're listening to me. You're sitting there fantasizing when you're laying up under white daddy and that wet dog smell ain't really satisfying you. You're like, oh, my God, what are the blacks doing? Right. Come on, Beth. Talk to me. Talk black to me. <laughs> well, yeah? if you unmuted me, I would be able to talk. It's right. funny how you do that. Right. So unmute me. 
and then right. I can talk. Right. So right. I know you, you, got, right. you got you got soul fantasies. I know. I know. I have ma'am. soul fantasies. No, actually, I was just speaking to the topic. Right. And I can see that out of desperation, you have nobody else fucking coming up to speak. So I did. But that's not true. That's not true. I've been talking to people and watch your mouth. I know. I know you're not the most um, you know, refined person. I know you came from a trailer park, but you don't have to act like that. You know, let's not have a potty mouth. OK, um, but there are several people calling and talking and I'm corresponding with them. No, I didn't come from a trailer park and you know nothing about me. Yeah, ma'am. And no, nobody else is coming up. But yeah. I did. Ma'am, you do come from a trailer park, ma'am. You have a trailer park mindset. And you have to focus on black people all day to get your mind off being poor trailer trash. And you're sitting up there drinking a Pabst Blue Ribbon, um, smoking meth. And no, I'm like to, every... And, and listening to some Ariana Grande albums, whatever you white supremacists like doing. No, I'm that. like every other white person who has to see videos of black women and men beating people for no fucking reason. Are you crazy? <laughs> And the only thing that's getting beaten is white cootie cat by black soul poles, which is what happened to you when you were younger, ma'am, when you were 1920. That's the only thing that's getting beat. Nobody's beating on anybody, ma'am. That's a fantasy that you have. You got these weird fantasies that you're projecting on the black people, Beth. You will never get reparations because of your behavior. Ma'am, we're going to get reparations. Um and the reparations is coming in the form of white cooch. That's a form of reparations to some of the, the Tommy Soda Myers and people like that. You guys are paying people like that, their reparations in white cooch. And we're going to get the reparations in cash too. Okay. So no, you won't because the will. country will, no, the country will suffer and everybody will go under because if any money is paid out, The people will spend the money, cause inflation. It will crash the entire economy. Ma'am, when you and your community went out there and bought all of that meth and fentanyl, that didn't crash the economy. It didn't. And our reparations checks are not going to crash the economy. It's going to boost the economy because we as foundational black Americans, we're going to use our ingenuity to build (laughs) this economy. Right, right, ma'am. Right. Just like you have foundational meth in your pipe. So, yes, foundational black Americans, we're going to boost and stimulate the economy with our reparations checks, ma'am. And you know what that means? That's going to be more fentanyl for you. So you should be happy that we're going to do great. There is no such thing as foundational black Americans. <laughs> ma'am, there's 43 million of us, ma'am. Yes, we are. And if it weren't for us, you wouldn't it's have had make much. believe and your your ma'am, 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 everything is make believe. We're foundational black Americans. We are a distinct lineage. If it were not for our distinct lineage building this nation, you would still be somewhere in Poland scratching your ass, eating an egg sandwich. All right. Are you serious? Uh, as a heart attack. No, you're not, because you know better. The white Europeans are the reason why everything exists today. Good luck with your fucking... Man, watch your little dirty potty mouth, ma'am. We don't want that potty mouth here. This is not the potty mouth hour. All right, and she left. She left. She's getting very frustrated because... She knows reparations is coming, and you know she thinks that means less meth. No, it's going to be more meth for you, ma'am, because the economy is going to be boosted. So there's going to be more businesses. So you can still get get high, and you'll be able to smoke and do what you do. The wet dog smell will be more pronounced, but because of you sweating and being mad, but you know it's going to be a great thing. It's going to be a phenomenal thing. All right, let's get. Um, let me see. J.W. J.W. in the building. And a lot of folks in here. What's up, Sister Brooke? I see you down there below. What you doing up this late, Brooke? One, two, three, four. It should should be four o'clock in the morning out there in New York. All right. Um, J.W., you good? 
J.W., are you good? What's going on, brother? I appreciate What's... you bringing me up. My man, how you doing, J.W.? I'm doing good, man. Hey, how can you explain white supremacy when foreign blacks, Asians, Indians are benefiting more from the system than whites? The hell they are. That ain't true at all. There's nothing remotely true about that. They're not the top economic them. earners are Asians. There's multiple different no. ethnic groups from Asia. That's not true. Indians, West Indian, uh, black true. immigrants are, are benefiting more from the American system than whites. No, no, they're not. They're not. No, they're not. They're not. No, they're, they're not. That's true. What y'all do, y'all get those medium household incomes and then y'all try to conflate it into something else. No. They show some of these immigrant groups, they have high, medium household incomes per capita. But all that means is that it's a bunch of them living in a damn house together. And yeah, they work a whole bunch of minimum wage jobs and there's 20 people in the house. Yeah, the medium- That's not house. accurate, brother. We're talking okay. about wages and earning. No, we're not talking about wages. Yes. What's not? No, it's not. We're would talking you, would about- Would you say that no, you benefit no. from- Slow down, because you're not going to sit here and lie. We're talking about just the medium household income. And if you got a bunch of people working minimum wage in one house, yeah, the medium household income is going to be higher. All right? It's not that they work harder. They got some kind of an end. It's none of that. It's just more than living. You would say that there isn't a difference in the culture? No, 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 they come from a culture of failure. It's all right, not listen. The, would you agree well, that all I, Americans I, have privilege? How? How? Wait, wait, you go back. You say something and elaborate on what you're saying. I mean, you're so not gonna, elaborate. you're not gonna uh, accept elaborate the on facts that elaborate Asia, the top earning ethnic groups in America are Asians, okay. Indians, West Indians even make more than white Americans. That's a fact. If you go off individual income, so so it doesn't That's really. That's how validate the claim of white supremacy. That's not true. What you just sitting here lying. You're lying your ass off. No, right? it's not a lie. It's a fact. You're lying. Listen, your ass off. they don't earn their wages. Listen, we're on, the cusp, we're on the cusp of world. They make. You're not going to talk over me. The f don't talk over me. You can tell when somebody lying. You just get to talking fast and you won't elaborate. That's how you can tell somebody's lying. You lie and then start talking fast and talking over somebody and won't elaborate. We're gonna, we're gonna, I'm, I'm gonna sir, break down. Sir, all I, I want to break down your lies one by one because you know I'm going to debunk your lies. That's why you keep trying to move on to the next lie. Now we ain't going to do that now. Now let's cover the first lie. You said it was about. Is it their culture? Elaborate on that. What's the culture that makes them earn all of these high wages you're talking about? What's the culture? Unmute your microphone, Jay. Oh, my bad. What's the culture? <laughs> Let's take a look at acceptance rates in universities. What ethnic group has the lowest standards? What's the culture? I asked you a question. Don't change the, the, the culture. The culture is better education, more discipline, higher, higher, uh, lower single parenthood rates. So why are they full of paternity fraud suits and poverty and filth and degradation in their homelands? Because they come to America and benefit from American privilege. And that's my point. Oh, we're on no, the cut. Listen, said, we're on no, the cut. Oh, you just said the culture. So if they come from yes. this culture, why are their homelands not reflective of this culture? Because why the immigrants that come here are the best from that area. The best Nigerians, <laughs> the best from Nigeria then come to come America and benefit. How come the best ain't making that a livable place then? Because of this, because of the opportunities that are here in America. How come, that are, that they, don't have the, how come they didn't create the opportunities over there? Like because we create they're benefiting from the American system. How come they couldn't benefit from their own culture? Because it, there aren't opportunities there. There There's, you go. They're underdeveloped that, third world that, countries. That, right. So they had to come over here. That's a, that's not. That's not pertinent to the yeah, discussion we're having. Yeah, we're talking so about just, culture. So yeah, so their individual culture, culture just, of so their culture is failure in their homeland, right? So if the, you have to come around us to exhume this great culture, that means we're the secret sauce, right? 
Right. If you have to come over here in order to be successful. Right. American culture. Right, which is us, foundational black America. No, it's not black. It's yes, American it culture. It's foundational Listen, black. It's foundational black American culture. Those immigrants would not have been able to come over here if it weren't for us. You wouldn't have birthright citizenship if it weren't for the grassroots of foundational black Americans. Let's get it straight. Listen, it's brother. Black culture. The, the birthright. Please stop. Please stop muting me. Hold on. No, because you're not. You're gonna get a history lesson, sir. Birthright citizenship, y'all, tethers being able to come over here and anchor your babies, that was a black grassroots movement. William Nesbitt and brothers like that created that. They fought and died for that. That was a black movement. The immigration movement in the 1960s was on the tail end of the civil rights movement. That was an offshoot of our movement. The fact that you can come over here in large numbers, especially as a melanated person, that is black culture, sir. And that's pertinent to the overall discussion as well, how the civil rights movement was subverted by the neo-Marxist postmodernists, along that's with the, with like the third wave feminists. They that's hijacked like the popularity of Martin Luther King. Uh -huh. Then Martin Lyndon B. Johnson Martin came into office, pushed the, 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 the great war on poverty. The single parenthood rate started skyrocketing. Mm -hmm. The culture broke down. And Kids you know what? They're being this... raised by hip hop culture instead of and, their parents. They're being raised you know... by the streets. Okay, and the, you know one of the reasons why the single rates, the single parent rates hopped up too? A lot of the, the immigrants coming over here anchoring these damn babies all over the place. That's another reason people don't talk about why the single mother thing popped off. A lot of people were foreigners and they were coming over here laying up with folks to anchor them babies over here. Crazy. And that, it, that you need to take accountability. What other culture celebrates fucking bitches and sending them home in an Uber pool? Sleeping with women without responsibility. Y'all tether, y'all do that all the time in your homeland. Man, see, this is the problem. Uh -huh. We're on the cusp of World War Three. We're on the cusp you, of the Civil you, War. Wait, Listen, wait. let me speak, brother. And, and you ain't over in your homeland doing anything about none of the wars. Sorry. No, I'm I'm American. I don't care where no. I come from. Oh no, you a tether. No, I'm I'm an American. I don't care about identity you politics. Tether. You a tether. I'm grateful for the American system, and I'm tired right. of it decaying because of internally parasitic culture. No, Listen. but yeah, parasites like people who flee, like you. You no fled. grifters, Your grifters family. like you. No, no, no. You grifted on a boat to flee here, sir. That's I don't know where grift. I come from. I'm not interested in, no, no, in my no, no, lineage. No, no. I'm interested no, no. in well, making an impact. Listen, sir, you're a tether. You fled here. Your family Listen, fled. Listen, brother. The you fact is, we here. all have American privilege, and it's no, no, eroding. No, no, Listen. No, 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 no. The no. way you pay for privilege is with no. virtue. That's what no. justifies the privilege. You are a parasitic tether whose family fled here. You're different from me. Okay? Listen, I know that I impact in a positive way. No, you I don't. impact everyone impact. around you me. Didn't, you didn't impact the place you fled from. How are you going to impact us? Huh? How are you going to impact us and you didn't impact the place you damn fled from? Listen, it, brother, you you used the same tactics. I, I was born here. I don't, I don't know where I... You're an anchor baby. All right? You keep cutting me off. Let me... Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you're you not like... You're not like us. You're not like us. You're not like us. The song is about you. You can't sit here talking about you. The song is corny as hell. No, it ain't that corny. It's corny to a tether. No, it's a, it's it's a about terrible you. beat. It's a corny song. It's, it's, a, it's, it's overhyped. Who cares it's about you're not like us? You We're ain't all like the same. We need to cooperate no. and stop defecting. We need, to, we need to integrate with each other. Why and we stop. need to cooperate with a flea and tether who has vitriol towards us and who's ungrateful. No vitriol. I have nothing but love. You got you vitriol. Great hell. What the hell? I need to call, do something with you. What are we going to do with you? Collaborate on intellectual ideas and, and create synergistic opportunities. Do you understand what Did synergy is? Did you create is? that in your failed homeland? That your I created it here in America. This is my How homeland. How come you didn't create it back in your homeland? Because I've never... Listen, brother, you I keep muting me. It's listen, hard to keep a train of thought. Stop listen, muting me. You over here pointing a finger talking listen, about hip-hop. I've and never been anywhere... You're right, sir. I'm muting you now. You're sitting here talking about hip-hop and all of that. And you got all types of weird stuff in your homeland, don't you? You ain't like us. You, you, you are, 
You were an freak. Wouldn't you say that hip hop culture is the most degenerative culture? No, ever it created? ain't. No, it ain't the, the most degenerate. The, the, y'all tether culture. Y'all Listen, over. The, when are you going to take no, a no, 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 no. What's degenerate is crapping in the streets, leaving orphans all over the place, having paternity fraud in all of these foreign countries, female circumcisions that y'all forcing on people, selling your children to white tourists. That's degenerate culture. You understand? You're not going to come from some of these little filthy places and then try to point your finger at some rappers saying words because a lot of these rappers are performative with their stuff. Many of these rappers, you look at a lot of rappers now, most rappers, a lot of these guys are married with family. Snoop Dogg, married with a family. Lovely wife. Nelly's getting married to Ashanti. You're talking about old rappers. Killer Mike is married. Yeah, you get married when you get older. You young, you're going to be out here doing the single man thing. Tariq, yeah. listen, man, when are you going to take accountability there, for no, proselytizing? No, no. You take, when, you take when, responsibility for being a fleeing failed tether. Why am I going to have somebody from a fleeing lineage tell me about taking some damn responsibility? how that work? Huh? How somebody who's an anchor baby? Don't tell us about the response. Brother, I was born here. I'm not sure where my, my lineage baby. is from because I'm not interested. Yeah, I'm yeah, interested yeah, yeah, in yeah. making the most of my circumstances right. and for those around, fellow Americans. I love right. everyone in this room. I want to see, see people it. overcome. I hate no, seeing people no, overcome no, with, with these issues. Within sir, no, no, no. You're trying to project your failure onto us. That's what failure. I'm more successful than you, brother. No, you're not, sir. You're not more successful. Yes, I am. Do you know no. who I am? Do you remember when I humbled you years ago? Sir, when, how- when they tried to cancel me for, for exposing the fraud to Mika Mallory, exposing all the false narratives pushed by BLM? Oh, oh yeah, you're the producer. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah remember you now oh so, so you remember when everything i said was righteous and you were you were proselytizing your audience to go against trump now right. you see where we're at with biden getting into so, world war three well, no people can't put food on the table can't put no, gas so, in the tank and, and now you're this? switching up hey, trying on. to endorse trump now, this is a white man by the way this is a this is a white man he's you know you tri- remember i humbled you you were punching air in your little interview with rizza afterwards that's a that's a fantasy your fantasy no, i was you telling you about the issues with the talking from these no, no no you took an l you you took an l from black daddy and you feel a certain way about it you took an l from black daddy and what's interesting you're talking about how did generate hip hop is you've made money off hip hop producing hit records right so how are you going to sit here I, and and i speak out about against the culture and i mentor voice. all the kids i collaborate with wow this listen, is a person do you know anything this, about this is a person who's leached off our culture and listen to him this is a white Brother, man. i've contributed more to the culture than you have no you haven't sir yes, you i have supported our culture no, you, you haven't, haven't done shit but grift and make corny Dude, ass documentaries. I'm a I'm a foundational black American, sir. How and can I grift a, off my, a, what have you done? How can I grift off myself? It's my culture. You're a white man. This ain't your culture. You're a guest in this culture. Listen, brother, when this are we gonna advance culture? and stop? Hold on. This isn't your culture. At all. You're a guest in the culture. You're a guest in the country. You're not even from the lineage. You're a foreigner, dude. What are you talking about? You're very confused. You're very, very confused. Listen, stop muting me. Let's talk. Let's grow. Let's build. I love you, Tariq. Right. If it ain't love, it's fear. What are you afraid yeah, of, brother? But you're very confused. Well, you're the one with the struggle. What are you uncertain about? Let's get to the facts. Yeah, let's get to the projection. Okay, the, when when you were you have the BLM crisis. shit and pushing the defund the police. Now look at your city. You can't even go outside with your watch on. You get you get it snatched. That's you. You're soft. Where can I go? Who's gonna snatch something from me? Bro, are you telling me there's not an issue with crime in LA with these uh, with these woke dude. George Soros prosecutors that aren't uh, prosecuting dude, any criminal activity? I, I can go all over LA. In every hood. You remember I'm I sent good. you the DM and told you, let's get a celebrity boxing for 50K and you never responded. The, how are we going to have a celebrity boxing match with one celebrity? You're not what do you a mean, bro? You're not I'll a celebrity. Your ass have, get 50 racks. That, that's we'll, a, put, that's we'll each put 50 up. Because you were yapping saying I was soft and a white boy, this right. and that. You're not, 
But yeah, you would never put 50K up and get a boxing match with me. You're not a celebrity. You're not a celebrity. You can come get your ass whooped for free. Bro, everything <laughs> happens. We, we could put it on camera. Or right. we could build. You're, you're not a celebrity. That's not... I, I don't care about that. Listen, right. what I care about is, is, you are, you are is making adjustments to the poor culture and get into cooperation no. so we can start creating a bigger piece of the pie and no. start redistributing yeah. fix, resources fix your, instead of having the, grifters like you snatch No, up. no, fix the... No, you grifted off my culture. That's you projecting. No, you're no, brother, I built... Like you're, you're a suspected white supremacist grifter. Off my culture, sir. That's you projecting. You are a leech. Well, how am I projecting? Sir? I built everything That's from you. scratch. No, you haven't. You've been leeching Every beat off I my made culture. Start with started by you've leached off my culture, sir. And you continue to leech off my culture. Hip hop is foundational black American culture, sir. That's why you got a problem with our film microphone check, don't you? Because you said something about the deck. How do you feel about microphone check? Have you seen it yet? I wouldn't watch any of your corny shit ever since you now, made why, that buck breaking shit, bro. Yeah, that's about your community too. The the sexual. No, you, 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 you got your rocks off with that homo shit. No, no, no. That's you. That's your Greco Roman culture. You guys got mad because I explore I explored no, your culture. I didn't watch that goofy shit. Yes, you did. Yes, you did. That's your culture. That's white supremacist culture. You guys have always been homoerotic, sir. That's your culture. All right. And the, the, my film microphone check probably has you salty, too, because we're letting folks know who's guest in our culture, and that would be you. You're a guest in the culture, sir. All right? Listen, brother, when are you going to take accountability and start contributing in a positive when way? When are you going to go to Europe and fix up the slums that your family fled Bro, from? I'm American. I'm not. Yeah. You're, listen, you're, I love people globally, but we need to handle these issues in terms of European. First. You're like a European, I said, we're on the cusp of a civil war because of this sir, polar. Sir, you're a European wigger trying to act like me and my. I would country. never say, don't you see all these goofy motherfuckers you saying try, the Listen to you trying to have the same voice inflection as me and my community. Listen to you. Listen to you. You're trying to sound like us. You're trying to act like us. But you ain't got the majority spirit of a foundational black American. That's why there's Listen. hate. That's why there's no, hate. No, bl black Americans are the that's, strongest yeah, that's human beings. All that, see, that's why I tell people that old yo, yo, yo word to the mother. I tell people I ain't never like that. When these guys come around with that yo, yo, yo talk, y'all remember back in the Mac Lessons days, I said, you watch out for them. The yo, yo, yo word to the mother dudes like that, they are the sneakiest dudes out here. I don't like it. Get away from me with that stuff. If you come around me, be white. Talk white, act white. Just do white stuff. I can respect that. All that, yo, 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 let's build my brother. Uh, no. That's all cap. Dudes who do that, those are ops. Because I've seen how those dudes get when they get around police. Boy, the, they start talking like Justin Timberlake. I'm a white boy. I don't I don't want to gangbang no more. I'm, I just want to be white like me and you, sir. I's not a nigga anymore. They switch up on your ass, you see, and listen to him. This guy has exploited our culture, and now he's talking about how hip-hop is such a degenerate culture after you've made your money off of it. Boy, these people are parasites. Listen, Tariq, have I said yo, yo, yo once? Yeah, that's your no, whole No, I haven't. Vibe. Stop that's with the same old aura. antics, brother. All the ad hominem attacks, because you can't debate me, because I'm slaughtering you right now. Dude, I'm You're not already... Built Get, get out of here. I've already destroyed you. Yeah, I'm done. I've already packed this guy up in the debate years ago. And he's still salty about it. Yeah, see, this is why the yo, yo, yo word to the mother dudes. I'm not impressed when I see that. Red flag. R major red flag when I hear that yo, yo, yo word to the mother talk. All right. By the way, for more information about Microphone Check, go to microphonecheck.com. When it goes back in theaters in a few weeks, everybody go out and see it. Gotta go see Microphone Check. Man, we got 
1,100 people in here in the middle of the night. I love y'all, man, but I got to get up out of here because I do have a shoot in the morning. I thank everybody for tuning in. We had some good conversations tonight, man. I think it was a good vibe tonight. Some very funny, good conversations. And y'all go to my Tariq Radio YouTube channel. Subscribe. Everybody subscribe now, and then you will um, you get to hear the playbacks over there. All right? Fuck you, niggers. Fuck niggers. Oh. Fuck you, niggers. Kira. Kira. That doesn't eat. That, that doesn't eat like you. Shut up, nigger. Go with your watermelon. Okay, watermelon is very good. It's better than avocado wraps, okay? Watermelon is very, very good, white supremacist man. And that's not really offensive, you yelling the N-word. You dig? You're just yelling the N-word over and over again because you're yelling out of a sense of pain. Talk to me, Kira. Okay. Oh, what, what are you posting up? You're posting up weird white supremacist stuff. What are you posting up, Kira? I can't see what he's posting up, but I'm going to take it out of here, Kira. All right, Kira, anything else to say? Any more racial epithets you want to get out before we go? Let, let's hear it. Let's hear some of the best ones. Give me some some good racial epithets. Well, uh, you know, I did want to speak earlier during the debate that you had with the lady from earlier right. and the guy that you were just speaking with, but um, I did want to bring up a lot of points, but you didn't really seem to bring up any other people. It seemed sort of like a one-on-one -on -one discussion. But uh, I've noticed that you don't really touch on the topic of the Jews in which you talk about American culture. Right. Um, and that's quite ironic. Okay. So you could just... Yeah. Okay. So you ain't got nothing to say. So I've already defeated you. So, all right. Thank you. I no. My lap. All right. I've already defeated you. Um how come you don't talk about the Jews means you defeated me. So I'm going to take my victory lap. I will accept your concede and um, you've conceded to me and you're saying that I won because all that is, is a deflection. So yeah. So I'll take that win. Anytime they start deflecting into, well, what about the Jews? That's their way of saying you've defeated me. And now it's, that's how white supremacists, they, you know, they, they're, they're, they're like children almost. They have to just deflect and try to change the subject and then babble and waste time when they lose. So that's a tactic that y'all got to get used to. So when they start babbling and cursing and whining and yelling racial epithets, that means black daddy spanked them intellectually. And I'll take that. They got a nice black spanking from FBA daddy. All right. Let's get um, Yankee Bourbon in the building. Yankee Bourbon. Yankee Bourbon, hop on, sir. Yankee Bourbon. Hey, Tariq. How you doing, bud? It's been a while. It's been a while, Yankee Bourbon. What's happening in uh, the white supremacist world over there? Oh, it's beautiful. But there's hardly any black folks around me. It, it I, is, I know. I, hey, man. It's we beautiful. That, that wet dog smell, we can't be around it too long, man. It messes with our nostrils. But what's on your mind? Well, I just wanted to say it's unfortunate you took the W when uh, Prodigal came up here. He was touching on a really good point. And it's a point I think you actually are well aware is true, that you've, you've already been replaced. You guys lost the chance for reparations. You had it. No, we didn't. No, we didn't. No, we didn't, because we're getting reparations. We, we, we're on the track of getting that now, so we didn't lose anything. That's, that's white supremacist wishful thinking. But go ahead with your fantasies. Go ahead. Well, no, it, it, they're your fantasies, not mine. I'm not in favor of reparations, but I think you got... I know that. I know that. But we're getting them, and that's what it is. But go ahead. Well, unfortunately, you guys bought the shuck and jive the Democrat sold you. And right. now... So, yeah, the, and the whole Democrat thing, we don't give a damn about the Democrats. We don't give a damn about the Republicans. We're looking at all of them are just one big glob of white supremacy, and they're just going to have to give us our money. So, yeah, we're not doing the Republicans are the bad guy. The Democrats are the bad guy. The Jews are the bad guy. The Zionists are the bad guy. The Illuminati, they're the bad guys. Don't give a damn about none of that. All of y'all give us our money. How about that? Right? Well, I'll just say they want you as politically irrelevant as the Native Americans. And thanks, right. to, you, thanks to your voting record, that's exactly where your guys you're going to find yourselves now. We're Irre relevant enough. For the, po the, politically they're irrelevant. They're trying to gain our vote 
So they're campaigning very hard to get the vote from us, both parties. And we're saying in order for us to move on a vote, y'all better come up with those tangibles and that's going to be reparations. All right. That makes uh, sense. Well, I suspect they'll they'll do the shuck and jive one more term. This is probably it. You'll hear you'll hear the usual crowd saying, "Yeah, yeah, we're in favor of uh, reparations," just like they did three and a half years ago, right? If they said exactly what you wanted to hear, and ninety percent of the Black American community came out and voted for them. And what'd you get out of that? You got nothing. In fact, what you got was open borders. Now, that's not a Republican policy. That is very much a Joe Biden, Obama, Democratic policy. They now, really what did you get? Now, what did you get for voting for Trump as a white man? What did you get? Well, I did have a closed border for pretty much. Not really. Not really. The border was open under Trump, too. They weren't deporting a lot of had, people. under. had a pretty Trump. solid economy as well. Right. They weren't deporting a lot of people under Trump. So let's get off that. They were still letting people over here flood the zone. Yeah, no, right, man. what did you get, sir? Well, you, see, you don't really need to deport as many if you're not letting that many in. Oh, okay, oh come sir. on. As under, a white under, man, what did you get under Trump? Well, I've already told you two very solid tangibles, right? You've got Nothing. 15 million people just under, under your boy's watch here who've come in and they're flooding your community. They're not flooding my community, Tariq. They're flooding yours. But, but they're Trump, getting tax, but they're getting your tax dollars too. You understand? They're getting well, your tax dollars. Well, so is, so is everybody else, my friend. Right. They're getting your tax dollars, sir. You understand? So you didn't really benefit when under Trump either. You didn't benefit. And y'all well, been see, I sympathize. I sympathize with the foundational black Americans. I, I appreciate I sympathize with, black and I American sympathize with I sympathize with some of the poor white supremacists because you guys have to toe the line for the rich ones who exploit your ass and don't give you nothing. They have you working as the foot soldiers while they count all the money and then leave you in the trailer park um, with your 4chan memes. So I sympathize with you to a certain degree. Yeah. Oh, those are my people. I love those guys. I know it. I know Hilarious. that. Hilarious. You guys share a very similar sense of humor. There you go. Thank you so much. All right. Anyway, family, boy, these white supremacists are doing the most. And I'll be here all night with these white supremacists going back and forth. All right, let me chill. Let me get out of here. Anyway, man, go to rootworkstyle.com and get your rootwork deodorant. Everybody loves that lucky lavender. I got on some lucky lavender now, ladies and gentlemen. That's my personal favorite. It, 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 it feels good on your body. That lucky lavender kills the game and it gives you good energy. Some of that foundational black American spiritual energy. You understand? And um, go get the book, Hidden Heroes from A to Z. You hear all these white supremacists in here? You better start getting your children gamed up very young. We need to get their minds right and get them on the right track to understand racism and black empowerment at a very early age. Because family, like our brother James Small says, once you know your history, boy, these people can't really mess with you. When you know your history, you own everybody's ass. They can't really touch you like that. They can't really mess with you. You know, since white supremacists coming in, they come in here with all, the, all of their lies and trolling and deflecting. And because I know history and many of you know history, they don't stand a chance in these spaces. They don't stand a chance. They get blown out of the water very quickly. Then they just reduce themselves to racial epithets and N word, and you know, because they're not used to black people spanking them like that. You know, especially black people who are grassroots and intellectual, like we have in these spaces. Why y'all look at how many of them in here? They stay in these spaces. Family, look at what time it is right now. It's like five o'clock in the morning on the East Coast. Over a thousand people in here. You understand? But I digress, ladies and gentlemen. Let me get out of here. Hey, man, hiddenhistorymuseum.com. Get the book, Hidden Heroes. Uh, cruising through in the black on black with my family. Bending corners, triple tinted with hella B. Before them, I didn't think this could ever be.
talking about I, I, that. I, I, and you don't want to hear it, Tariq. Nobody wants to hear it because they want to say, oh, she deserved oh, it, right? Really? Because okay, you, you the man. Say, okay, if somebody's trying to come at you, you're going to put a bullet in them. That's what Ashley Babbitt you, you, was you, for the okay, crowd of people so, so you're, coming you're after literally, who was yelling You're literally stop. not wanting to hear the whole aspect of what happened when I know the facts of the oh, scenario. Okay. And weird. I can show you the video of her punching the man that broke the window and was upset with that man breaking the window in the first place. After she punched the man, she had to escape the situation, and the only escape was to go through that window oh, because there was no. no other exit outside of, of, of that, that point Sir. after she had, had punched the man that had broke the window. That officer was yelling, get back, get back. He didn't say a damn, he didn't say a goddamn did. thing. Yes, he didn't he say did. a motherfucking yes, goddamn thing, Tariq. And did. that's a fucking goddamn yes, lie, what you're did. saying right now. That you're a goddamn liar if you continue with that shit. That. I'm at least I'm at least willing to look at the facts about George Floyd and admit that this guy killed him. You're you're saying that you're you're backing up the guy and saying back. shit that isn't even fucking true about the situation. She was coming at that officer with a crowd of damn rioters, and he did what you said you would do. Put a bullet. She in. led all them rioters to that fucking place, and she was she was running the show that he day, was, and she deserved to be fucking murdered by a cop. See, that's the two-faced hypocritical that's fucking logic. mentality that I keep on hearing through all of this. Sir, I, you're the one who just justified Kyle Rittenhouse, and you said if somebody's coming at you, you're going to pull a put a bullet in them, but when it's a white woman coming after a black cop oh no it's something else so what are you talking about an, an unarmed white woman you're gonna shoot an unarmed fucking white woman yeah. coming to the factory yeah that she unarmed. didn't even know was there with who the was, gun and you claim that she yeah who was coming with a crowd of people with her storming the capitol and the cop is yelling get back According no, to your man. logic, according to your logic, you said you you would put a bullet in their head. No, no, you're mixed matching shit, and it's, no. uh, that's, that's pretty messed up, man. No. That's really that's that's really screwy that you want to mix match no. something from a whole different, and, completely and different also, state, different Kyle, scenario. Kyle, Kyle Rittenhouse, the guy who was running after Kyle Rittenhouse, had a skateboard. He Horrible correlation. Your debate sucks. You fell. No, no. Kyle Rittenhouse shot an unarmed person and killed him. And you thought that was cool. Now your point is horrible. It, it makes no no sense no, whatsoever. Sir, I'm, I'm using your Zero. logic. None. Your logic has failed completely. It's but it's it's absolutely it's, your horrible. logic changes based on race, sir. No, no. Your logic ha, ha, takes no. something that now, has nothing to do with another you situation. No, and you, no, no, no. you were perfectly fine with Kyle Rittenhouse shooting an unarmed person. Yep, that mother effer deserved it. But when Ashley Babbitt was doing something she wasn't supposed to do, oh, no, she was a poor unarmed white woman. Oh, God. She was there to bake cookies. What are you talking about? She was trying to escape. She was, they, they dragged her. What, what, what logic is this, dude? <laughs> she was trying to escape. You correlate a riot, okay, that happened oh, in Wisconsin listen, look, to something that happened on no, a completely wait, different saying, day wait, listen, at the capital on, of the United States. You said and the whole Ashley Babbitt was trying to escape. <laughs> you, you, your correlation is 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 ridiculous. I mean, no, I, you, you, should, you should look in the mirror at what you just said and and, and realize that so, what you said is absolutely so, asinine. So Ashley it has nothing Babbitt. to do with the other. Nothing. So Rittenhouse and Ashley Babbitt have nothing, no Who correlation whatsoever. Windows trying to storm the Capitol. You said Ashley she didn't really break the window. I explained she, that to you, but you don't want to listen. She was trying to escape. She was trying to leave the building. That's what you're saying. She punched the man that broke the window because she was upset with him attacking and breaking the window. Oh, she and was doing upset what with he was them doing. for rioting, but she joined the rioters. She didn't join the riding. She hit no police officer. The the video that shows her walking up to the cops that were at that door was was with uh, Taylor Hansen that I met personally. They offered the police officers water and talked to them in a oh, in a polite so, way. So they wanted to have a friendly meeting. So they were breaking in doors to offer water and cookies. Okay. <laughs> and, water and, and no, just water oh, because they weren't uh, there to oh, the, attack right, the police sick, officers oh. whatsoever. See, you don't want to look at the truth. I, I'm willing to look at the truth in this I'm, situation I'm that you're bringing your up. Logic. You want to skew the I'm fucking going truth. By your life. But, you are the one who said, if somebody's coming at you, I'm putting a bullet in them. Absolutely. Oh, and and you're damn right. Greatest. You're damn right. Uh, I and, am an armed and, Texan. And, and, if, and if I'm Bird, attacked and physically, Bird, I will put a bullet in. And that's what Officer Bird did to Ashley Babbitt's ass. That's what he, uh, Officer Bullshit. Bird used your logic. 
bullshit, Tariq. You're full of shit, man. Officer and it's a blast. Bird, I'll, I'll be honest logic, with you, sir. Officer you know, I, Bird I never saw right this here. coming out of your. So you agree with Officer Bird? Officer Bird did what you would do and what Kyle Rittenhouse did. So Officer Bird is a hero too, right? Bullshit. Bullshit. Is that what you think? Why is call he not a hero? Bird a hero if, right if Kyle if you is think a, hero, a hero, no, call him, if call him Kyle a hero. Rittenhouse is a hero, why isn't Officer Bird one too? Call Bird a hero if you think he's a hero. He's call him a, a hero, hero right now. He said, you he think Bird's a hero? The, he protected the, the capital. Yes, he's a hero. Okay, well, let me explain something to you. You are for the murder of unarmed fucking women. Aren't you for that too of unarmed people? You just justified Kyle Rittenhouse, sir. Come on. Just because she's a white woman, you're okay with the murder and of her. Just That's all that say, Kyle man. Rittenhouse say was you're... a white supremacist throwing up white supremacist hand signs. Unarmed That's American why you women are, are able to be, murder American women. If they're white, it's all good. Go for it. That's what you're saying. Cops I mean, are fucking. Where, where is all this energy for Breonna Taylor? She was unarmed and they murdered her. So where's all this energy for that? Not the same fucking deal. You, now why, you're mixed back not? and bullshit why not? again. Why not? You're a horrible debater, man. You're, how, you're, how, your, so? your logic and your points are fucking no, 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 horrible. No, no. You, you've lost every same? debate with me. So when we the started to read, it's how was terrible. That not the same? How was Breonna the only Taylor thing you have is the mute button to stop me from, from, from how stepping up the bullshit. Breonna Taylor bullshit? not the same? Breonna Taylor was a horrible situation. And it's it's not the same scenario situation that Ashley Babbitt was in. Yeah, it was an unarmed woman getting killed by race soldiers. And, and I'm not okay with that. And the cop that shot Breonna Taylor isn't a hero. See, I'm not a son of a bitch like you. I'm willing to look at the truth and the facts and call a duck a duck. But you want to call this motherfucker that murdered an innocent American woman, he wasn't okay? Innocent. Unarmed he American woman. And you want to say he's a she fucking hero? A That's sick, dude. You're a she sick motherfucker if you think. No, she was committing a crime. Storming the Capitol is a crime, sir. That's not legal. And especially when an officer is giving a lawful order to get back. He was yelling, get back, get back. He, he made no he, such fucking order. Yes, he did. And, and, and his, his voice was hoarse because he was yelling, get back, and she wouldn't get back. Negative. Was, That's a lie. You're speaking That's lie. You're that's you're backing not, up a, a black man that murdered a white American no, woman no, because no. you're I'm playing race politics officer, right now. An officer who produced justice. I'm not. This isn't about race to me, sir. You're making it about race. This was an officer who produced justice. See, you're the one who got the racial hypocrisy. It's okay for Kyle Rittenhouse to gun folks down, but <laughs> when the black officer is producing justice, somebody's trying to storm the Capitol. And they got, weapons, they got on. weapons and bats and swords and knives and guns. What was he supposed to do? He did like you said you would do. Put a bullet in their head. And that's what he did, sir. He did what you would do, right? Nope. You're a fucking goddamn liar. And you know oh. what? You, what you're saying right now, if you really believe it, man, I got to say this to you. You need to look in the fucking mirror and you need to do some soul searching, man, because you're fucking wrong. And no, God knows you're no, wrong. No, no. Okay? And that's, your spirit's going to be telling that you're your fucking logic. wrong right now. That's you need to look logic. in the mirror and you need to do some that's spiritual That's your search. logic, sir. That's literally your logic. That's your logic. It's your logic, Tariq. It's not mine. That's you've, yours. You've you said you would do that. If, you, you said if somebody's coming at you, you're going to pull a bullet in them. And Kyle Rittenhouse was right. These are your words, sir. You just so continue to hit the mute that button, man, to get out what you got to say, but you don't want to hear that, what I got to say. Because, no, okay. because you said enough, you said enough, and I'm just using your logic. By your logic, if Kyle Rittenhouse is justified, so is Officer Bird. That's your, your logic is flawed, and your and your no, debate is not, failed. Sir. You have completely no, failed, my friend. I don't yeah. know what what you think you've accomplished here, but all you've done is shown everybody on here that your logic is flawed. Your this debate your logic, is failed. Your you have sat, literally sat here and said, this okay, and logic. and and contradicted yourself in no, so many. No, I'm going by your logic sir you're trying to racialize the logic. you're not you're going by your logic no no because you're trying to have racial privilege you want to have the racial privilege to kill and put people down but the other side can't do it that's called white supremacy sir you're practicing white supremacy on this phone you know that? that's white supremacy in a nutshell sir 
Officer Byrd had way more justification than Kyle Rittenhouse. Kyle Rittenhouse did a premeditated murder. He planned on going. You can't even compare the two. It's it's fucking Kyle hypocritical to even say that the two are the same at all. Kyle Rittenhouse planned that. He was sitting up here making videos talking about, man, I wish I had a gun. Then and why didn't they find him guilty? Um, uh, because of white supremacy. Oh, that's oh, white that's supremacy white is the supremacy. answer to everything yeah. you fucking have, huh? White everything you have is, is some. Yeah, white supremacy, sir. That's called white supremacy. That's how white supremacy works, sir. It lets white supremacist suspects kill with <laughs> impunity. <laughs> Kyle right. killed white people, but it's somehow right. it was racist it was of what he did. He, ki he killed some white people, people because it was white people protecting black people because Kyle was trying to get black folks, but black people saw what he was trying to do and it didn't work. So he got the next best thing. If you can't get a Negro, get a Negro lover. See, that's why you guys are cool with what he did. But if keep he, on defending child molesters, Tariq. Hey, it yeah, looks well, good on you, man. Didn't it looks know, real good on you. Look, what those keep guys on defending were. the pedophiles, Tariq, because that's who he killed. Kyle didn't know that. You don't go. You're defending. Killing. You're Kyle defending child molesters. Kyle you're defending a pedophile. You're Kyle defending somebody that, that likes to play with kids. Think Kyle about that. Look that. in the mirror, son. Kyle didn't know that. <laughs> It doesn't matter. You it know it. And you're defending them. And you're, that. and you're saying that you're with them. And then you're saying, say, oh, well, it's justified because we checked their record. No, that's not how the law works, see? Boy, you're thinking like a white supremacist. You kill them first and then justify it later. No, that's called white supremacy. That's why uh, Officer Byrd, he produced justice. Protecting yourself is white supremacy now. Right. I got it. And protecting yourself like Officer Byrd did and protecting the Capitol is justice. So why are you so butthurt that justice was produced? Because Ashley was going after Byrd. He was, she was going to attack him uh, physically, right? Uh-huh. Yeah, if you're sitting up there breaking you're full of shit. You think she was going to... You're sitting there, yeah. He, she wasn't there to bake cookies, all right? She wasn't there to make some damn Rice Krispie treats, all right? Let's stop playing. And all of this this stuff you're talking about, she was... Prove to me Ashley Babbitt went there to it, attack. It, dude, stop it. She wasn't there to have a Girl Scout meeting, all right? Let's be very clear. Let's not sit she here... She wasn't there like, for what you're saying. She wasn't uh, there for what you're saying, she Tariq. She following orders. And, and, and to say that to somebody that's, that's been actually murdered by a cop and then try to claim that you're against police brutality... Sir, she got the Kyle Rittenhouse treatment that you justified. You said if somebody's man. coming at you, you, should... you said somebody's coming at you, they deserve to get it, and she got it based on your logic. So you are critical logic, my friend. You All live in right. hypocrisy. That's yeah. your life. That's what you stand for. All right. Thank you so much. I'm not going to hear white supremacist babble. You see, family. You got to watch those kind of guys. First of all, this guy, white supremacy 101, the whole denial of whiteness. First of all, I'm not really white, dude. I'm a mutt, man. I'm a man. Eh, he's a white dude. That's why I asked him about George Floyd and then the reparations. First, first he came in talking about he supports reparations. Then you let him keep talking. He don't support reparations. It's the whole, the sky is falling. Oh, the the United States is going to hell. There ain't going to be no money, dude. Oh, it's not feasible. Okay. See, you got to watch them. They try to come in and act like they're your, your, your allies. You got to watch them. That's why I said, let me, let me, let me let this guy tell the truth. Do you think George Floyd died of fentanyl? I, it was a combination, dude. Yeah, that's what I thought. You're one of them. See, the white supremacists, they're not unique at all, family. That's why I knew what to ask. Do you think Kyle acted in self-defense? Yeah. Yeah, you goddamn right, buddy. Anyone comes after me, they're going to get a bullet, dude. Well, so Kyle, Ashley Babbitt, too. No, that's different. <laughs> she was trying to leave, dude. She got lost. She was going on a tour of the White House and got lost, dude. Boy, the damn white supremacist logic and lies. This fool tried to say Ashley Babbitt was trying to escape, and that was the only way out. <laughs> Good freaking grief. 
No, dude, she was looking for the exit, dude. And that Negro shot her, dude. She was there to meet Kamala Harris, dude. Oh, God, you white supremacists are the worst with the lies. I grew up with black people, dude. Okay, John Jackman, oh, oh, we got a lot of them in here now. Oh, they're coming in here now. John Jackman, what's up, brother? What's up, Mr. Jackman? <laughs> what's up, Tariq? Thank you so much for uh, for having me on, man. I was, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm honored. I appreciate it, man. Thanks for hey, that. So how'd you feel about the conversation we just had with your your, your brethren who just called? <laughs> uh, yeah, I only caught the tail end of it, so uh, I heard it when it just deteriorated. Mm-hmm. Um, but I, but you know, I heard hypocrisy from uh, from from his side too. You know, uh, as you mentioned, not seeing uh, you know the uh, the Kyle Rittenhouse uh, situation through through the same lens. You know, you, I think you you accurately described. Uh, Ashley Babbitt getting the Kyle Rittenhouse treatment. Yeah, uh, I mean, but but I was more interested. If you're going to justify Kyle, you got to justify Ashley. If you're going to justify right. Kyle, you you, you got to justify what happened to Ashley. Shit. Yeah, and yeah. The Officer Bird is more justified because that he didn't plan on shooting anybody that damn day. That man didn't know that was going to happen. You understand? He was doing his job. Kyle Rittenhouse, that was a punk who did a preemptive murder. Man, that that's that's not justice. But go ahead. Yeah, yeah, no, uh, I I completely agree. Um, but I, I was interested to uh, come up here because I, I heard your conversation with with Haas the other day, um, yeah. and I'm I'm also uh, you know I'm a member of the infrared community and uh, uh, the burgeoning American communist uh, movement uh, that we're we're trying to build, and uh, wanted to to get. Uh, I don't know if you have any more thoughts uh, on that conversation or reflections on that conversation. I'd be interested to hear. Uh, but what you kind of think about uh, the position that that Haas articulated in his discussion with you and kind of where we see uh, the issue of uh, foundational black Americans, you know, as as core central, you know, uh, the one of the main engines of revolutionary struggle in the history of this country. Uh, but how we can kind of move forward on a basis of. Uh, promoting a, a a class struggle and recognizing that the the enemies that we have as as working people uh, are the same, uh, and how we can utilize some of that revolutionary energy that I know that we have in this country because our our politicians are so unpopular, our institutions are right, so but unpopular. Here, but, 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 but hold on, but here's the thing: yeah, yeah. see, um, race trumps class in our society. So don't, no matter what class you're in, race will trump that. And the race is white supremacy. White supremacy trumps all classisms because wealthy black people can get taken down by the poorest white people. Um, and this was something that the white supremacists used to write about. You're supposed to give preferential treatment to the poorest white man over the wealthiest black man. That's why Bill Cosby got taken down by a bunch of broke white women. That's why a Tiger Woods can get taken down by broke white women. You understand? Um, and it can't be done the same. You don't have poor black women taking down wealthy white men. Or hell, a poor black woman or a wealthy black woman can't take down a poor white man at all. In fact, there's a case now, this black woman who's on The Bachelorette, um, she has her a white zaddy and they're getting divorced. She has to pay him child support. You, all, you always see black women who date these white men or marry these white men, they end up having to pay them child support and spousal support. Holly Berry, Aisha Tyler, a lot of these black women, they get ran through the ringer having to pay off a a damn white man. It's never the other way around. You don't see white men having to pay black women a damn thing or a, a white woman having to pay a black man anything. You understand? So class gets trumped by race all the time in a system of global white supremacy. That's why the communism thing, and I was talking to your guy Haas and breaking that down with communism and Marxism and all of that. We got to look at Karl Marx um, talking about Marxism and all of this stuff, but Karl Marx was an anti-black racist. You have anti-black racism in communist countries all over the place. Cuba, there's anti-black racism all through Cuba. The black people are still marginalized in a communist society. So we're still running into white supremacy 
no matter how you try to cut the cookie. So we got to deal with white supremacy. Anything that's not dealing with white supremacy is basically just running in circles, right? So, yeah, I, I got you. I, 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 I think the examples you use are, are, are good, and, and I definitely right. understand them. Uh, and, and I agree uh, with white supremacy being, you know, uh, central to how this country was, was developed and uh, how it's been promoted as a global system. I think that the argument, though, that I'm making is that the, the system – uh, the very system of, of white supremacy emanates from a system of class exploitation that at one point was, you know, historically advantageous for the European colonial powers. And that, you know, has, has been propelled and, you know, it goes through modern times. I know that you have more examples that even date back past the history of colonialism uh, for uh, the argument that, you know, race trumps class. But but the argument that I would I would say to counter that is that you know, for example, uh, uh, there have been various constitutions uh, that I would cite. Uh, one being the constitution, uh, the Stalin constitution of the Soviet Union. And then another example could be the Chinese Communist Party, which kind of lays out explicitly uh, an anti-racist credo or uh, at least a anti-racist conviction in that constitution. Well, and I think a, that those were important. Let's, to, let's slow it down because, yeah. because mm -hmm. not to cut you off, but hell, our constitution, um, um, everybody's supposed to get equal treatment under the law and all of that. That constitution on paper is anti-racist, but in practice, our constitutional rights get violated all the time. Again, the George Floyd situation and others where black people are, are murdered without due process all the time. Black people are victims of stop and frisk. That's a violation of the Constitution. Uh, we don't get equal protection. Um, black people get harmed and harassed. We don't have a hate crime bill. People can do all types of stuff to black people, and we don't get the, the same protection under the law that other people get. So on paper, it looks good, but in practice, it's a different thing. Again, um, race trumps class. For example, the Black Wall Street, um, Tulsa, Oklahoma, is a bunch of wealthy black people living prosperously in a wealthy class, but poor whites and rich whites and the white government all got together to destroy the Black Wall Street. So race trumps class all the time. Huh? Right. Yeah. And so I, I understand the, the point that you're making, but but I, I think that I, I, I still see race kind of encompassing a tool, basically, of, of class exploitation that can take precedence. It can be. Now, I'm not. I'm not trying to minimize it in any way. I'm trying to say it can be at the at the height, you know, of the social order. It can be one of the most preeminent pieces of the social order. And just to kind of go back to the point about the the Constitution, if I may, just very, very quickly, yeah. Yeah. you know, one of the 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 differences between the American Constitution and the constitutions of the Soviet Union or uh, the Chinese uh, Communist Party was this e explicit mention of racism as something that must be struggled against. And so I, while, while on one hand, you know, I, I, I hear what you're saying, I also think that uh, race has proved to be an invaluable tool at breaking up other forms of power which could emerge to challenge this global system of financial capital which has obviously roots in European colonialism and is now today expressed in America, in America uh, financial capital. And, and I, I get your point about Black Wall Street, too, and, and know that there were cases where, and there, there have been numerous cases where you know, rich black people aren't afforded the same um, rights or the same kind of uh, uh, benefit of the doubt or, or a recognition, even as poor whites. But I think my point is that even that is a form of protecting a system, a, a class system, if you will, based on protecting the way that the financial institutions, the financial oligarchy has been set up to operate from time immemorial. And so uh, I, I, I don't know if I'm, trying, I'm kind, of, kind of trying to thread the needle there, but recognizing that race is one of the primary instruments of class exploitation, but still kind of seeing it through, through that lens then you would have to point to a place where black people who are in a financial, financially independent position, where are they not attacked by the white supremacists? You would have to show any example of that where black people have been prosperous and they have not been attacked or sabotaged by the white supremacists. Where can you show that?
Yeah. So, I mean, that, that's a, that's a great point. And when you, when you ask that question, my mind immediately goes to, you know, people like, and I know this isn't a perfect example, so I, I'm not meaning to suggest that it is, but my mind goes to people like Paul Robeson, right. Who once described uh, the Soviet union kind of in the 1950s, I believed as uh, as a black Mecca. Um, and he had a very different experience than his experience in the United States of America, um, at least at that time, where he felt, you know, he wrote about this extensively, where he felt that he was seen as a human being for, you know, the first time really ever in, in his life. And so I do think that we should we give a little... No, 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 because see what it is, because not too many black people were in Russia. So he was an anomaly. He was an international star. He was blacklisted here. And Russia was beefing with the United States. You have the Cold War and all that stuff going on. So a lot of these countries know how to use propaganda to stick it to the United States from that perspective. So they knew getting Paul Robeson and treating him with dignity would be a black eye to the United States. So they were being tactful with how they were doing. So we got to understand how certain groups will use black celebrities and prop them up and say, hey, look at this guy. This is our guy. He's such a wonderful guy. And they'll use that as a form of propaganda to show the hypocrisy of the United States. A lot of Asian countries will do that as well. Um, a lot of... And, and a lot of Middle Eastern countries will do that as well, too. For example, when um, Iran, they had those hostages in 1979, um, Iran let the black hostages go and just kept the white ones. And they did that to say, hey, look, the United States, you guys talk about democracy and fairness. We treat black people better than you do. So that was to stick it to the United States from a propaganda perspective. So we got to really put everything in the right context. But go ahead. Yeah. So, but I was, I was just going to ask if, if you, if you do see uh, any, or if you have a, the recognition that there is any fundamental difference in these two kind of, uh, well, I don't want to say two competing systems because now there are, we're kind of living in an era of emerging multipolarity where there's different civilizational interests at play in the geopolitical uh, world. But if, if you think that there's any uh, fundamental difference between say the systems that have been promoted uh, by the Chinese Communist Party, and how they might might differ at least in how they handle uh, the question of, of race compared to the legacy of the, of the West, because that's really where I see the the main thrust of this kind of uh, racial supremacy emanating from is the is the domination of of Western uh, financial uh, capitalists and, and oligarchs in particular. The thing is, China, they still got a lot of racism, anti-black racism going on over there. Some of the images that come out of some of their animations and some of their um, commercials and things like that. We've seen a lot of anti-black racism coming out of China uh, and different parts of Asia. But yeah, just because China um, is a communist country, that doesn't mean they still don't promote anti-black racism because we've seen several examples of that and from other communist nations. So. Um, again, we don't, we got to show a working example of some of society that's not practicing anti-black racism and all of them do. That's the problem. Yeah. Well, I think that one of my points kind of in favor of China again, because I do think that it's a important example to consider as it's kind of the alternative system that's emerging from the, the system of uh, Western expropriation and exploitation of the global South is you know maybe their their relations with with African nations being an example, uh, where you don't have the same level of high interest rates um, in terms of the loans and the development uh, that the Chinese are assisting with with African nations, and also the orientation, for example, of these nations in the Sahel, looking more toward uh, countries like Russia or uh, China, who were not involved in the imperialist division of Africa um, as as better partners uh, for supporting their genuine sovereignty and their genuine Oh, Lord, no, sir, sir. Over when, when the Chinese over there in Africa, they're exploiting Africa. They're not sharing the wealth. You know, they'll build some roads and a couple of statues here, there. They'll build a museum, but then they'll take all of the mineral wealth, the resources, the diamonds, the gold. Um, and in some places, they're trying to take over the... Um, 
the um, trade routes they're taking over the airports in certain areas. So it's a very exploitive relationship. And there's places over in Africa that the Chinese are setting up that the black people are not even allowed to go to. They have restaurant and restaurants and bars and hotels that the Chinese, they're building over there and the local natives can't even go there. So it's very exploitive over there. And we got to remember when they had COVID, when COVID was popping off over in China, a lot of people forget how cruelly they were treating the African people over there in China. They were very discriminatory towards the African people. Um, they were forcing quarantines on the, the African people. They were doing a lot of real weird stuff over there. And again, you go over to um, some of the Chinese over in Africa, you see them beating on people and a lot of weird stuff going on over there. So yeah, that's not a great example of some type of utopia society under com under a communist system. Again, these people practice the same anti-black racism. So again, anti-black racism is something that we have to tackle and look at. But anyway, but let me get some more. Thank, thank you so much, John. Yeah, th thank you, thank you, Tariq. I really appreciate it. All right. I don't know. Okay. Because I don't want to hear, because then it gets into a little babbling type of thing. Yeah, these people from these communist nations, they still practice anti-black racism. That's what it is. So you can't show me an example of one of these places where they're not practicing anti-black racism. Just show it. Hey, Corey, let's get Corey in here. Hey, how's it going? Um, I I wanted to just jump back to the Jan Six stuff, if that's okay. Unless we're yeah, yeah, forward. yeah, yeah. I mean, I've I've been in spaces before with the general. Um, <laughs> he lies like crazy. Um, I see. I, I, yeah, yeah, you know, and I posted some of the receipts and, and down, you know, in the in the bubble there. Um, I, I wasn't going to throw them up in the nest unless that's cool. Um, but you know, one of them was eyewitness testimony of a guy who was there right next to her when she was shot, saying that police were verbally warning her. And that she didn't heed the call when she, you know, went through the window. Yeah. Um, another thing I wanted to say, she entered the building through a broken window, um, you know, with alarms blaring at that entrance. Um, and then, you know, a funny thing, I, I know the general, I've heard of him, uh, heard him talking on spaces for a long time. His buddy was Lucas Denny, who violently assaulted police that day and was sentenced to, what was it, 52 months in prison after he pled guilty. And I, I, I just wish I would have been able to ask him while he was there like does does he think that lucas denny should have gotten the rittenhouse treatment mm, mm, you know because mm. like i asked him one time you know what he thought of the violent assaults against police by his buddy lucas denny and he claimed that they were photoshopped the pictures oh, weren't real <laughs> lord right so he's he's definitely a special case i see yeah uh, yeah so his lies are not unique so yeah he's a known liar i can imagine Oh, he wait. He's here. Hold on. Wait. He's here. Let me get him. Hold on. Let's let's get him up. He's back. General, are you saying that your boy was photoshopped, General? He's all up for the extermination of anybody that doesn't think like him. And Corey, you can go fuck yourself, man. I'll meet you face to face any day of the week. Uh, you're, you're a little punk ass, little faggot, fucking bitch. Yeah, General, and General. anytime you ever want to meet face to face and have a have a talk. Let's do that, okay? I'm up for that, you yeah, little sure. fucking I mean, punk bitch. You, you fucking punk ass, general, little fucking bitch. I'm down to general, talk all the general, time, man, but down, you, you blocked me, you know? <laughs> I didn't block you. I don't have you blocked. I'll meet you face to face, you fucking little fucking prick. General, watch your what language. What are you talking about? Meet up with me, dude. Let's have a face to face debate. You want to fucking, you want to talk shit, okay? Do it to my fucking face if you want to. You're not it's going not to it's, because it's you're a shit. pussy. It's you're it's a fucking shit. little left in general. Watch your language. Sack of fucking shit, and you got no fucking balls. You're a fucking punk. General, watch your language. General, you're, you're not at a honky tonk. Uh, let's watch your language, General. We got young people here. Can you have some decorum? Can you calm down? All right, General. Just speak Ow. without. The, all right. I know you're passionate, but let's let's watch the language, General. All right. Can we do that? General, might general have been, might have been the double mute. Okay, all right, general. All right, we're, we're not going to threaten people, general. Not, I'm, I, I'm not threatening. I'm saying that I'll meet any punk little bitch that wants to talk face to face. I'm more than willing to meet with you, Corey, face to face. I know that you're not willing to do that because you're a little sackless fucking cunt. Okay, 
And that's oh. just the way it is. Okay. That's okay. the way you're going to live the rest I, of your life. And that's what you're going to fucking be. And that's right, just... I just want to point out, I just screenshotted you. You have me blocked. I don't know why you're lying again. Oh, goodness. Yeah. His, his language His I had to get him on. The oh, language. Yeah, so it, he, I mean, he does that every time. That's why he blocked me in the first place. I came at him with receipts and he doesn't like that. Yeah. Yeah. Because when you when you bring receipts, he just starts cursing left and right. He just crashes out. So yeah, he he hates the truth. I see. But anyway, but thank you, Corey, man. I appreciate you. Yeah, thank you so absolutely, much. man. Thanks for having me up. Yes, indeed. Corey's bringing the receipts on that ass, and General was he crashed out. Now let's get all lives matter in here. All lives matter. All races are equal. Okay, there we go. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Hi, so I was wondering, um, we heard insurrection so many times uh, over the media, and uh, can you tell me if any single citizen was charged with insurrection? Um, were they? I don't know. I know a lot of people went to jail. I know that none of them were charged with insurrection. Mm -hmm. But a lot of them, they were charged with multiple things, right? No, hold on, hold on. Let's talk about insurrection. Well, let's talk about them storming the Capitol and going to jail. Well, we heard by media that it was insurrection, right? There's was, a lot of things that the media was said. It, oh, hold on. Was it once or was it a thousand times that all kinds of media said it was insurrection? Was it yes or no? You tell me. What was it? Yeah. The media told us it was insurrection. Over so what was it? If it, weren't, if it wasn't an insurrection, what was them storming the cap? What was that about? Hold on. Media told us it was insurrection over and over and over. I, I dare every single one of you to Google the names of individuals who were charged with insurrection. Try to find one, at least one. I was unable to find a single human being that was charged with insurrection. So that was an insurrection. So it wasn't an insurrection. It was not insurrection because nobody was charged with insurrection. So what would it be called? That's not the point. That is the, the point. Po no, that's not the point. The media is calling it insurrection. But so nobody, what is it? So is what charged. is it called? So, so why how is it? How is it insurrection if nobody is charged with insurrection? I don't know. That's exactly my point. The media is lying to us. It's not so, insurrection. So what is it if a bunch of people storm the Capitol? What is that? Okay. So a bunch of them were charged with obstruction. Is that accurate? Some of them were. A bunch of them were charged with... with uh, majority of them were charged with trespassing. Trespassing. About a dozen of them were charged with uh, assault. Mm -hmm. So a, a dozen of them charged with assault. As, uh, the hundreds of them were charged with obstruction. None of them were charged with insurrection. Not okay. a single one of them. So the media is lying to us about January 6th. And I know how it works because I was brainwashed myself. I grew up in Soviet Union in a communist country. I think I heard you the other day talking about communism, that, mm -hmm. uh, that America's destination is communism. You want to try how communism works? Try living in China. Try living in Cuba in Venezuela, in North Korea, 
in Vietnam, Vietnam is probably the mildest form of communism. But try living there. And tell me also how many people are moving from the United States, from this oppressive motherfucker, horrible country with systemic racism, how many of, of, of African Americans or anybody else moving from the United States, from this horrible country, to China, to Cuba, to Venezuela, and how many of those people from, from Cuba and Venezuela and China are coming to this country, to this motherfucker country, this horrible country, capitalist, rotting, systemically racist, horrible country? Well, I can tell you, I came to this country for a reason. It is the best country that I know. You're I preaching escaped, to the choir. I escaped, I escaped you're, so You're preaching to the choir. Okay, well, you're saying this to me as if I don't know that. Oh, oh, I thought that a destination of the United States was communism. Oh, no, okay, no, no, no. I'm, I'm not pro-communism. What are you pro? I'm pro-black empowerment. I'm not pro-communism. So, I'm all, okay, I'm all black, about removing, let's talk I'm about, all about I'm all about, about replacing the system. Oh, oh, slow down. I'm Let's all talk. about. Re hold on, dude. Slow down. Slow down. Slow down. I'm all about replacing the system of white supremacy because white supremacy is global. Okay. Okay. So, so I, let's I'm not, talk about I'm, white I'm, supremacy. I'm, I'm, yeah, let's talk about it. Go ahead. Okay. So I've lived in this country for 25 years. Right. I have not met a single white supremacy person. That's a lie. I don't believe you. Oh. <laughs> I have. That's not true. That's I not have true. Not. Now, it's, it's maybe impossible. There are some in prison. That's impossible. It's impossible for you to have not met a white supremacist. That's I have not. impossible. I have That's not. not true. That's I not have true. Not. Ask yourself, every single one of you who is listening, ask yourself. What you, what you said is not how true. How many people have you met that are wearing a shirt, white power? Or That's not no 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 no. Let's slow down. Slow forehead. down. Slow down. You're talking about a white extremist. We're not talking about them. You're talking about somebody walking around with a sheet or a skin. I, we're not talking about them. Those are white extremists. White supremacists. That's your everyday librarian. A white supremacist is your everyday judge, a lawyer who believes in white supremacy. They don't wear the sheets and the hats. They're not going to wear a name tag that says, "Hey, I'm a white supremacist." No. Your white supremacist is the everyday casual um, white supremacist. They're not going to oh. have some kind of identifier on them. So, so yeah, you, cannot see, you cannot see them. Mm -hmm. You cannot hear them. Mm -hmm. You cannot uh, feel them with your hands. Mm -hmm. But they exist. B because they... That's, they exist. that's your argument. That, that's their argument. They, that's, white that's supremacy is argument. their term. No, 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 no. White supremacy is their term. They told us they were white supremacists. They told us this is a white supremacist land. They drilled this into our heads. They put this in books and in laws. They put up whites only this, whites only that, white schools here, white church there, based on white supremacy. They told us this. If you are referring to America 60 years ago in uh -huh. south in south that's it's not south? that's no longer let's no longer America in 2025 or 2024. why why not how come it's not what what makes you think a lot of people and you're not yet arrested you're not yet killed that's for starters. But just because uh, they had, didn't kill me doesn't mean that there's not white supremacy. So. We had we had a, a, a black president for two terms. We have black senators. We have black congresspeople. And? We have black governors. We have and? black mayors. We have and? black police officers. We have and? black chiefs, uh, uh, chiefs of police. We have black generals. And... Okay, and they are powerless in their tokens.
You had a black president who was a powerless token who couldn't help black people worth a damn. What's your point, sir? What did Obama so do Obama, to help black people? Obama was not uh, able to help black people. That's interesting. No. What did he do for black That's, people? If he did not do anything for black people, it's not because he was uh, in, uh, the, the powerless. It's because it was, he, yeah, he, yeah, it was. He couldn't do anything for black people. It's because he is a socialist. And socialism is not a solution. And I can tell you why. That's just babbling, sir. You're just babbling at this point. Oh, yeah, Obama didn't do a damn thing for black people, so bringing him up is a moot point. Talking about a black senator, what are they doing for black people? They can't do anything under the system of white supremacy, right? That's why they allow them to be in certain political positions. So, so you believe in uh, the existence of white supremacists that uh -huh. you not see... They don't tell you that they are white supremacists. They are hiding behind oh. the, the, the job of a librarian. They are hiding before, uh, behind the job of a, I don't know, of a doctor, of a, mm -hmm. of a nurse, of Uber driver. Yeah. But they are just white supremacists because you decided to label them as such. Um, no, they said that they were white supremacists. They created a system of white. They they created a system of white supremacy. You're trying to say that they stopped 60 years ago. When did they stop? How did they stop? And why did they stop? We have multiple people in power that are blacks, Asians, brown people. What black person is in power? Name one black person who's in power. Right now, we have uh, the defense minister, the, the secretary of defense is black. And, Who? Uh, what's his name? Uh, come on, the, uh, the secretary of defense. That's how powerless he is. We don't even know him. What's his name? Oh, my God. Okay, I will look it up. That's how powerless he is. You don't even remember his name. Am I supposed a, to remember every name? Am I supposed to remember every name? Well, if you brought him up and he's supposed to be so powerful, he's not really that powerful. Just one tokenized black person. Are you talking about Lloyd Austin? Lloyd Austin, yes. Right. He's not powerful. He's just a tokenized black person who has a good job. That's not power. That's not power, sir. So the, the president of the United States, two-time president of the United States, powerless as hell. Powerless. Powerless. Couldn't do a damn the thing. Defense for secretary is powerless. Can't do a damn thing and for black somehow, people. And somehow, somehow, white supremacists is con are controlling this country. Yes. How does it make sense to any one of you with common sense? Because they can get him out of here at the drop of a dime if he does anything they don't like, sir. Well, how He's come, powerless. How the white come, he has to answer to the white supremacists. How That's come why. He's he powerless. Was, how come he was the president for eight years? Why? Because why? he was because he's not going to upset the status quo. That's why. Because he's an asshole, maybe. Because That's why Obama, an asshole. Obama, they allowed Obama to be in the White House. Obama strengthened white supremacy. That's why. Obama protected the white supremacists. Obama, they didn't punish any white people for killing black folks. They killed black people under Obama more than the entire Jim Crow era. Obama and Eric Holder didn't punish one so person. So yesterday, uh, the, the mayor of Chicago, uh, uh, the, the, the black uh, uh, mayor of Chicago, uh -huh. is that is it powerful enough for you? No, he's a token too. Okay, so he's a token too. Yeah, so he's a in, Chicago, token. In, in Chicago, all of the uh, leaders, political leaders, are blacks. And, and all they of get them, them are, all of them and they're are, powerless. And I'm and gonna give you, a, let me powerless. give you an example. Let me give you an example of how powerless they are. Let me give you a great example. Okay. You know, Kim Fox, 
out there and all, and she's one of those leaders that you talked about. Kim Fox, remember her? I don't remember, but uh, okay. that's fine. Go ahead. All right. She was a prosecutor out there. And when the Jesse Smollett hoax popped off, she didn't prosecute. She kind of just let it go. They went and found a special prosecutor to put charges on Jesse Smollett. They were like, oh, no, you don't, Negress. Oh, no, you don't. We're going to get a special prosecution to open this case up and get them charges on Jesse Smollett. That's what I'm saying. When black folks don't do what they're supposed to do, the special prosecutors pop out of nowhere. Then they bring the real white folks out who's really running the show. That's what I'm saying, sir. They got powerless tokens that they put in these positions to just let the status quo be maintained. You understand? Uh, Tariq, you're uh, taking some details uh -huh. about something that I'm not aware of. Uh huh. And you're using it to prove your point. And my point has and been. And you're proven. missing. You are missing the fact that multiple hundreds, thousands of political leaders, including mayor of Chicago and uh, a prosecutor and all that, are blacks. But Sir, your claim is your are claim powerless. Is, there are a lot of black mayors around the country, and. They put them in positions to basically protect the white police, protect the status quo, like Eric Adams out there in New York. He does his job, which is to let in a bunch of immigrants and not do anything to help the black community itself. None of these people actually do anything to help the black community, but they seem to roll out the red carpet for immigrants like yourself. That's why you think this country is so great. It's those black mayors and senators they're helping you, sir, as an immigrant. They help you come over and get all types of benefits and resources, sir. You understand? They don't help us at all. They don't do anything for us. So you're, you're against immigration? Yes. I, we should close the borders. We should not let no more people over here like that. We should close these borders, sir. Uh, God bless you. I agree mm -hmm. with that. Mm -hmm. Yes, indeed. Except, except uh, legal immigration is different from illegal immigration. Let's just shut all of it down for a minute. We got enough people. Let's just shut it down and let's get this money okay. circulated. I would be okay with it. I don't have a problem with it. Right, right. So who are you planning to vote for in this election? Um, probably the couch, because nobody's saying anything I want to hear. And we're sending too much money over to the Ukraine and all of these places, and I'm, I'm not cool with it. And by the way, you're from over there in Russia. Um, there's a lot of neo-Nazi groups over there in Russia, by the way. So when people start talking about communism and all of that, they still muster up the strength to be racist. And what's interesting about Russia, the Russian language was created by a black man, Pushkin. You know that? Yes, Pushkin was a, a quarter black man, uh, either a quarter or, or one eighth. I can't remember, but he's uh, but, he's uh, uh, let's. Uh, I can't remember which specific African country he was from, but uh, he was a, a African from Africa. Yes, he was black man. Yes. He was very proud. He was very proud now, of his black, black was, man. But he was also a three quarter white. And I don't know why uh, we are calling uh, anybody who has even 10% of uh, black, uh, black uh, but that's, that's irrelevant. I, I am not Russian. So I you're actually, not Russian? Yeah, I, I, am actually, I actually hate Russia. Now, what are you? I'm Georgian. Oh, okay. You're close to Russia. You're over there. Okay. And that, don't they have a lot of gypsies over there in Georgia? Uh, no, we don't. Y'all don't have those gypsies? Because there's a lot of poor-ass people over there in Georgia. No, not in Georgia. We don't have too many gypsies in Georgia, no. Okay, but y'all got some poor-ass people over there, some poor white people over there. Poor, poor white people. Uh, yeah. Well, depends on uh, how you define white. Okay. In Russia, <laughs> in Russia, when I was in Russia, I spent some time in Russia. Uh, my father served in Soviet army. Uh, he was called Black Hess. He was uh, called multiple who? times over, and uh, uh, so was I. Y'all were called what? Black 
S. Black ass? Yes. Okay. Well, now, why were they calling you black ass? <laughs> that's, a, that's a good question. So, because our skin is tanned. Okay. We look more like Midistern versus uh, versus uh, uh, Slavic looks, which is uh, kind of uh, Northern European looks, more like. Mm-hmm. Although you can you can meet uh, people that are a uh, mix of Asians and uh, uh, whites, plenty of them. But one yeah, would got, in Georgia and Russia, no, those are white people. They're, they're classified. If they come over here, they're going to be classified as white. You know, you, uh, I would say that majority blacks that I met, uh, they would, uh, uh, they classified me as white. However, I did not classify myself as white. Yeah, people always say that. You know, it's the government that called me white. I'm, I'm an alien. Uh, yeah, y'all play that. I'm not really white game. That's. No, I that's, don't. I don't have a problem being called white. Yeah, because you. That, that, that's guy. not my point. That's not my point. My point is that Russians did not call me white. Uh, I identify myself uh, like uh, uh, South, South Eastern European. Yeah, that's white. Over here, that's white, sir. Okay, that's, that, and that's fine. That's Geogra- white. That's Geogra- why, yeah, yeah, that, that shit is white. Geographically, white. Speaking, geographically yeah. speaking, Georgia is a, a border of Asia, and technically it's part of Asia. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, for most Americans, uh, that's incomprehensible because... Uh, they they don't understand. They they think Asia is. But, but we do understand when they get here, they're white. That's all we know. When they get here, all of that, all of the little ethnic nuances, they are white when they get here. And just like you, you've been, you you're putting the cape on for them January six rioters, just like other white people. So you fall right in line with the suspected white supremacists. That's what we look at. That's all that matters. All of the little ethnic nuances back in Georgia, back in the slums of Georgia and Russia and all of that stuff. Yeah, they might have called you something else over there, but when you get here, you fall in line with the whites and the white supremacists, and that's the issue, right? And why? what makes me a white supremacist? Suspected. I suspect that you could be because... Again, you have um, seem like you have somewhat of, com- of a camaraderie with some of those um, January 6th guys, and many of them were suspected white supremacists. Many of them were part of white supremacist organizations over here, like the Proud Boys and the Boogaloo Boys. These are white supremacist groups, straight up and down. Many of the people in January 6th, they were running around doing the white supremacist hand signals all over the place. So, yeah, they were white supremacists. So anybody who puts so, the cable on those guys. Hand, hand so you- signals, hand signals. Yeah. Um, the uh, what? What else? Uh, so the, they are hiding their identities. Uh, they are not really, not really, they not really. And somehow they are controlling this country and preventing yeah. you, you from succeeding. Yeah, they control the country, and I can still succeed to a certain level in spite of the white supremacists, only to a certain level. But that's because foundational black Americans, we have the spirit of Majara and we're very great and phenomenal. We can do that. Other people can't really do that under that kind of pressure. That's what makes us so phenomenal. Under strict oppression, we can still find levels of success. But you over in the slums of Georgia, you couldn't pop it. You couldn't get it popping, so you had to flee and come over here to the people with that Majora spirit in order for you to come up. And then you have the same kind of mindset of the white supremacists. And that's the problem, sir. You know why I came to this country? Um, Because we built the place that you can come and thrive. That's why. I know why you came. And Georgia wasn't popping. There's poverty over there. You broke white people. You don't want to be a broke white man. You come over here and make your whiteness work for you. That's why you came over. Right? To make my whiteness work for me. Yes. Because your whiteness was not working in the slums of Georgia. You were sitting over there eating some potatoes and baklava with flies on you. And you said, hey, man, I got to get over there to America and get with this white thing. Let my whiteness work. I heard that if I go over there, my whiteness can work for me. So why are Africans coming to this country for the same reason? Why are they? Yeah, they're coming over here because we got things popping. Because the white supremacists destroyed their 
land, so, so they got to come here. So blacks are coming to this country from Africa because they want to use their whiteness to succeed? No, they come over here so that they can get some of the benefits that foundational black Americans like myself fought for. Because we had to fight these white supremacists in order to get something. And other people want to come over here and get some of those gains, too. Did you defeat the white supremacists in this country? We did not. No, no, no. We did not. Unfortunately, we still but have. If you did not defeat them, if you did nope. not defeat them, and if they are still oppressing, why are the black Africans coming to this country? Because we are not living like they're living over there. Over there, they've destroyed those nations. The white supremacists have completely destroyed and colonized those nations and squandered all of the resources. Fortunately, we don't let them do that. We will fight them and stop them from doing that. We're we're going to get what we're supposed to get over here on our homeland. This is so, our home. So the entire leadership of uh, African countries are 100% uh, Africans. But somehow, somehow, it is it is white supremacist fault that those African nations uh, are underdeveloped. One hundred percent. And Georgia what? is also what? underdeveloped because why? Why is that? So Georgia slums of Georgia yeah. that are qualified mm -hmm. as whites, mm -hmm. and I'm being white, right? Yes. So how come is uh, uh, Georgia is fucked up as a country? Yeah. Uh, even though it's white. Yes. Wh why are white supremacists not not helping Georgia? Uh, it's a white country. Because you guys are lazy over there. Oh, so we are lazy. Okay, so you're I'm, lazy. You're, you're lazy. I'm lazy. You're lazy. Why I came? Because you didn't make your whiteness work over there. You had to bring it over here. The African nations. They are sabotaged. You have you're not, sab very, you're not sabotaged in you Georgia. You have a very simple explanation of, of why Georgia is fucked up. Yes, you're why lazy. Not, why Nigeria is fuck, fucked up. Right. And you're lazy why, in Georgia. Why South Africa is fucked up. Uh, it, so Africa is messed up because of the white supremacists. Okay, Africa is messed up because white supremacists. Yeah, because they and colonized Georgia, it and they still control the economics yeah. and the trade. And, and Georgia, that's controlled. Listen, slow down. That's controlled now by the white supremacists. So it's their fault. If you're running things, everything bad is your fault. And in Europe, you're running things. Right. It's your fault. That means right. the lazy white supremacists didn't step it up. And and Georgia, uh, being white, uh, is yeah. a fucked up because uh, uh, Georgians are lazy. Yeah. Well, yeah. Some of you, the the lower class ones, you're you just you didn't work hard enough. Some of us, or most of us. Well, the ones, if you have to flee, that means you just didn't really work hard in your own homeland because you had white working for you. So now that we heard your explanation of why yes. OJ is fucked up, can I offer my explanation? Go ahead. Let's hear it. Okay. Georgia is fucked up because of Georgian values. What's the Georgian values? Georgian values are a victim mindset, mm. victim of Russia. So they, they believe that they're victims of Russia? Yes. Okay. And there is uh, a lot of truth to it. Okay, that, that, that is some truth to it, because yeah, the white supremacists, and, and you know, there's a lot of infighting over there in Europe. So yeah, I believe that. A lot of infighting. There's always been a lot of infighting going on over there. But okay. go ahead. Infighting? Okay, so... Uh, yeah, you, you, uh, yeah, um, you're trying to make it fit your your narrative, and that, that's fine. Uh, I came to this country because this I believe this country is a, a great country, a better country to live for most people uh, in the world because of American values. Not because uh, it was built on on the uh, on the backs of a particular group that was a minority historically, but because it's it's a, a country of great values, better values than most countries in the world. Uh, what what are American values? 
American values are uh, individual freedom, uh, Christian values. Christian values? Okay. Oh, let's, let's slow down. Wait, let's slow down. Individual freedom. Okay. Individual freedom, Christian values. Let's slow down. Hold on. Let's slow down. We got to let's break all of these American values down. So you're saying American values, individual freedom, and it's a country that got all of its wealth from slavery. Hmm? How did it get all of the uh, wealth from slavery if uh, there were uh, how many percent of slaves uh, in this country? It was a lot, sir. Uh, how, how much percentage was? Um, the percentage, there were millions of enslaved people in America, sir. There was a lot of slaves. And how many, uh, uh, there were how many millions of uh, not slaves, but uh, slave owners, so to speak? Um, there were a lot of slave owners, but the United States government kept us enslaved. We couldn't get out of slavery because of the entire government, meaning black people who escaped and tried to go to get freedom Oftentimes, the United States military would go and try to get them. They let's had make, federal. Let's make an assumption. Since, since you cannot provide me the numbers, let's make an assumption. Hold on. No, no, no. Stop, stop it. Stop it. Because you're asking me a moot question about percentage. I'm just telling you the entire government was involved in slavery. We couldn't get out of slavery because of the entire government. Okay. Let's okay. Assume that is true. I don't, right. I don't argue with it. Okay. So uh, percentage-wise of population, if there were, um, let's say, 200 years ago when, when uh, America was uh, 200 plus 220 years ago, yeah, um, when Amer America um, declared independence, um, let's, let's Google this information. Can somebody Google this information? Um, I would like to know is the, you, how, what would you like? how many uh, white uh, people lived in, in the United States uh, at the time of Declaration of Independence and how many uh, of them were blacks and how many of them were enslaved. That's irrelevant. We were slavery. Why is it, was why the, is it irrele irrelevant? That's irrelevant because it was you're talking about the exact number, the exact percentage. You uh, had... I, I, we don't need exact. All, we don't need exact. We don't okay. need... We, we cannot... There were mil what you, okay, there's, there were millions of black people enslaved and that free labor built up all... Let me, let me explain why is it relevant. You said it was irrelevant, right? So... Let me yeah, you're trying to find out the exact percentages. That that's just no, kind of filibuster. No. You're, exact, you're exact filibustering. Percentage is not known. Exact percentage is not known. It's impossible to know. Okay. We don't know today how many exactly we have. Exactly. But what we do know, we do know all of the wealth was built off that slave labor. The free okay. labor and uncompensated labor. All of the wealth that's, in this that's a, that's an interesting claim. So let me uh, explain my point. Okay, no, no, no. Let's make it practical, because now you're kind of filibustering. No, this if, is not a filibuster. No, 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 no. Listen, listen, listen. Hold on, slow down, because I, I don't want to talk in circles, because you're about to start going on a tangent, uh, basically a deflection. Name an industry that generated wealth during slavery that didn't involve slavery. Go ahead. You are taking it to a different topic. Okay, no, no, no. Let's make it simple. Me an no, no, no. Let's make You're it simple. not giving me an opportunity to explain. No, no, no. We're going to make it real plain. All right? Because you're trying to filibuster. I want you to name an industry in this country that generated wealth that was not involved with slavery. Name it. I would have to uh, think about it and uh, research it. I don't have a, an answer off the top of my head. I got an answer. None. All of them. All of them. Okay. Were involved in slavery, sir. That's what I'm saying. All of the industry. So can I, can I say something now? Okay. Go ahead. Okay. So 
we you said millions of people were enslaved, right? Yes. Lex. Let's assume a uh, hundred million. Would that be okay? No, no, not a hundred million, but millions. It was millions. Okay, so how many millions would be a reasonable? Well, okay, what's your point? Go get to your point because I don't even know what. So your let's point say is. let's say ten million. Would that be a fair number? Okay, let's say ten million. Now what? So in order for uh, for uh, to claim that wealth in this country was because of the slaves that were 10 million, the population of the United States should be 11 million total, including 10 million of slaves, because 90% of the work was done by slaves, and therefore 90% of wealth was, uh, was because of slavery. The reality is that maybe there were, I don't know, 20% slaves, and you cannot live wealthily if there is 20 people, uh, the, 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 20 white people and one slave. Uh, the, you cannot be wealthy when that is the ratio. So Boy, if we had... If, or what kind of horrible example is that? That don't make, that didn't make no sense, brother. That's why I'm saying... Well, here, what, here's why that it, made, how it makes that sense. Here's that how it make. makes sense. Yeah. That's that's babbling. When you claim that, that's just babbling. That, that, that that made that zero well, sense. Stop, 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 stop. That made zero sense. You just, this is what I'm saying. You just filibustering. You don't really have an answer. You're just kind of babbling and saying stuff. That made zero sense. Not only did it not make sense, it was nonsense how you, that, how you framed that. You don't really have an answer. That's what I'm saying. So I don't want to waste time. You're just saying something just to say it. You don't really have an answer. That was horse crap, what you just said. All right. So now you've you've kind of thrown in the towel. When you start saying stuff like that, that means you don't have anything. And that's just you're just saying stuff. You know what I'm saying? So anyway, since you're just doing that, we can just. Okay. So, you know, so all right. So, thank, you, thank you. Thank you. Now, when, uh, nah, when you just say weird, goofy stuff that don't even make sense. All right, now it's time to end. Now you, you're going to bore people because now you're not even talking in good faith. That You don't really have an answer, all right? I, I'm going to make it real plain. Just show me an industry that made wealth in this country that didn't involve slavery. Uh, I have to do research, but if you have 10 million and you have two white people, then three white people will have three cookies. Uh, uh, he like the, like the count from Sesame Street. You remember the count just say random numbers and it don't mean... <laughs> You get three white people, and then you get two slaves, and you get three cookies. Ah, 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 ah. Okay. You just, okay, you just said random shit that didn't make no sense. If you have, let's say 10 million. 10 million, is that a fair number? Okay. You get 10 million, and they are 20%, and they're doing all the labor, and you get four white people. That doesn't add up to... 300%. Okay, you're just saying shit. Man, you're just saying stuff. Yeah. Let's get our um, made coins in the building. Made coins in the building. Hop on, made coins. Yes, hello, everyone. Hello, the host. That was a very good um, speech you gave out. Um, I think I don't like to judge um people but sometimes we all judge but that individual right there he has serious issues he's prejudiced against black people i just yep. checked his profile and he has a serious problem all right he doesn't know nothing about black history he doesn't know nothing about history at all but he comes on here and then when i checked out his profile it's like you know it it, it just tells me who he is he's supremacist oh, yeah. he's a white supremacist like, oh, yeah. you know I mean, but for everyone that's on here, don't waste your time and energy around people like that. All right. Don't waste your time or energy because they don't do right. nothing. And going by what everything, what you said, that's all straight facts. Yes, um, sir. I just I don't want to hold your time up as a host, but I want to make this. I want to share this with everyone. Um, I'm from the USA. I'm from Connecticut next to New York. I grew up around racist, racism. I mean, we, we all experienced that in some part of our life, you know, especially being um, a black person. 
Um, I have many different friends of back, different backgrounds. I get along with everyone that gets along with me. Um, there's a lot of um, foreigners, like say, for example, from Guatemala, different countries from South America. Um, this female I was talking to, she um, she t she said to me, um, I'm a nice guy. And then this is what she told me. She told me that like uh, a lot of the um, white men around my area, which didn't surprise me, they talk negativity saying to her, her people from Guatemala and other countries that black people are bad, this and that. It's a stereotype that continues to go on, which is untrue. And then she yeah. told me that like she didn't believe that uh, uh, white guy saying that because a lot of uh, the white guys, whatever background, uh, mostly Italians were um, um, saying that um, black people is this and that. It was just false information, you know? Okay. And that's the oh, last but th one thank you so much, man. Thank you, brother. Okay, okay. Thank you, brother. Brother, this is kind of going on and on. Thank you so much, brother. Let me get my sister Brooke in the building. All right, sister Brooke in the building. How are you, beloved? Well, yeah, Miss Brooke. I see Wani down there. What's up, sister Wani? Hello, hello. Brooke. Hey, Brooke. How are I'm, you, dear? I'm good. How are you? I'm trying to take Bluetooth and everything. Um, yes, well, yes. Um, I just wanted to uh, say hello to everyone. Good night, everyone. Um, I just wanted to bring up uh, the the march that happened downtown Nashville when the uh, what was he Georgian gentleman was sitting there talking about I'll do white supremacists wear T-shirts. Well, they were marching um, in downtown Nashville on July sixth, and they all had masks on their faces, so we couldn't tell who they were. Oh yeah, oh yeah, exactly. So yeah, they try to hide in plain sight. And 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 when he said, I, "I've never met a white supremacist," shit, I knew that was cap. Because let me tell you something. You want to know what a white supremacist is? Somebody who deny it. The minute you see somebody denying white supremacy, that's your white supremacist right there. That's your white supremacist right there. Somebody's a white supremacist in a system of white supremacy. And everybody want to play dumb and try to hide in plain sight. No, we see you. No, we see you because you're practicing it. Yeah. And then we get to talking to people and we see what their ideologies are, even though they try to act friendly. You let them talk long enough. Then the anti-black racism starts coming out. Uh oh, I got one. Uh oh. You know, that's why you got to know how to ask certain questions. Like the guy earlier when he was talking about reparations, I said, oh, no, no, no. Let me let let me ask him certain questions. And when we start asking him certain questions, you saw how he crashed out. He started off all cool. You know, hey, guys, you know, I'm all for reparations, did. I'm all, you know, I want to see black people get it, did. And then later on in the conversation, you goddamn son of a bitch. <laughs> you guys are the effing worst, man. Ashley Babbitt didn't deserve that, dude. You know, he, he crashed out later on in the conversation. He crashed all the way out. Yeah. Man, shout out to everybody in here. We are like 1,200 people in here in the middle of the night. Family, listen, family. The movie, Microphone Check, if you're in L.A., if you are in Los Angeles, family, the movie, Microphone Check, is going to be back in theaters this Friday. In Los Angeles. So go to microphonecheck.com, get your tickets to go see Microphone Check in theaters this Friday. It's at the landmark Sunset Theater. It's going to play all week. Go see it this weekend, ladies and gentlemen. Go to microphonecheck.com. And then next week, the 19th, is going to be in other cities, and I'm going to announce that. But the L.A. run is going to start again this Friday. You got to go see Microphone Check. Phenomenal, phenomenal, phenomenal film, ladies and gentlemen. This is the film you don't want to miss. You got to see it in theaters. You got to vibe with it. Real good vibe. Go to microphonecheck.com, ladies and gentlemen. All right, let me let y'all get some sleep because I got more interviews to do in the morning. But you can go to my YouTube channel, check out the interview I did talking about microphone check 
on KCAL News. I tell my story. Uh, cruising through in that black on black with my family. Bending corners, triple tinted with hella B. Before them, I didn't think this could ever be. Rowing up hella smart, but moving aimlessly. I remember when I used to get painted by name. Immigrants? Immigrant, you know, but, but didn't they have an immigration bill in place that Trump decided he didn't he didn't think was good for his political future? Didn't didn't the House come up with a plan, and then Trump is Don't the try one to that blame Trump back? on um, Biden flooding these cities with immigrants and black people complaining? Yes, they're undermining the black community, flooding the zone with all of these illegal immigrants, sir. That's Who Biden. It's not it, immigration's been an issue for fifty years. But it only Biden, becomes a, what Biden has just opened up the floodgates and Biden flooded has, black neighborhoods, and we the whole black community is complaining about this. What, what, and where at? Where are they complaining? Because I, I live in a major. I live in a major. Let me. Let me. New York. Let, Atlanta, I live in D.C. Okay. We were we were in D.C. by the thousands complaining about it, sir. I live in a to? I live in a border state next to California. Where do you and live? Just, in Arizona. We right. just don't see what you're talking about, man. Yeah, we I don't see that. that. That and that's why Biden got beat down because y'all ain't seeing the truth. And the truth is, he's getting beat down with facts. And the Democrats what are struggling. Facts, right Tariq? Now. Now, hey, the granted, fact, Biden. Yes, that he no. hasn't done anything. The black community is disgruntled with Biden. He has Ooh, undermined the black gonna community. He's going to still get. Listen, he's going to no, still. No, 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 sir, okay. y'all can play, y'all can sit here and be in denial. He's up here looking stupid as hell for a reason. He doesn't have a base no more. The black community has abandoned Biden because he has Man, abandoned us, and he's no, up there looking stupid right no. now, sir. You say yes. that every yes. election cycle. You say that every every election cycle. They the, always the, say the black people. Y'all are, are panicking. Why are y'all panicking right now? I'm not panicking. The Democrats are panicking. You you're I, trying to act like you ain't panicking. The I'm Democrats not panicking. are panicking. The Democrats are saying we are in trouble tonight, sir. What are you talking if pe- about? If people are dumb enough to elect Donald Trump for a second time, then we deserve what we get. Because well, what we, I saw we, was a guy we, who lied every time he so opened his mouth. what did you get mouth. out of Biden? What did you get out of Biden being in office? What do you mean, what did I get out of Biden? Now, I don't expect the president to do anything specifically for me. Then what the hell are you complaining about then? I'm not complaining about anything. I'm just calling you a show because I just if didn't. If you don't want the president just, to do nothing for you, then what are you complaining about? I mean, I, I, what, what what do I have I, to complain I, I, what, about? What, nothing. What are you complaining about? I, I, just like, I just love to see the Democrats win. Is that it? Well, I would love to see them win as opposed to Donald Trump. Yeah. Sir, yes. What year were you born, sir? 1967, sir. Yes, indeed. Where is your family from? Well, we, we were born in Oklahoma. Mm-hmm. Where are they from? Well, we were born in Oklahoma. No, 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 no. Where is your family from? As far as historically? Where did they immigrate here from? Well, my grandfather was Ch- was my great grandfather was Choctaw. I'm not sure about my great grandmother. Okay, all right. Your great grandfather was Choctaw. Where did from they what I hear, from what I understand, but okay. only one side of my family came from Africa. If if that's what you're trying to get at. Okay, where'd the other side come from? Where, where, I, last our role showed he was Choctaw from Tennessee, Oklahoma, somewhere in that just. I'm not sure. Okay. You, if you're a foundational black American, you kind of know where they came from a little bit because Oklahoma, they would have only went to Oklahoma in the mid 1800s, the late 1800s. Yeah. Where did and, they, where were they my, my, my great, my grandfather was actually born in 1883. My family was his third family. His two previous wives had passed away. Right. So my grandfather was born in 1883 in Oklahoma. Right. However, we there's there's some you know we've done a little bit as much of a search as we could from Tennessee, Oklahoma, that particular area. But I'm not. I guess what's what's the point of that question? I'm just just trying to see what your background is. Because oh, okay. are you are you very, are you pro immigration? I just think that I'm trying to answer your question as best I can. I think that that becomes a real hot button issue around election time that nobody's you 
pro-immigration. I'm talking about you. I, I'm pro getting the, if you, if you saying, am I for rounding up 11 million people and trying to send them back? No, I'm not. If you're here, you haven't committed a crime. We need to figure out who you are and go ahead and integrate you into our society because that's what you've been doing anyway. Okay. So you're pro-immigration. Yeah. I don't have a problem with immigration. So how do you feel about those resources used for non-citizens that black people can use. We could use those resources. How do you feel about I, us not getting those resources? Well, I, I don't know. Are we not getting them? Is that is that factually not happening? What resources are we getting specifically? I because haven't applied for any specific resource to get from the government is what I'm saying. So I don't know what we're not getting because I don't ask for anything. I'm not saying that they're not. I'm saying that I don't know for a fact that I don't know what black people are not getting. I haven't heard enough black people come to me and say, hey, you know what? I went and applied for this and I didn't get this from the government, but an immigrant got it instead. I would hope that if black people are homeless like immigrants are, that they could go and have a place to stay at. But I'm not. You don't sure see what... all these homeless black people around the country? Yeah, I do. But I don't know if that if, if that coincides with us not getting something that we want. I don't know. Yeah, if, that I don't know if that's an apple to apple conversation, Tariq. I think that's more apple to orange. You don't hear conversation. the reparations conversations. Oh, sir? I want the. I want. I don't know if it's giving us such. I would like to see reparations in the form of us being able to get free education, being oh, able to get. I'm the first God. person. God damn it! Okay, okay, free education. Well, no, I'm saying free. I, I would like to see us be able to get like, for instance, if you want to trace it all the way back, the first thing we should have been given. We had land when we grew up. I knew enough to know my free grandfather. Had quite a, well, what, what do you want when you say reparations? Do you just want a, a check? I mean, yeah. What, what, are the okay, I don't mind getting, the check. I, are, the I don't, are the immigrants getting free education? When they, no, they're not. Get, they're getting checked. They're getting money the minute they get here. They're getting debit who, cards. Who, who, who told you? No, 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 but who told you? How, you? You're saying immigrants walk in and receive a check from the government. They're getting debit cards when they get over here, dude. Or do, are you not aware? No, I'm not aware. Okay, have a good day. I'm not going to sit here and just talk to my who just don't know nothing. Good Lord. This is your Democratic voter right here. Just don't know a damn thing. He don't know <laughs> nothing. This is your Democratic voter right here. The old Democratic voters right now don't be knowing nothing. I don't want nothing. That's that Jim Clyburn stuff. I I, I don't want nothing. <laughs> Why do you got to give me something? Why? Who, you, just you being good, good white daddy is good enough for me. I don't need nothing. That's what Jim Clyburn said. What's wrong with these old civil rights talking niggas? I'm like, what, what reparations? I the money. I don't want no dirty money. That Florida Evans shit. JJ, get this dirty money out of this house. <laughs> that's why that's not that Florida Evans shit. Y'all know good times. That was the thing that burned me about good times. Every time JJ then would bring some money in there, Florida ass. Uh oh, uh, this money come from the streets. I don't want this dirty money, James. They hate it coming up. They hate money. It's like, where's white Jesus? God, y'all niggas kill me. This is why the Democrats are crashing and burning in front of our damn eyes right now, family. This is why that old shucking and job and plantation stuff is out, family. It's out. Brother Tariq, how are you, sir? Hey, what's going on? Uh, a couple of things I got to say. I think, you know, CNN purposely turn off the mics for this debate uh i don't know if anyone had caught that because um they wanted to make sure that you know once uh any of the presidents uh finished their statement that they will just turn the mic off so they will over talk the other person i okay. guess that was a way to try to i guess slow down trump but clearly that wasn't even a factor in, in this particular uh debate Okay. Uh, Biden was cooked. He was malfunctioning like a robot. Yes, he was. He, he clearly looked like he needed to sleep. I, I I kept asking myself why then they gave him Red Bull during during each break time or whatever because he oh. just looked he looked crazy. He looked he crazy did. up there, and like you know, everyone keeps saying, "Oh, Trump is lying about whatever," right? But this is a debate. I don't think anyone cares. If Trump has sex with a porn star or not, I don't think. Right. Really, that ain't, I don't that think ain't really. Whatever. Yeah, but see, this is the thing that the, the Democrats got to watch out for. If you bring up those allegations, 
then what is Trump going to do? He's going to hit you with the haymaker and bring up Hunter Biden. Exactly. He's going to bring up Hunter Biden, and that's his kryptonite right now. Exactly. Real talk. And let me, let me, yeah, let me hold on. I got a Democratic shield in here I want to get in. Loss, get in here. This is a Democratic shield. Loss, let me hear it. I, I got to hear y'all spin this. Loss? Yeah, so... Uh, let me, let's hear you spin this. Go ahead. <laughs> Come on, let me hear it. <laughs> Please so, try to spin this so, train wreck we saw tonight. Go ahead. You know, so I, I, I don't, you know, I was a undecided voter prior to the night. Um, uh -huh. And I think tonight kind of solidified who, I, who I'm supporting and, uh, and why I'm supporting them. Um, and I am supporting, I am choosing to support uh, Joe Biden for president. Mm -hmm. um, and it's, and it's, it's pretty clear. Um, why, why is that? Now, why is that? So, you know, I think we're kind of, you know, looking at the semantics of it. We're looking at, oh, well, he's just old and fragile. Well, they're both, first off, they're both old. Uh, and oh, as, as Biden on. said tonight, come on, come on, come on. Trump is just three years younger than, uh, than, than Joe Biden this is. is. Desperation uh, but, talk. This but, is desperation but, talk. Go ahead. Go but, ahead. But, but tonight, I think when it, when we talk Trump about the merits old of two. Trump we, old too, come on, that's this is desperation. We, when Go we ahead. talk about the merits of what was spoken on tonight, I think one candidate was very clear in his policy and what he plans to do for the American people. And I think Joe Biden clearly was able to articulate what he wanted to do, regardless of him stuttering. People, what what, people what did he want to do? Joe Biden okay, okay, has what always he had a stuttering problem. Joe Biden has always had a stuttering problem. For 40, no. 50 years, he's had a stuttering problem. He has this was beyond this. This wasn't even stubborn. No, no. This was mumbling. Mumbling and bumbling. This right, was. He also a had a cold problem. tonight too. He also oh, had a cold tonight. Okay, no, but stop, stop. Yeah, but stop. no, he but, didn't but have a cold. On. Don't blame there, there this. Was several times. Don't blame right? this there, on the there cold. Was several Don't do times, this. There were several do times this. when Trump was asked questions and he Don't never answered the question, all right? All these Democratic there, shields, boy, they no, trying no, no. to earn your pennies. It's not even about being a shield. I don't necessarily, it I'm is. an independent. Y'all Democratic I'm not shields even are trying to, you when weren't I, when undecided. I you're a Democratic. Stop, 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 stop. You're not, a, you're not undecided. You're a Democratic shield. That's the talking point they tried to, to put down. They must have sent y'all the emails to say, well, Biden had a cold. He wasn't sniffling or coughing or nothing. He didn't have a cold. He's senile right now. He's done. He's baked. He's baked. And y'all know it. Come on, spin it some more. Let me hear some of this bull crap. Spin yeah, it some when more. I got my, when I got my ballot in Colorado last mm -hmm. week, uh, a, few, a few weeks ago, I received both a Democrat and Republican ballot because I'm an, I'm an unaffiliated voter. I'm not registered. No, no, you're, you're a Democratic party. shield. Stop it. Go ahead. Okay. All right. I mean, that's your opinion. That's cool. That, uh -huh. um, You've been a very Democrat. very opinionated. That's totally Moving fine. In Yes, all go right, ahead. So, let's let's but, hear the spin. But tonight, when it came to child care, all right, uh, Biden mentioned how he, you know, has has actively worked to ensure the child uh, child care tax credit that many black families have been able to enjoy over the past oh, few God, years stop. when they filed their taxes. All right. Oh, God. So Biden, I mean, I'm sorry, Trump was asked four times his stance on child care. The same question. Not one time did he mention child care or answer the question. All right? This is reach. This is such a reach, boy. Man, just let this is desperate. It's not a reach. It's the truth. See, this is desperate. Don't hey, thank you. I don't want to hear desperate babble. This is, man, yeah, this, this is desperation. Oh, God. This is desperation, family. Desperation, desperation, desperation. Boy, these Democratic shields are in panic mode. T.S. Giselle, this is another Democratic shill. T.S. Giselle, let's hear some of your shilling. All right. T.S. Giselle, let me hear you spin this too. Let's hear you spin it. T.S. Giselle, this is from the, the Billy Porter vote. All right. T.S. Giselle, hop on. Got a lot of bands, got a lot of Chanel on me. <laughs> All right, so let's You know, it was my birth. Hold on, you know, it was my birthday. Um, Thomas Sotomayor, you can cash at me. Um, thanks for the cash apps that I got when I announced my birthday last week. Um, T.S. Chazelle, Every Girl's Dream, Every Man's Fantasy. Okay, let's be serious. All right, um, <laughs> okay, yeah, Tommy, cash at me. Um, okay, no, stop trying to flirt with me. Let's okay, okay, me. okay. I'm being serious. Okay. Because um, I'm an unwavering Democratic voter, so I'm I never going to I'm never gonna leave the quote-unquote Democratic plantation. I'm a, a big advocate for Joe Biden because he's been very loyal to my community, the trans community, the LGBT yes, community. Yes, and so, 
So we understand where this you're the coming. vote. This the vote was never going to decide anything for me. Now, I'm a very honest person, mm -hmm. and so was this the strongest performance from Joseph? It wasn't. Right. Um, he was very I'm glad lethargic. You're being honest. At least you're being honest. He was very lethargic. Um, Trump continuously, as he always does, lied throughout the debate. It was very um dissatisfying not to see Joe more prepared to rebuttal the, the dozens of lies that Trump told throughout this debate. Also very disheartening that CNN's moderation was horrendous. It was well, horrible. Well, was I never want to see another... People keep saying Trump was lying. I never want to see another debate on CNN. The moderators were terrible. All um, right. But... All right. All right. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Because but yeah, people talking about Trump was lying. Biden was lying too. Tommy, hop on, brother. Hop on. We got Tommy. Man, I'm glad you couldn't. Some of these people are. Man, just to watch these people lie, the, the moderation now was a problem? Yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, they're desperate. It's desperate right now, man. You, you, your boy came up there and said, oh, I'm from Arizona. And, and they never complained about that. Sir, I lived in Arizona for seven years. They've been complaining about that. And it got worse. They've been talking about immigration and immigration has been hurting black folks. And if you say you down for black folks, you should not be wanting all these undocumented workers coming in, taking jobs and taking benefits away from black folks. That should never be something to argue. I still remember when he said build a damn wall and black folks called it racist. How is it racist that they building a wall to keep other people out? Dummy. It makes no sense. You jumped on that bandwagon and then see where it took you. Tonight, you watched a man not be able to complete sentences. This man said that he had a conversation with dead people from World War I. What the hell you think he going to lead us into? The Battle of the Bulge? What is he going to lead us to? The War of 1812? What are we talking about? This is a stupid thing to even have this damn conversation, Tyreek. I'm so damn mad I had to take my Metamucil earlier. You hear me? <laughs> Thank you so much, Tommy. Thank you very much. Yeah, man, people, y'all, your Democratic shields, uh, y'all can't you know, trying to lie and spin this. Come on, y'all, y'all, y'all can't spin this. Don't try to spin this. And I'm, I'm not a Trump fan. I'm not. I'm so nonpartisan. Uh, I'm, a, I'm a policy based voter. I be, I vote on policy. Whoever has the policy that represents me, that's who I'm going with. I don't, I'm not a Democrat, Republican, or nothing. Not an independent. I am a issues-based voter. And my issue is reparations. Whoever has a check, that's who's gonna get a vote. We got um um speaking of the musty tether vote, we got Johnny Somali. Johnny Somali, hop hop in, sir. We got Johnny Somali in here. Hop in, Johnny Somali. All right, Johnny Somali, hop in. That was an amazing debate. I love to see Biden dig his own grave. That mm -hmm. senile piece of shit. I hate how he lied about he helped the black community. What has he done for the black community in the last three and a half years? I don't know. I haven't nothing. Seen one Absolutely one nothing. policy, one program at all. Absolutely nothing. And, but what he did, he led a bunch of your tethered family over here, though. He did do that. So you should be happy for that. No, nah, that was Bill Clinton. That was Bill Clinton. I'm going to follow in his footsteps one day. Yeah, 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 but but Biden is doing it now. Biden has opened up the floodgates and let a bunch of folks over here. And you know, so, what's the choice now? Do we vote for Trump, Tariq? What do you say to the FBI? I, I hey man, I'm still waiting on somebody to come through with some tangibles. I'm still waiting. I, you know, I'm waiting for somebody to come through with some tangibles for foundational Black Americans. I'm gonna lie. Obama didn't do much for Black Americans either. What did he give us? No, Obama he did. Obama no, he phone? did. What the fuck he give us? $50 no, he did. When the 2008, when the market crashed, what the fuck he give people? Oh, he just let a bunch of musty tethers over here, man. He let your family over here, and bam, here we are. And I voted for Obama twice. Yeah. I'm very disgruntled with it. Obama used to follow me. I, I was I went in on him so hard he unfollowed my ass. <laughs> he, he unfollowed me. He said, "Fuck him." <laughs> You know, now I, I even put money on one of the campaigns. I, that's why I was, you know, hoping that he was going to come through with it. And I'm like, hey, wait a minute. This little old musty tether, he didn't do nothing. I need my money back, Obama. Y'all give me my damn paper back. Yeah. That's how I am with it. Come on, everybody. We up in here. We almost got 1,400 people in this room in the middle of the night. Um, Infinite. Hop on Infinite. Then we're going to get grinds. Infinite, Infinite and grinds. Where is Tariq getting all that money? <laughs> uh, 
to yeah, read, we'll brother. Uh, not too much, but one, I just want to give you uh, praise for uh, microphone check. I haven't checked it out yet, but Thank I know you. If you said it's coming back to the theater, so I'm going to try to check it out here in Chicago. Yes, it, it will be in Chicago. Um, I forgot the name. It'll be, it'll be at Landmark Theater yeah. um, the week of July 19th. But go ahead, okay. bro. Definitely going to check it out. I, you know I put my whole family on you, man. So my sister, man. everybody, buy your stuff, everything. I got to show you some pictures sometime. But tonight's debate um, was embarrassing, I think, overall for just America in general. I don't think anybody could have yeah. watched it. I don't think anybody could have watched it and been like, yeah, that's my man on either side. They both are, they're both trash. Like yeah. that, uh, Biden is, is one, like at least three feet into the ground right now. He's halfway gone. Like, why is he a candidate? And, and, and Trump is just Trump. He, you know, he sit there, he lies and all that, whatever. Biden lies. I don't even know if Biden lies so much as he was just so mentally inept. He was just right. talking about things that didn't exist. And right. you could barely hear the man. He was <sighs> like, what? Yeah. It yeah. was yeah. embarrassing. And you brought up a very good point, brother. This was embarrassing for the country. This was embarrassing for the country. Family, look, the world is looking at this. You know, the world looking at the president looking weak like this. You understand? The president. I mean, Biden is a sitting president right now. And he's looking real weak and frail and incompetent. So, hell. What if somebody in Al Qaeda is somewhere doing the Birdman hand rub? Like, hey, wait a minute. These dudes are, hey, they, they soft right now. Some of the enemies of the United States might be looking like, hey, man, these people might be lunch right now. We can't have weak leadership up here like that. You understand? When they see that the public ain't really supporting the Democrats like that, especially their base, when you see the the so-called democratic base, which are foundational black Americans. We're the base of the democratic party. We're the ones who have supported them consistently the most, and we ain't rocking with them. They see that. You understand? So people might start plotting and planning. We got to really look at the big picture here. That wasn't a good look at all, seeing Biden up there flubbing around. That's why the Democrats are talking about getting him out of office ahead of the damn election. That's how bad it is. Man, well, watch the conversations tomorrow. These people are having emergency meetings tonight. I'm going to get um Grind, and then I'm going to get Isan. Grind's then Isan on. What's up, Brother Tariq? How you doing, Grinds? I'm good, and yourself? I'm good, man. How are you, sir? Very good. Um, First of all, <clears throat> let me apologize. This is the last time I was on stage uh, when I was dragging somebody for filth, and I did go a little overboard with the uh, lang with the language, so I apologize for that. Uh, I wanted this respect the stage. Uh, but as far as what's going on tonight, like, man, spe speaking of dragging somebody for filth, uh, Biden got dragged for filth tonight by Trump. Yes, he did. Like, yes, he by did. a long shot. There's no... Um, Explaining your way, explaining your way out of this. Um, I was waiting on Van Jones to start boo hooing again, like last time. Yeah. Um, as far as like the different things um, that they're trying to use, like they're they're going to be using like all like uh, a few people have heard you and heard people, other people say they're going to use all the Hail Mary passes. You know, Black Americans, of course, we gotta you know uh, be ten toes uh, down all the time. You know, standing on truth, standing on business, and keep pushing for uh, tangibles, and uh, not allow ourselves to be you know tricked or brainwashed with any word, any um, trick bag wording or anything like that. As far as our needs, because they're gonna be doing everything they can. All the shields. I'm already seeing the shields panicking. Like I seen Joy Reid panicking i seen even uh kumala uh uh, uh panicking earlier it's ridiculous yeah. but yeah that's all i'm gonna land my man i appreciate you brother yes sir uh, too. Get, um isan in here well, what's up my guys uh my name is ishan jordan i am a congress in the republican primary of florida's 14th district okay um i just saw the uh the debate it was hilarious biden got cooked so hard Re that guy got cooked like well done steak, like the chewy kind. You can't, you can't eat. You know, it's like useless steak that you gotta throw away because it got cooked too hard. Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> he got, bro. He got cooked so hard that CNN was making fun of him. I, I, I was looking at the betting sites, and he dropped fourteen points in the betting sites for his, you know, him, his, him able to win oh, wow. right after the, you know, the, the debate. So in the Repu funny thing is, oh, the Republicans right now they doing a, a victory lap already. I know they're probably doing victory laps already. Oh, yeah, bro, for sure. 
Yeah. For sure. But on the other hand, we shouldn't get too we shouldn't get too excited because we know that he's going to replace him. Yeah. You know, on the betting sites actually, uh, Gavin Newsom's up forty. Uh, Gavin Newsom's up seven points uh, to uh, predict and to predict it to win. I think he was like like seven. Yeah. Like, he was at like yeah. They're about to do so, a ten percent. I was at seven. So yeah, your boy. Look, they're about to pull Gavin Newsom out. out. They're about to put him out here and really polish him up and really, really um, do some PR work on him and really pump him up. So is your boy Trump ready for the Gavin Newsom thing? And you know, I don't think I don't think the Trump that we saw today was the, Trump, the badass Trump from the 26, 2016 you know run. You know he was good. He had a couple of good moments, like the golf moment, one of the funniest moments. Um, and then the one time when he's like, I don't know what he just said. <laughs> that was right. pretty funny too. But uh, okay, your phone your phone is your phone is breaking up, brother. I, I got to get uh, yeah. Your phone is your phone is real janky. Let's get my brother Black Alpha in the building. I'm good, Black Alpha. How are you, sir? Brother, I'm doing good. Watching this embarrassment of a debate tonight. Yeah. Um, sad. I was just watching Sky News over in the UK, and they all saying Biden need to go to a nursing home. <laughs> so, Man. Man. <laughs> did you see the look on his face, brother? Like, he didn't even look like he knew where he was at. Right, man. It's, it's a bad look. That was a bad look, brother. Man, I seen um. Right now, brother, Roland Martin's on his little show right now, and Roland's cussing out his whole staff right now because a lot oh. of people are saying, that, yeah, he mad. I mean, he beep beeping all over the place, brother. Mad as hell, and they're talking about Biden dropping out. Yeah, yeah, he's going to have to... They, Biden, they might have him out by Monday, man. They <laughs> they, they got to do something. They're scrambling right now. They're going to have Biden out probably by this Monday and have Gavin Newsom do the thing. Thank you so much, brother. Man, it's bad. Uh, yeah, I know Roland is probably cursing up a storm right now. But he, 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 y'all stupid fools. He, 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 he. Yeah, he's probably just going off. But yeah, man, listen, family, by Monday, they might have Biden up out of here. By Monday, they might have Gavin Newsom out here doing his thing. Yeah, because they this was horrible. This was they can't they, they can't bring Biden back out in public after this. For real, they can't bring Biden back out to do no more speeches and no more campaign um, runs after this fiasco. Y you understand? This is about to be very interesting. This is going to be very, very interesting. Let's get some more people in here. Let's get um that girl, Casey. Let's get that girl, Casey, in the building. That girl, Casey. All right. What's up, Casey? Um, I was just watching the debate earlier and everything and, you know, just wanted to come up and speak about it. But I don't know. I mean, everybody's saying it looks really bad for America, but I just think that America's been looking pretty bad anyway, considering the fact that we were owned by the Israel lobby and nobody wants to talk about it. So I think it's just the craziest thing. How do you feel about that? Well, no, the, uh, the optics of what we saw. See, the thing is, there's a lot of stuff that goes on behind the scenes. There's a lot of unhidden or, or hidden hands that's behind the scenes. But optics are very important. And the optics of us to the global community now with our sitting president fumbling and stumbling and stammering like that, that's a horrible look. Not a good look at all. And it I'm, makes us look, look vulnerable. Go ahead, Casey. My bad. Oh, but all this, I didn't mean to like um, cut you off. But he didn't look any different to me than before when everybody went and voted for him uh, last, you know, the last time in 2020. I mean, I, he was doing all of that, like walking slow, walking funny, the quote gaffes and everything else. I mean, me personally, I, I, he's a little worse, but I thought he looked he, pretty bad. When, you know, huh? he was a lot. It, it, it was bad. It, it was a lot worse. What he was doing tonight. Um, he was barely coherent. It, it was way worse. He's way worse than what he was um, the last debate, the last election. Way different. He's down bad. So, yeah, we just got to be very honest about it. And look, the Democrats, they know what it is. They can't even spin this no more. So, again, they're about to do some kind of Hail Mary. Look like they're about to get Gavin Newsom up 
And again, I wouldn't be surprised if they try to get Michelle Obama to be a damn vice president running mate. They're desperate right now. They got to do something big to, to cover up this fiasco. They got to bury this. You understand? And if I could just say one more thing. So, like, let me ask you, if, you, if they get Gavin Newsom, you think a bunch of black folk are going to go run off and vote now for Gavin Newsom because, like, this is something different? I mean, do we not see through what no, they're no. doing? Oh, no, no, no. But no, just to have somebody reputable, you know, because this is a bad look for the Democratic Party and just all of us. But just to have somebody reputable, somebody salvageable, because right now, if Biden tries to go up against Trump, Trump is, you know, that's going to be a landslide. If, you know, they go the distance to um, November, that's going to be a landslide. So they got to do something. They got to do something. And now, look, I'm, Gavin Newsom, even though he's talking about reparations and all that, he, he, they haven't cut those damn checks yet. So we're not really on the Gavin Newsom train either. But again, we're trying to see what they're going to do. So I mean, but the, the last, I, I promise, I swear to God, I promise this last one for real. But like, they're not, how could they cut them checks? But again, all we keep doing is like doing everything for Israel. Like, we're going to get ready to go to war for Israel pretty soon. And everything that's going on in the Middle East, like, are we paying attention to that? Like, because like, that's, that's, that's a huge problem. You know, the Israel lobby on our elected officials that don't they're, answer to us. For Israel didn't stop them from cutting a check for the Ukrainians. Them cutting a the check for Israel didn't stop them from cutting checks from them damn illegal immigrants coming over here and they're giving them debit cards and all types of tangible. So yeah, they can they can cut two checks. They can cut a check for Israel and a check for us. All right. Sad it doesn't work like that, but I mean they they, they better make it work like that if they want to get elected. So we, right. we know it's not gonna work like that. Like the, the Jewish hey. lobby takes over. That's what happens. I don't, I don't even the, the Jewish lobby and all of that. These people cut checks for everybody. They cut checks for everybody except us. So I ain't going for that. They can cut checks for us too. All right. Thank you so much, dear. I don't do all that. The Jewish lobby. Yeah, they cut. I don't deflect into the Jewish thing. That that's a major deflection. Them being with Jewish lobbyers and all of that, that don't stop them from cutting these checks and these debit cards for these damn other people. I don't want to hear that. When it comes to us getting something, all of a sudden, well, it's the Jews and uh, whatever. Dr. Roboto. Roboto. What's good, brother Tariq? Do, do you mind if I segue to local politics real quick? Yeah, go ahead, brother. Okay, are you familiar with, with the mayor of Rochester, New York? What's going on with her? Because if no. not, I just... Okay, so we had a mayor, lovely Warren, right? On African American woman, right? FBA. So she, her husband was like one of the kingpins of Rochester. So he gets arrested. She gets fired from mayor. Now she's running for city court judge, right? So I was just wondering, like, what, like not even what you think about that, but like, isn't that like ironic like how how is she running for city court when her husband just got arrested as being the kingpin of rochester she gets fired and now she's running for city court and and th the last part is she's running against uh jirasi jirasi his dad is a judge right supreme supreme court judge in rochester now he ended up lying saying that the biggest black union um endorsed him and it was a lie scrubbed it from the website and everything so she might actually win. So I just wanted to see what you thought about that, if you're not familiar with that. Not familiar with none of that, brother. So, yeah, if you talk, you're talking about a local thing that only y'all know locally. So, yeah, that doesn't – I'm completely unaware of any of that because I'm not in that area, brother. All right. Y'all right, kind of stick to the topic. That was, you know um, – let's get Kyle in here. Kyle? Mr. Tariq, great How pleasure. You? I'm fantastic. Thank you. What a wild day. Yes, and it I was. I wanted to say I actually saw Gavin Newsom today uh, in Atlanta, uh, heading on his way to the way to the debate. So he was there. He's you know right there in the wings. And you know one name I've I've been listening here for maybe I don't know twenty minutes, and I just wanted to get kind of your thoughts about you know there's another man in this race. His name's Kennedy. Some are calling him the Remy. Oh yeah, yeah, Mr. Kennedy. Mr. Kennedy is in the mix. Um, um. I don't know. I, I, I've been corresponding with his his staff. They've been reaching out to me. Um, he's kind of he'll talk about reparations and then kind of flip flop on it a little bit. That's why he hasn't really solidified a, a strong black base. He's been kind of flip floppy on the reparations thing. Um, Kennedy and their people, they wanted me to do something with them. They wanted me to do some event with them. And I'm like, yeah, I'm, yeah I was doing the rally for reparations. So, yeah. 
I'm, I'm not really trying to be out here doing photo ops if people ain't trying to break bread and cut checks for the family. So that's what I'm on right now. So right. I mean, I think before we get we, before we get to straight cutting checks, I think we need to talk about what kind of solutions we want to we want to create to create a strong America and strong communities and resilient resilient citizenry, right? Um, yeah, that's going to start with giving us the proper compensation of a debt that's owed as foundational black Americans. They got to get that straight. Um, we've been disenfranchised. We've been mistreated. Our resources have been maldistributed long enough. So it's time to make right on America's original sin. And this thing is going to be a train wreck until that is rectified. Right. Okay. I feel you. I feel. I feel you. And I and I and I don't think like you know as a as I'll just say as a community you're alone either. Like you know we're we're seeing across many different ethnicities like horrid treatment from the the system that has gotten us to where we are now. To where we're listening to two elder children arguing and bickering about who's got a better golf game. Uh, like tonight was tonight was sad, and I'd encourage everybody to check out the real debate.com, which was Bobby. They 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 clipped, he answered all the same questions that they asked, and uh, had five million views too. So it's it's he's he's on the stage, guys, and he's listening too. And and the, the, this is a grassroots community, and it's about action. So if you want to participate and be involved. And, and make the case and more than just making the case for just like straight, like how does the check cutting look? How does that work? Oh, what, no, it's what, what, is the, what, what is the path? Oh, no, no. It's very easy. We already got everything worked out. This is so easy. It's a piece of cake. We already got who the checks are going to go to, how you're going to determine who's eligible. Um, all of that is already worked out. We're going to do it the same way they do with some of the red Native American tribes. We're going to cut the checks, give land grants, um, possible tax-free status. We can throw some casinos in there, but we're going to start off with the checks first. Um, and we're going to do that for the foundational Black Americans. And you're going to show how you're eligible if you can trace your lineage back to the 1870 census. In fact, I'm going to get a team of people to start doing data entry so that we can already have all of the freedmen listed and all of the colored people and the Negroes that were listed on that census form. We'll already have that in the database so it'll we can just streamline it so the checks can come a little faster. So yes, it's going to be done and we're going to make it happen. And it should happen because this country is looking a mess right now. We got to do right by foundational black Americans so that these politicians don't have to be out here looking crazy so that we can boost this economy. We're going to save this country as foundational black Americans. Once we get our checks that's owed to us, we're going to stimulate this economy. People are going to get back out here and, and enjoy some of the fruits of our economy that we stimulate. We're going to um, encourage and uphold businesses. We are so resilient as foundational Black Americans. We are deprived of resources and we still create opportunities. Just imagine if we get the proper compensation, all of the opportunities that we're going to create for the whole country. We are going to make, as foundational Black Americans, we will make America great again after we get the reparations checks. Right? I think I mean I I absolutely agree and I think you can you can do with the reparations checks. I think you guys can do without the reparations checks as well. No, we can't make it great without them checks. We got to get the checks before got, we make it. Okay, okay. We going okay. we going to let this thing we'll let we'll let them crash and burn like we letting them do tonight. We'll let nah, them I mean that's yeah. like yeah, but like it's it's been it's been a full-fledged assault from like so many sides and it, it goes back a long long time, but I mean the current the current attack on <laughs> on the entire populace is relentless and it and it you know there there's so much strength and resilience and i feel everything you're saying you have all the power within and mm -hmm. let let and you, like you can do it no matter what you know sometimes you get lemons you got to make lemonade right yeah, well, it's time for us to have a lemon store. We don't want to make lemonade no more. We need a lemon store. We got the lemons. We need to get... Heck, heck uh, we, yeah. Right. Heck, yeah. We need the lemon Man. store. So we need to get what's owed to us as foundation for Black Americans. That needs to be rectified. But thank you so much. Yes. Thank you very much. We don't have to do the right thing, man. It's looking bad. When, if they give reparations and say, hey, look, we, we are making right the original sin that we committed. We're going to do right by these foundational Black right. Americans. 
And then in turn, we're going to support these politicians and we're going to make the society and the economy mm -hmm. robust. Well, like, who, who, who's talking over me? Who is this? Hello? Okay, don't. Hey, hey. Is this Al Qaeda? Hey, calm down now. This Al Qaeda is already trying to turn up. Hey, look, don't don't you start. They already see Joe Biden looking weak, so they're already trying to plan something. Is this Al Qaeda? Okay, don't you start. All right. All right, we don't want y'all to, to start packing bombs on or nothing like that. Let me get you out of here. Okay, they already come. How many, how many? They already getting started. Okay, see, this is what I'm talking about. We can't have the president out here looking weak and crazy. We got Al Qaeda calling up right now, um, trying to book a flight, a one way flight over here. All right, so we got to watch out. All right, they already doing the call. So this is why we can't have our. Um, society looking crazy like this, looking crazy right now. It's time to do the right thing. Ladies and gentlemen, you got to do right by foundational black Americans. We look insane right now. Y'all raise your hand if you're ready to get on. How many people we got in here? We got almost 1,500 people in the middle of the night. We are in here heavy. Let's get American Patriot in the building. And then we'll get, um, who else? The American Patriot in the building. American Patriot in the building. All right. Oh, can you hear me? Can you hear me? I can hear you. What's going on, family? Hey, what's up, brother? Uh, what's on So I just like to know, I'm, I'm a full-fledged Trump supporter, foundational okay. black American. Okay. Um, but my strategy with supporting Trump is punishing the Democrats. See, okay. I feel like if we start swaying to the Republican Party, punish the Democrats, then, you know, years from now, future elections, uh, they will come to the table with reparations. I think we have to, like, sit the Democrats down and spank them a few election cycles. And then also, too, I do like Trump's policies as far as uh, closing the border, focusing on domestic issues. Um, that benefits us, good trade deals. Okay. And I think, uh, you know, that's why I support Trump. And my whole strategy is to just punish the Democrats for eight years. And I got a feeling the rest of them will start coming back and saying, hey, let's get this reparations to us because we want their vote back. But as long as we keep voting for them, they're not going to give us reparations. Clyburn and them boys, they're not going to do it. Right. So, well, I'm not supporting them. Yeah, all of this, just support them, and then hopefully we'll get a reparation check. No. And that's why I'm not really supporting, you know, Trump either, because Trump has not, you know, he ain't cut no check either, and he's doing the, yeah, I, I made the, the economy good for black people. I gave to HBCUs. That's not enough. A lot of white people go to HBCUs, and Hispanics go to HBCUs. And basically, you know, that's like, you know, you're giving money to a white bank to a certain degree, you know. You cut the checks to us directly. All right. Coriza. Corissa. Corissa. Hi. Hi. I'm fine. I'm What's from Atlanta. Your, your little old yes. country. Where are you from, by the way? Country is here. From. I'm from Atlanta. I'm from Atlanta, Georgia. There you go. How are you doing, dear? I'm I'm good. <laughs> I'm one of those Grady babies. Yo I'm Lord. <laughs> I can hear it. Country is damn hell. <laughs> What's on your mind? <laughs> but yes, I um I looked at the debate, me and my husband or whatever, and yeah, Biden looked it crazy. He was standing with his eyes open, mouth all wide open. I was hoping he had some water Ugh. because it looked like his mouth was dry. Yeah. He was, but this time he was saying that he wasn't gonna vote for neither of them because I guess Biden looked too crazy for him. Yeah. Yeah. And at the time, I knew my mom, my grandmother, she voted for Obama that first time. Yeah. And then when he passed that stuff for the gay stuff, he was like, um, she was like that she wasn't going to vote for him because she really disliked when he did did that. Yeah. 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 And, I, and again, I was a I was an Obama voter and Obama let us down so bad. So I'm cool. Obama soured me on the Democrats altogether. All uh, right, let's get on. Um, let's get another sister in here. Let's get um Huckleberry. Let's get Huckleberry in the building. 
All right, Huckleberry in the building. What's up, Huckleberry? How are you? What's up, Tariq? What's up, family? Listen, y'all, are you not entertained? Uh Are you not entertained? When I tell you I was cracking up, Trump was eating him up. Like, Trump is ignorant anyway. He's just super entertaining to me. Yeah. His whole pregnancy, you know, was um, not pregnancy. His whole presidency yeah. was hilarious um, because I just saw two demons on the screen. But whatever, it was it, super funny. Yeah, but um, Biden, oh my God! I don't know if anybody ever follows that redacted channel. They say a lot of little slick stuff, but <clears throat> they drop a lot of stuff. And I, I think about two or three weeks ago. I saw that they were saying that a lot of Democratic insiders, that they wasn't revealing their name, but were saying that they had already had plans to swap him out and they thought it would be swap. He would be swapped out for Gavin Newsom. So I'm not really surprised, but I just kind of watched to see how it would happen. And, and it didn't disappoint. It was hella entertaining. I was yeah. cracking up at both of them. Trump's between Trump's faces and hair and Biden's complete like he looks like a dementia patient. It's really sad, but yeah. that's That's what they do. But I did want to say this, and I want to get your opinion on this. I feel like political influence is only checked with cultural influence because laws change all the time. People get swapped in and out, voted in, voted out, whatever. It's not hard to change a law, but it's super hard to change a culture. And we are the culture. Yes. Seriously. And and now we're I'm, I, I was thinking about this deeply on the, the other day and I was like, there's a reason why they keep trying to denigrate our culture and then give the positive parts of our culture away to other people. And it's a reason why all these tethers, be them melanated people or other or otherwise keep trying to ingratiate themselves and, and, and take part in our culture or take. Um, credit for our culture and it's because we're the only people that's not invisible everybody else has been mentally conquered and subjugated and we haven't and we have the hearts and minds of the suspected white supremacist children and i wish our artists and the people in the public eye that really you know are the face of our culture globally i wish they project our message of reparations because if we make it cool we could have a children speaking in, uh, up for reparations for us because yes. we copy everything we do yes but indeed. That's all i wanted to say y'all good night i i really enjoyed this and i'm loving this space tonight thank you beloved and she brought up some good points um the dominant society their children look at what we do they look at the black grassroots they look at the hip-hop community they, they look at that that's why it's very important for the, the white corporate structure to put out certain images to dem- denigrate our image. You understand? It's very important. And it's also very important for them to try to discredit some of us on the grassroots who influence the community in a positive way. Because I want y'all to understand, do y'all know a lot of white kids listen to me? They've always listened to me. A lot of white young folks listen to me. They used to buy my books all the time. When I did the Art of Magnet and all, it was white people who started to buy my books too. A lot of black people bought them. But then my books started crossing over. White people wanted to read that. And then they started emulating that. That's where the whole pickup artist community came. That that all came from my books. All those dudes were studying my books. And this is why when I put out my books, some of y'all remember the the Art of Mac and the Mac Within, they would have me on MTV and all of that. And the, the ratings would go through the roof with these shows because the white kids would like that. They like, you know, having the, the, the concept of people having game and just somebody being, you know, just hip and up on game and up on certain issues and the street smart thing. They kind of try to live vicariously through that. That's why they are in these spaces all the time. Y'all notice Look, we got 1,500 people in here. A lot of white kids up in here, white, white young people. They're, that's why they're always calling up. Sometimes they'll be trolling, but they be trying to soak in game too. Blue collar, hop in, guy. Hey, what's going on, uh, uh, Mr. Nishi? How you doing? I'm good, Blue. Um, what, what state you in, bro? <clears throat> uh, New Jersey, New Jersey. Shout out to Jersey. So you're a, you're a patriot, son. You're, you're a Trump supporter, right? 
Yes, sir. Yes, sir. How did you feel about this debate? Uh, you know, I kind of felt bad for Biden. I really did. You know, I mean, I know everybody likes to, you know, bash on the guy. I mean, I bash on him, too, but I kind of felt yeah. bad for him. It's like seeing your grandfather or your friend's grandfather is, you know, struggling. You, know? you did feel sorry. I did kind of feel a little pity for him. I will admit that. I did feel a little pinch of pity for him. It was looking that bad. It's yeah, it, 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 like just like the way he slurred and everything. It wasn't a good look. And I think they're going to remove him eventually. And all that talk about Michelle Obama, I don't see that happening. They'll probably throw yeah. in Gavin Newsom or one of the, you know, yes. somebody who, has a who, sacrificial who, lamb. Right. Who do you think would be Gavin's running mate? Who would be the VP if they had Gavin out? Because I think it's almost inevitable they're going to bring Gavin out. Who do you think would be his VP choice? Well, definitely won't be Kamala because uh, I think she's been a political liability for the Democrats. Uh, maybe like a Gretchen Whitmer or he's going to probably want a woman of color like that. Uh, that one chick. Uh, who, um, what? She, she was actually a better candidate than uh, Kamala, but she turned down the job. Uh, what's her name? Was AOC? Uh, no, 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 definitely not. Um, Keisha Lance Bottoms of uh, Atlanta. She was oh. she was good. And, but she turned down the job. She didn't. She she had enough. You know, I, I don't even think she's in politics anymore. Yeah, that that, that, I, I, that would be interesting. Yeah, yeah, that would kind of be interesting. All right, but thank you so much, Blue. I appreciate you. Yeah, I don't know Keisha Lance Bottom. I don't know. I don't know. All right, let's get um, let's get my brother Maverick in. It's my partner. It's my brother Maverick from the Maverick Approach. What's up, brother Maverick? What up, brother? How you going? How you doing? Good, man. How's the family doing? Good, man. Good. Everybody's good, man. Yes, so, indeed. yeah. Man, what do you think about this train wreck we saw tonight? Oh, man. This whole thing, it was one big setup. And, yeah, I, I, I almost felt bad for Biden, but then I remembered the Biden crime bill and all that yeah. shit he said about us being, you know, pretty much animals when kids are being mixed in with, you know— um, you know, white kids and whatnot. Yeah. Everybody has to do their research. Just look at what Biden has said about black people and everything he's done up until this point. And that kind of, you know, refreshed my memory. Like, ah, uh, you know what? I don't feel bad for you. Right. And you know what? Trump was spanking his ass with that. Trump was like, hey, Biden, you were the one calling black people super predators. That was you. Yeah. I couldn't say nothing. Yeah. understand? So, yeah, he was spanking him on that. Yeah. And, and the thing is that it's the lesser of two evils. Right. Because even Trump said some stuff to where he was like, you know, uh, you know, the Hispanics or, or the immigrants are coming in and they're taking black jobs. Like, what is a, a, a black job? Like, what does right. that mean? Right. So all these different things like. But again, I look at results and you got to look at the four years with Trump. You look at the four years with Biden. Um, it's just. For one, it's, it's completely out of hand right now. And these last four years or last three and a half years under Biden is way like this. This country is really in trouble. But all in all, this is a setup. And yeah. make, make no mistake, mistake about it. This is a setup to where the, the DNC wanted to prop him up, Biden, to show how bad it is, remove him and then get a stronger opponent to go up against Trump because right now nobody's officially representing the, the Democrats and the Republicans. So there's enough time to do it. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. So yeah, I think Gavin Newsom, that's inevitable. Um, who do you think would be Gavin's running mate? Um, I don't even know, to be honest, it, it, it's, it's a coin toss, man. But and if you look into Gavin Newsom's history and who his family is, I mean, he's the nephew of Nancy Pelosi. So, you know, it, it could be, you know, him. I, I really think, you know, it's going to be somebody of that caliber. And, you know, he could, he could be the only person that's going to really go up against Trump at this point. Um, Michelle, Michelle Obama would be a good choice, but she said she's already not running. And um, I don't think they're going to play that card. But. They're going to need somebody strong enough to go up against Trump because it's it's inevitable at this yeah. point that Trump's going to win. Yes, indeed. My man, thank you so much, Brother Maverick. Thank For you sure. so much. Let's get, um, let me see. Let's get Bob Dope in the building. Yo, yo, what's up, Tarina? How you doing, brother? I'm good, brother. Bob Dope, what's on your mind, sir? 
Yo, man, I, I haven't had a chance to even watch the debate yet because I was working, but I'm just tuning into the space, man, and hearing everything that what everybody's saying, man, and it's hilarious that uh that that Trump cooked Biden. I kind of knew that that's how it was going to go. Uh just just cuz um you know Trump's actually like he's actually like a funny guy. So I just knew he was going to, you know, cook Biden on um you know in a debate. <clears throat> yeah, man, it was it was bad. It was very bad, man, to see uh, Biden get whooped like that, you mm -hmm. know. But mm -hmm. it is what is, man, you know, the Biden has done some slick stuff to the black constituency, man. Yeah, you know, they are not going to try to spin um, the whole Biden thing. Let's get um. Speaking of Democratic Shield tethers, we got Yasuki. Yasuki, hop on. This is a a tether. But go ahead, Yasuki. No, this is this is Devon. You know, you know, this is Devon. But this, this is yeah, Devon. Right. Devon, De Devon, whatever you name. Listen, listen. Okay, I want I want to talk to you about two things. First, I'm gonna talk to you about the Biden and the, but then I'm gonna talk to you about the one other thing about the UFBA. Okay. Okay. What about us FBA? What about that? No, I, I, okay. I have a, a couple of things about this, uh, but uh, first of okay, all, go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Because it okay, takes you forever. I'll, I'll, I'll tell you about Biden. Okay. Uh, why, why do you? Why do you? The, the reason you you don't support the uh, Biden and you, you you don't support Trump, you say you say uh, that he bring the illegal immigrants in. Uh, you know you know, and you are afraid that uh, he will take your job. This you sound you sound like a white supremacist. That, that's what you sound like. So you uh, because you you want to deny you want to deny and you call you call Obama. Yasuki, I don't drive Uber. You're not gonna. I don't have an Uber job for you to take. So that no, nobody's afraid of that. I don't drive for Postmates. So that's I'm not afraid of that. But go ahead. Okay, this is why you call Obama a tether because he was the first uh, black president and he was not a FBA because right. you are jealous and he was ineffective. Okay, okay, you are jealous. Uh, okay, well, now I want to jealous of a, a tether. I'm jealous of an ineffective tether of the of the success of the success of an African man. What he, he came to your Obama? His, uh, Obama's persona non grata. Obama's name is mud out here. That's why they don't even parade him around. Obama. No, Obama failed. Big. Obama failed with black foundational black Americans. They can't even bring him out no more. So go ahead. You you think that the uh, FBA are all of uh, black? Sir, black listen, people. Sir, listen you, you are a minority in black. Listen, um, um, Doogie, sir, I can bring out more people than Obama right now, sir. Do you know that? More people will come out to see me than Obama. More. We we had a rally in D.C. that drew more people than Obama can draw. But go ahead. Turn your mic on. I am muted. Listen, you say so. You think you can? If if Obama go for president today. He will he will become president again, and you 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 think you can do that? Sir, you sir, stop it. Listen, okay. I want to talk to you about uh, the other. You just saying stuff now. Okay, don't don't just no, get I want into to talk to you about. You want to talk to me about what? To don't me. just be saying okay. stuff to be. You just saying stuff now. I'm no, not I don't saying, want. Yeah, I'm saying what you were. You just saying oh. stuff. But go okay, ahead. Okay, listen, listen, listen. I will, I will talk to you. Why why do you when you talk to the white supremacists the other day? Why do you use African history when you talk to them? Why do, why do you use African history if you don't claim Africa? Give me a give me an example of what you're talking about. When you say about the Egypt and the, the pyramids and all all of this, I didn't time, say I, I, don't, I don't know man. the other day. When did I? I didn't say nothing about no pyramids the other day. What are you talking about? Every time every time you bring an example of a from history, uh, Mansa Musa for another example. You, when you when you say all all the others all these things you you bring African history no uh, I you didn't. don't bring uh, FBA well, history no. okay you're a damn liar you're you're okay, a pathological liar I have heard when I, I was debating the white supremacists the other day I didn't talk about, I didn't say anything about African history when I was debating the white supremacists for the last few months I always bring up foundational Black American history so what are you talking about okay I will give you another fact. 
uh, when you say that Africans do not have a, the control in, the, in our country. Okay, you're not just gonna, listen, what you're not going to do is just keep sitting up here lying and then... No, 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 listen. listen you just listen. keep lying. God damn, you tethers just lie all the time. Will you tell us just stop lying all the time? You're just sitting here lying back to back, dude. Y'all like I to want to ask you a question, Tariq. It's okay. This is why we don't really tr like y'all in the mix. You just you don't be saying nothing. You're just sitting here lying back to back. Because that's what y'all do back home. Y'all sit there practicing your lies, and that's why I don't nobody have anything. And then y'all have to flee, and then you want to come over here lying. You're saying stuff. And then when you get debunked, then you change the subject. Oh, anyway, what did what did about black on black crime, nigga? Okay, you're just saying stuff. Don't nobody want to hear musty tether lies. All right. Let's get Amar Kadish. <clears throat> Amar Kadish in the building. Hey, how's it going? Amar Kadesh here. Uh Hebrew name. Kevin Faye is my regular name. But yeah, yes. uh, what I wanted to speak on is, you know, the politics in the sense of Republican and Democrat, they've made us a monolith of perpetual victimhood, knowing damn well what we've done in this country and lifting ourselves up by ourselves. And, you know, we're out here trying to get what is owed and we're seeing that they're not trying to do it. You know what I mean? So it's going to come to a point where we're going to have to eventually just take it. But one thing I was uh, also wanting to speak on is that there is a fact that within our community, we have a very high spending power. And when it comes to our sisters, they actually uh, spend more money than the military does on weapons. So what we can do with that is we could uh, come co together collectively. And in each black city, we could build uh, what we need, like hair salons, because that's where the most of the money goes to. And, you know, we be buying them from these Asians. If we build them for us, our, our sisters, they can go there. That money can go into them businesses. That them, that money can then go back into said communities. And that trillions and trillions of dollars that we giving out to these Asians can stay in our community. And that can be one of many possible ways where we can continue to build ourselves up off of the money that we just naturally give out to everybody. Yes, indeed. Thank you so much. Now, what we also got to remember, family, when we get these businesses, because we say, okay, let's get some businesses. Let's get businesses. Okay, what we got to do, we got to be in these positions locally because people say, well, you don't be voting. No, no, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm all about voting locally. I always vote locally because that directly affects you. I'm all about voting locally. We got to get in those positions. We got to run for office and then run for these positions and make sure that we paper up the politicians so that when they get in office, they're going to do our bidding. We got to make sure they're going to do the right thing locally first. Because what happens is black people, we get our businesses and they get sabotaged on an administrative level, especially in places in California. They get us out here big time because what happens behind the scenes um, at the, the business permit office and all of these places, you got a bunch of non-black people working there. You dig? You got a bunch of these non-black people on the city council, and they sit here plotting against us. We saw how those white Hispanics were plotting against the black community out here in L.A. when that secret recording came out. And um, black businesses, I was driving down the street earlier today. I saw a bunch of taco stands all over the place. And all of those people who got these little taco stands, I know for a fact, all of their licenses and permits, you know, it ain't all up to par. But all of the black people who used to have their barbecue stands all on Crenshaw, they didn't got rid of them. They play the permit game with them. They give them a bunch of red tape so they can't get their little seller's permits. So they play these little behind the scenes games that sabotage us. So we got to be on top of that family. Out here in LA, there's a, um, a black owned gun store, Redstone Firearms. They're going to have to move guys. They're going to have to move out of the state because they're playing that little administrative game with them. Throwing these extra permits on them. They got to pay certain fines and um, for certain documents and go through all of this red tape. They've been running them through the ringer. That's like the only, that's one of the few black owned gun stores in the country. And they were doing great business out here. Phenomenal business. We sent thousands of people to them. We've been promoting them for years and I've done so much good business with them. I mean, you go there, it's packed all the time. They saw a black gun store business that successful so they just start throwing red tape at them 
They do the same thing with us at the Hidden History Museum. We had all of our, that's why we, we have to slow down on so many events that we have. <clears throat> because we opened this museum with grassroots funding, and then it's packed every week. We got it popping. So then they start throwing these permit and fines and all of this paperwork at us, and we got to go through a bunch of red tape that we're still going through. They threw a bunch of red tape at us, and we got to do a whole bunch of stuff. And, and then on top of that, they started sending damn undercover ops and agents and informants and, and all types of weird stuff. So, yeah, we, we get that type of stuff. So we, we got to understand um, how racism works and why we don't have these things. It's not that we don't have the mindset to go build it. The stuff that we build, it gets sabotaged, and we have to get in front of the sabotaging. We got to get in front of that. You understand? That's very important. Let's get FBA goddess in the building. FBA goddess in the building. All right. FBA goddess, let me hear you, beloved. <clears throat> Excuse me. We at sis. FBA goddess, hop on, dear. Okay. All right. While well, waiting on her, because I don't want the game to be slowed down. Let's get um let's get Isaiah. Let's get Isaiah in the building, and then we'll get um, Jamu. Isaiah or Jamu? All right. Hello. What's up, Isaiah? How are you, um, uh, Mr. Nasheed? How you doing? I'm good, sir. What's on your mind? Um, I want to speak about the debate. Um, now, me personally, I wasn't expecting a five-star performance from Joe Biden in this debate, but I really expected much more than that. I, I, that was a complete disaster. Yes, it was. And, and another thing I get tired from a lot of from a lot of these Democrats is I get so sick and tired of them every time when there's election coming up, they always have to play the democracy card. Every time um, they have an election, they have to tell black people and people in general that vote for us to save democracy. Right. What, what type of democracy? Your version of democracy it, it, it's, it's basically just one sided. It's ba basically just hypocrisy. So that's one thing I wish they would quit doing. Stop right. it, Stop trying to guilt trip us with the whole democracy line. Right. And yeah, they, they do the boogeyman tactic. Oh, we better vote to keep Trump out. Man, don't be worrying about what Biden ain't giving us. I don't need nothing no how. I don't want nothing. I'm just glad to be here. Hell no. When I first did this broadcast tonight, we had one of these old Democratic dudes talking about, I, do, I don't want nothing. The black community, I don't need nothing. What, what do black people want? Black people want something? I ain't heard nothing like that. Just plain, just oblivious for nothing. I said, brother, you don't know that black people want something. We want something tangible. What? 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 What is that? What do black people want? Tangible. What is that? I black eyes don't want nothing. That Bojangles ass stuff is out, man. That's out the door. They got to come with it. That's why they're. Hey, I don't mind the Democrats up here looking crazy right now. Good. Good. You should have been doing right by foundational black Americans. Now y'all out here looking stupid. If you were doing right by us, you wouldn't be out here so down bad. You think? And you won't be able to spin this nonsense. You're not going to be able to spin it. Jamu, hop on, sir. Uh, peace to the family. Peace, big brother. Uh, I just man, wanted I to... Uh... I just, I just, can you hear me? Yes, sir, I can hear you. Okay, I just wanted to say I was listening to uh, Judge John on a podcast, and he said that uh, Obama was related to the Bushes, and I Googled it, and Obama's the Bushes' 10th cousin. So they put a phone on us with the whole Obama thing. Y'all can Google that. And uh, I just want to thank you for everything. Peace, I'm out. Thank you so much. All right.
brother just wanted to give us a random tidbit. All right, that's cool. All right. Steve, hop on. And FBA God, is you good now? I was trying to get you on, dear. Steve, hop on, man. All right, Steve. All right, while we're waiting on Steve, let's get inner band. Inner band. Let's get inner band in the house. All right, and band. All right, while waiting on inner band, we can get Mr. Ali. Mr. Ali. Oh, sorry. Can you hear me? Yes, sir. I can hear you. Oh, yeah. I just want to say a few things. And yeah, first of all, like you said, and when it comes to like just the image, it looks bad because as a sitting president, you know, it looks bad when you can't even talk. You look bad. And they kept putting the camera on him even when Trump was talking. So, yeah, like he looked he kept looking at the corner. He, he didn't know what he was doing, where he was at. And I feel like this was him at his best because he probably they probably prepared him for weeks. Yeah. To, to this point. So I can't even imagine what his day to day is like. And like you were saying, imagine like the rest of the world, how they're seeing him, the people that are sending all these people through the border, Al Qaeda and whatever, like how they're seeing America and having a weak president plus a weak vice president, because the vice president is not even seen. She's not even present. Like she's right. unknown. She doesn't do anything. So because usually if the president is weak, sometimes the vice president is strong. Like Dick Cheney was a powerful vice president. Yes, he was. Yeah. And Richard Nixon was powerful. So having a weak pres uh, uh, president and a weak vice president makes America look bad and weak. Yeah. And Trump was sharp on point. Like even if people are not even looking at who was right, who was, who had the facts, they're just looking at who was speaking better, who was sharp, who had like, who's, just talking better and Trump won on that point. Yes, That's he did. What, what I wanted to say. And the second thing is, I don't know if any of them like did anything for black people or would do anything for black people. But even with that, I would say Trump probably has a better chance of winning the black folk by just the way he talks about America first by saying, why are we funding Ukraine? He criticizes all these things that, that Biden does. Why are we funding Ukraine? Why are we letting China win? on tariffs, why are we allowing all these people to come in and get free stuff before black Americans? Why are we allowing these people to get free housing and free health care? Yeah. Why are we allowing them to get social security? Like Biden does not even talk about these things. So I could I could just see Trump in the future maybe even saying, why don't we help black Americans? I'll do a trillion dollar economic package for black Americans. And that could be the end of the democratic oh, yeah. like, system for Ever and they'll never get any black votes forever after that. It's real so, talk, it's real just imagine talk. Imagine that one statement like that. Yes, yeah, let, me, let me land your plane on that. And that's a that's a very good point, family. Listen, listen to the Trump administration. Trump is already winning now. If Trump wants to be locked down in history for real, for real, and also get that felony stain off of him, man. The smartest thing Trump could do is say, hey, let me put together a package, an economic package, specifically for foundational black Americans. Let me do something, let me word it specifically for them. Let me get something going on, an economic package just for foundational black Americans. That would crush the Democratic Party for the next 40 years. You understand what I'm saying? Not only that, that would he would be the next LBJ. He would have the legacy of Lyndon B. Johnson. He would go down in history. His name would shine through because we would pop our collar to him. And whoever we pop our collar to, you can't deny him. You see? We popped our collar to Abraham Lincoln. Abraham Lincoln wasn't shit. Abraham Lincoln was a white supremacist too. But the thing is, those black maroons fought in the Civil War. That helped win the Civil War. Abraham Lincoln thanked them. And Abraham Lincoln said, okay, let me give y'all your freedom. Because that was the can the, the thing that that was the carrot that they were dangling. Because uh, the North, they were losing the Civil War. And you had black men and you had some freed black men and enslaved black men saying, hey, man, you know, we can help you win, but, you know, we'll have to get a little piece of that freedom. We ain't going to fight for, 
we ain't going to fight to get put back in slavery. If you want to beat these crackers, you know, throw a little freedom our way. Yeah. You see? But if Trump wants to bury the Democrats, man, if Trump says, Trump comes out tomorrow or Monday and says, hey, you know what? I, I got an economic package specifically for foundational black Americans. We're not going to do the minority thing. We're not going to do the people of color. We're not going to do the, the disenfranchised people. Let me make this economic package specifically for foundational black Americans. Man, Trump would be all up in the building. He would get massive support. Massive. And the Democrats would be done. The only thing is you got to know how to balance that with Trump's white supremacist base. You see, he has to come up with a plan that wouldn't alienate his hardcore white supremacist base. Talk to them, white supremacists. Talk to them. Yeah. Let them know what's happening. Let's get Bussy for Life. That's a hell of a name, man. Bussy for Life. What's going on? You want to turn your microphone on or you just wanted to come up here and show us what your name was? All right. Let's get be easy. His bussy for life is busy with T.S. Giselle over there. All right, be easy. What's up going on? Be easy. Be easy. Turn your microphone on, sir. I cannot hear you. All right. You ain't saying nothing. All right, let's get um FBA God is back in the building. Where you at? Hold on. Wait, what am I doing here? All right, FBA God is hop on. <clears throat> people are trying to add people and they ain't saying nothing. Who did you call to? Who is that? Bussy for life. Okay, Bussy for life is trying to get on and. He's going through some things. I think he's trying to make a couple of dollars real quick before he gets on. Um, just call back later, man. Get the money and don't let the money get you. All right? Because we know with that name what you got to do for some money. Let me get him out of here. Let him make those $30. <laughs> and wash yourself when you're done. Let's get uh, FBA Goddess. You good, dear? Yeah, your ass is crazy. I believe this um, app is acting up. But anyway, um, did you know that E-40 and um, old Fat Joe is coming to Raleigh tomorrow with the convalescent van um, at, yeah. at noon? Um, they say that they're trying to garner the black vote using these washed up people. Um, I guess, you know, they're using Joe, so they um, sleepy Joe, so they might as well use him. But um, I'm going to try to see if I can get anywhere near it. Of course, you know, they won't let us, but I'm going to try to see if what I can get. But I just want to let you all know that part. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Thank you so much. Dear. Yeah, yeah. I heard about that. They got E-40 and Fat Joe. They have been. They love parading around Fat Joe, boy. Be easy. You good? All right, be easy. I got to get you out of here because you're not saying nothing. So we're going to get our sister Jessica, Jessica Allen in the building. Jessica? Hello, Jessica. Um, Jessica, Jessica, Jessica. All right. All right. Jessica ain't saying nothing. Jessica just wanted somebody to see, to see her new weave. She put her weave in her profile, and she just wants somebody to see she got her weave done. Sometimes people just do stuff to be seen. All right. Let me get a couple more people in here because I'm not going to be on here too, too long. Um, Y'all raise your hand if you're ready to speak. Let me try it that way. If you're ready to speak, raise your hand. If you are requested and you're ready to speak, raise your hand. Let's get L. Janelle in here. Let's get L. Janelle in the building. Or oh, Ellie Janelle. What's hey, up, Ellie? it's Elle Janelle. How you doing? I'm good, Elle. How are you, dear? Nothing. Just got finished laughing at this crazy debate. Um, and I was also laughing at that guy saying Keisha Lance Bottom should go with Gavin Newsom. Could you imagine what the signs would say? Lord. <laughs> that is not 
Not Man. gonna work, buddy, from a marketing standpoint. But mm -hmm. I was in another room earlier and we were kind of, um, you know, talking about the policies because I, I noticed how important marketing is in this because people not really listening to Trump or Biden. They just saying Trump look good. Biden look like he about to fall over, which he was. Yeah. Yes. But there was one there was one part that I was like, this bothered me a lot about Trump. And I wanted to know what you thought about it when he started talking about the abortion. And it's not so much the abortion itself, but how he was kind of congratulating himself for making a more conservative Supreme Court because now things will go back to states' rights more so, right? Mm -hmm. And so it's like, I like states' rights in some aspects, but I don't know that I would feel comfortable making everything states' rights. So I, I'm wondering, I want to ask you, do you think it's important to keep some things federal, you know, like abortion or like uh, Brown versus Board of Education or interracial marriage or things like that? Or do you think it would be kind of better to be like, well, if they want to have segregated schools in Mississippi, let them do that. It's states' rights. Yeah, that's that's kind of a tricky thing. And again, the um, yeah, everything will will rise back up to the Supreme Court anyway. So there's only so much they're going to go or so far they're going to go with the whole states' rights thing. And I know a lot of that pertains to the whole Roe versus Wade, the abortion situation. So that's kind of a tricky thing. But my, my thing is with us, we don't get no damn federal protections any damn way. You understand? So we're just, it's like, we're already stuck here with the shit. So look, just give us some money. Give us a check because y'all put these laws that they don't enforce. So just give us a check. Give us some paper. Give us something tangible because y'all not enforcing nothing from the state or the federal. You understand? So let's get this money going so that we can start putting our own people in the mix. All right. Let me get one more call. Can I get one more? So, Because we do have a lot of people in here. And by the way, family, the, the movie that we have called Microphone Check, we got a phenomenal hip-hop film that's killing the game. It's going to be back in theaters around the country the week of July 19th. We're going to have the pre-sale tickets on the microphonecheck.com website um, by next week. But we need everybody to go hit that theater in your town. We're going to have it in um, D.C., L.A., Oakland, Chicago. I want to say St. Louis, um, New York, uh, Philadelphia, and some other cities. It's going to be... Um, week-long run, so you'll be able to see it every day for the week. We need everybody to support that film. Take your friends, your buddies, if you have uh, schools or community groups, take them to go see this movie. It's a very important grassroots movie, and this is big for the culture, ladies and gentlemen. All right. Should we get one more? Shall we get one more? Raise your hand if we should get this one more call. Let me let let me see who's in here. Um, let me see. Raise your hand, guys. I want to get one more good call before I go. All right. I want to get some new people in here that we haven't had. I like new people. Um, Big Fox, ain't I have that? Thought I had you in here before. Uh, let me see. Uh, come on, raise your hand, guys. Let me see who we got. Uh, Babasala, I've had you in here several times. All right, let's get, um, let me see. Now people are bouncing all around. And by the way, go to rootworkstyle.com to get that rootwork deodorant, ladies and gentlemen. Get that rootwork deodorant at rootworkstyle.com. Very good deodorant. And by the way, the BET Awards is happening this weekend. I might go to the BET Awards. BET Awards happening this weekend. Shout out to that. I might have to follow through. You know, I'm trying to be around the black folks this weekend. I'm trying to be around the community. I want to see what's popping. Um, plus, I need to get out here promoting the movie. Let's get um, CS. 
What's your name, brother? C S C Swap. Let's get C Swap in the building. C Swap in the building. What's happening? Hey, what's up, man? I've been enjoying the chat. I have a question for you. Yes. I, I um so I was actually listening to an interview before the debate. I can't remember who it was with, but it was a black Republican. And I really enjoyed a lot of what he was saying. But he was asked about, you know, how black voters felt about like the Trump mugshot. And uh he he didn't really he didn't really want to say the fact that that you know black people were treated unfairly in the justice system. Uh, so I guess I was just wondering why you feel that is. Why well, I feel what is you, you haven't really explained anything. You I don't know what you said. What's the question? So I felt like there was an opportunity there to say that there was like some camaraderie because, you know, he was unjustly, you know, charged with all these felonies, right? And so I felt like he kind of missed an opportunity to point out the fact that uh, that black folks were, you know, also treated unfairly in the justice system. And that- So do you think, so do you think that black people felt a camaraderie because Trump had a, a mugshot? I don't know. That's the question I'm asking you is, do, do you think that was an opportunity, a missed opportunity to share with the American people that, that um, you know, that the justice system doesn't, doesn't treat everybody the same? Everybody knows that we, we get unfairly targeted by the, the entire system. Now, let me, now you, where are you from? Uh, I'm from Denver originally. Okay, where's your family from? Uh, my family is from all over, really. What part of Europe are they from? Uh, uh, originally, like, well, I'm a Jewish guy, so Russian, okay. Russian, Romania. Okay. So the thing is, the thing is, there's a narrative that a lot of the right wing think tanks tried to push to spin the Trump mugshot by saying, well, black folks want to support Trump because, you know, his mugshot makes him look more gangster or whatever. That was like a talking point that was coming from the, the white think tanks. And that was something to um, ingratiate themselves with the far right white supremacists. That's a talking point for them. That wasn't something that was supposed to be complimentary to black people. That was a backhanded compliment. You understand? That was a dig towards black society. Nobody black looked at Trump's mugshot and said, hey, he's one of us now. Nobody did that. And it's extremely racist to even believe that that's what, that would be our mindset. You understand? That was just some white supremacist fantasy nonsense. Um, black people are not really warming up to Trump like that. It's like, okay, Biden is just worse than Trump. We've seen Biden actually undermine us. So the thing that we look at Trump and we kind of look at him with like, um, hey, you know, you, you can't be that much worse. Trump is talking about immigration and talking about deporting people and getting some of these people out of our neighborhoods. That's the thing that makes people a little curious to hear what more Trump has to offer. But all of that mugshot nonsense, no, that's white supremacist fantasy talk. That makes sense? Yeah, I think that was a great explanation. Thank you. There you go. Thank you so much. Yeah, y'all stop that. White people, y'all stop that nonsense. That's not a compliment. And, we, and, and you know it's not a compliment. You know it's an insult. And we know it's an insult. Y'all just think we're too dumb to realize we're, we're being insulted. Well, we, we know we're being insulted when you say that. When they were getting on Fox News, yeah, um, the black community is really warming up to Trump now that he has a mugshot. I mean, yeah. You know, because, you know, black people, they've been going to jail so much, so they, they kind of feel a camaraderie with Trump, don't you think? That's a diss. They're dissing us. And they're trying to make it seem like a compliment. And you know they're dissing us. You understand? 
we know when you're you were insulting us, just like when they parade Lizzo around and say, hey, look at the body positivity. Isn't it great that so many black women can just embrace their bodies no matter what? That's a diss. So they get behind closed doors and snicker. Uh, uh, did you see her fat ass? Oh, God, look at her, you know. That's a diss. Yeah. We know when we're being dissed. We know. We know this. All right. Let's get a lot of folks coming in. Media assassin. Media assassin in the building. Then we get Charlie. All right. Media assassin, hop on. Peace and blessings to you, brother. What's up, uh, man? I got a question and a comment. Uh, when it comes to reparations, you know, I've been listening to you for a while talking about reparations. We can't even get white America and the government to acknowledge the injustice of slavery. Never mind cut a check. You know, and as far as how do you calculate how do you calculate this? How do you put a figure on you know, the crimes committed against us when it comes to slavery, Jim Crow, and now our second wave of slavery, mass incarceration. Mm -hmm. Well, we're going to talk about the antebellum slavery first, and we're going to tackle that. And we're going to put a price of $20 trillion on it to start off. They're going to distribute that the same way they distribute resources and funds to some of these red Native American tribes. The same exact way. There's already a template. So them acting like it's impossible is not impossible. Right. They can easily do it the same exact way. All right. Okay. And, and if I can say one more thing, I listen. I also have heard you say, you know, when it comes to Jews, you know, you kind of don't want to attack the issue, but Jews are collecting the biggest welfare check of, of any country from the United States. I mean, charity starts at home. We give, we cut checks to them, military might. I mean, they they, they have a top 10 miller, military to read, right? They've well, been, they, well, they've been a self-contained unit since 1948. Everybody, yet we, everybody gets checks except us. Ukrainians get checks. The Jewish <laughs> community, they get checks. Native Americans get checks. Illegal immigrants, they get to everybody. So just singling out Jewish people. No, it, 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 I, I agree. I'm not saying singling them out, but right. it seems that when someone raises the issue of, of, of Jews and in, in, in their welfare check, you don't want to address it, though. I'm not going to single them out because they're not the only ones. Why would I single them out? And I can point to all of these other people. The point is, all of these non-black people get checks and we don't. I don't know what's with this thing where y'all want to go after Jewish people and then try to shame people for not joining the Jew bash train. <laughs> no, nah, it, 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 it's not that. But they also, along with this money, play an important role. They're America's, uh, you know, extension of America in the Middle East, they do our bidding so we don't have to. So their check is going, I mean, do you agree what's happening to the Palestinians? I don't, that ain't got nothing to do with me. Okay, nah, but I didn't ask you that, bro. That I, ain't I, oh. a damn. That's, yeah. that ain't got, I, <laughs> I give a damn about what's going on over there. Oh, okay, so check this out. If you give your son or daughter 50 bucks, right? and they leave your home, you're not concerned about what they do with it? If it's my child, yeah. Boy, that was a weak correlation. Uh, that that was a very bad No, well, what, what I'm saying to you, I, I didn't think it was a weak correlation. What I'm saying to you is when we're, when we're funding them to do things that most of the country doesn't even agree with, right? I mean, I'm concerned where my tax dollars are going. Are you concerned that your tax dollars are going to illegal immigrants? Yes, sir. Because you know why, what? Why, then why just focus on the Jews? Why just focus on that? Why not focus on all of it? <laughs> okay, but see, I'm focusing with, with having this discussion on the Jews because, like I said, I just simply asked you a question. Why didn't you want to address the issue? And you said because you wasn't going to single them out. Okay, I got my answer. I wasn't okay. looking to bash anybody. I was just wondering why. You didn't want to address the issue. That's all. 
the issue is everybody's getting oh, okay I, and, like and, I, and i get it and i get right. it bro that's that's all i was looking for right all right thank thank you so much family this plebiscite babble and that's all that was unnecessary plebiscite babble when we're talking about all of the groups getting our resources it's kind of redundant to just find one and just go on and on about that one group. All right. All of these groups are getting money at our expense. What them Jews do. Okay. Yeah, the Jews, some of the Jews are getting money and the Hispanics are getting money and Ukrainians are getting, yeah, a lot of them. Everybody's getting money except us. But let's focus on how come we ain't saying nothing about the Jews. All of them are getting money, sir. Cats want to get into some Illuminati plebiscite babble. Because what happens, y'all sit up here and let these white supremacists trick you into taking your eyes off the ball. See, y'all be hanging around with these white supremacists and they be sitting up here, man, it's not white supremacy, it's really the Jews, dude. And then y'all plebiscite babbling buffoons go along with that. And then y'all start trying to parrot these white supremacist talking points like morons. That's what that's about. And then y'all start trying to plebiscite babble. If y'all don't stop. Charlie, hop on, Charlie. Hey, man. Hey, uh, dude, plebiscite, I got to Google that word, but I think I know what it means from context clues. But um, yeah, I'm a white dude. Um, I don't believe in white supremacy. I think it's all bullshit. I think it's further divide and conquer. And um, I you don't, wait, wait, slow down, slow down, let's slow down, Charlie. Let's slow down. You said you don't believe in it, hell no, bro. I was in the navy, bro. I was in the military, homie. We're all one, we're all one. This oh, is just Charlie, dividing Charlie, now. Charlie. Charlie, the thing is, white supremacy is real and it exists. And I don't know, bro. I didn't even know what I was going to talk about until <laughs> I started listening for a minute. Right. It's the first one I told you, but hold on, hold on. But, Go ahead. We don't have the luck yeah, as a white man. You have the luxury to dismiss white supremacy. We don't as victims of white okay, supremacy. Okay, okay. Oh, hold on, hold on. Do you believe in reincarnation? Who yes. says I wasn't black in my last life? Like, maybe we all got to figure this out. Maybe this is about experience. Well, then, right now. <laughs> I don't life, know, but, man. Like, but, but in, it this just, life, it, in this life, we're dealing with white supremacy. So okay, okay. I, 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 no, I, I get it, dude. I get you got a harder road, bro. Like, I, I'm driving on pavement. You're in gravel. I get it. Right. Uh-huh. But, at, but at the same time, bro, like, you're getting better lessons and experience than I am. Like, my shit. Oh, like, Lord. Dude, no, hold, so, hold on, 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 don't do that. Listen, our white supremacy is making you Negroes better. No, don't do that. Don't do the our. I mean, that's not no, what I said. That. That. That's what that's where a lot of white supremacists use that argument. Our abuse has made you better. It's no, no, let's not go there. But go ahead. Go ahead, sir. Go ahead, Charlie. Oh, Lord, Charlie, you, you're already starting off flimsy. Go <laughs> no, ahead, Charlie. Yeah. Dude, I didn't even know what I was going to talk about. It was the first time I've ever seen one of these Lord, things. Like joined. You're not doing well, Charlie, but go ahead. Oh, come on, come on, come on, Charlie. You can't follow me now. We got to figure this out. Oh, Dude, Lord. like, no, but now I just read. Hey, yeah, the Democrats, us, hey, we taught you how to pick cotton. We taught you. That's a not, hey, hey, brother, that's, you not, what I, that's not what I said. What I'm saying on, Charlie. is I'm by a, divided, but Charlie, by I'm divided, not. Charlie, don't let me go get your clan robe out the cleaners, Charlie. Oh, All right? come on, bro. I, I, I'm a little fella. I, I, I thought you were still one of them robes. Come on, dude. <laughs> I dated a black girl in college, dude. No, no, that's not what I'm saying. But I'm saying is you just buy it like I, you, you, this is more like victim mentality. I, I, right, maybe I'm coming out. Victimized. Okay, thank you, Charlie. I don't want to hear Charlie is Mayo splaining. I don't want to hear Charlie Mayo splain. Oh, goodness. We got this sister here. Lovely sister. California Ivy. California Ivy, come on in, dear. Hi, Tariq. Hi, everyone. Uh, that was interesting. <laughs> Lord. <laughs> How are you, dear? 
I'm great. Just listening in for a long time listener, first time caller. Thank you. Um, you know, I wanted to make a comment about um, something that a previous caller said a few uh, while back about, yeah. you know, segregation and the Board of Education. And in my head, I've been going back and forth with it of like, OK, are we at the point where do we do segregate our education? Because, you know, we have that whole entire case where the Supreme Court decided to, I believe it was like a, a venture capital company that was black owned, stopped the venture capital company from giving grants to uh, small businesses that were black female owned. And because of that, the reason because the reason why they stopped it was simply because of DEI and they said it was a form of um, um, segregation. It wasn't fair to for them to um, leave out other minorities and right. other they race. Made, because they made it race based. Exactly. And I use that same theory to to our education system and our schooling now. And I'm 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 big on accountability. And I, I, I'm really big on, sometimes I feel like, I know one of your callers back then said, you know, I'm glad that, you know, the Republicans have an might have an opportunity to give us back reparations because it proves to the Democrats, like, you know, you had your chance and you messed that up. And I sometimes take that same theory about what happened with the Supreme Court onto the education system where, it, is, it, is it a time where we hold the Board of Education accountable for not putting in the set the same um, attention and reprimands and policies to make sure that all of our students are always up to this to the actual minimum level of what it takes to make sure America is always competitive. Because America and the United Kingdom, I believe, have like the lowest educational system. I was watching a Vice documentary about it a few months ago, and they said South Korea and Japan are like the top two, but like the United Kingdom and the United States were like the bottom of all the countries in the world. And, and and I always think I'm like, okay, is segregation just another way of saying a cultural divide? Is it something where the culture of the haves versus the have nots instead of the segregation of like the blacks versus whites? And right. I wonder if that's a system that might actually work in today's era, especially with how kids are taking in information today. I think the, the old school way of a classroom with a chalkboard isn't maybe working for today's kids where they're always ingesting media that's like super fast with a short attention span. I was just thinking about like if, if that's something that might actually work, if that's a possibility for where we could go in the future. Well, let's go back to the, um, the Brown versus the Board of Education case. We're talking about education. Initially, a lot of folks don't know what that case was really about. It was about the black schools getting financial resources. They wanted equal resources first that the white schools were getting, the black schools were being underfunded. So they were trying to get extra money, the same amount of money. What happened, the NAACP got involved and they said, hey, you know, don't worry about the money. Let's integrate the schools. Let's just have the black kids go to school with the white kids. And that's when the whole thing just kind of blew up in another direction. Right. So or, so they thought the solution was to ship and bust the black kids to the white schools. But what would happen was the black kids got segregated within the white schools because they started to put the black kids in special education. Right. If any kind of behavioral problem or if they said, hey, I don't know what that question means. Whoops. Special ed. So they started to segregate the kids and then they built these suburbs and then bust the kid, white kids back out into the suburbs. So it was a whole cluster flop. And it, it, it goes back to the resources. We just mm -hmm. need the money. We're going That's what right I was going to say, because it might just be history repeating itself. I mean, if we, if we lack the resources, then what's to prove to say, you know, if this does get revoked again, you know, what is to say that black people are not banging at the door at the White House saying, hey, guys, we need the resources to make sure that our black kids stay competitive and up right. to par. Right. And that's why reparations, we're going right for the gusto. Let's give us the checks. Don't give us reparations in the form of education because you give me a check and I get my own education. Um, so, yeah, we need those reparations checks. Sister, my you're, you're my only thing about reparations <laughs> is I yeah. definitely believe that black people earn it. My only thing is like I'm, you know, I'm first generation American, so I understand my role and my place. Um, and I, I want to make sure that the people that get reparations are actually 100% deserve it. And it's just not a bunch of people just claiming and pronouncing their pronouns as African-American. And it's actually people that are actually here, you know, 
like from this country because I would hate for reparations just to be given to people that identify as black just for monetary gain. You know what I'm saying? Right. Now, where's your family from, by the way? Um, so my dad is Native American, but my mom is from Trinidad and my grandma's Cuban. So I have like a huge Caribbean roots from like Cuba, Belize and Trinidad on my mom's side. But on my dad's side, he's Native American. Okay. Cool. Um, Native American or foundational Black American? Which one? Uh, he's a uh, Cherokee, uh, grew up in South Carolina. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Is he a Black Cherokee? Yeah, Black Cherokee. Okay, got it. Okay. Cool, cool. Um, you're a producer. What, what shows have you produced, dear? Uh, so much. Um, <laughs> um, um, most of my producing started off in like live entertainment. So like the biggest shows that you've seen on broadcast television from like Idol, X Factor, Super Bowl, Oscars. Um, yeah. And then I do a lot of um, fish out of water concept shows. Like I've done stuff for Cardi B. I did her show. Um, yeah. A bunch of stuff for Meta and Snapchat. So kind of like oh. in the digital fun content space. I like to make content that makes people laugh and happy. Yes, indeed. <laughs> you, you, were, you were CAA? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. They they tried to sign me for a TV deal a long time ago. It was some. It was some. Uh, it was some real weird stuff. All right, well, yeah. I have to. Talk. <laughs> it was weird, but but shout out to you, sis. I like to see you know folks doing their thing in the industry. So that's what's up. I All appreciate right, it. Thanks Thank for you. keeping the conversation going. Absolutely. Thank you so much. Oh man, heavy stuff, man. Heavy, heavy stuff. Great conversation tonight, man. Great conversation. Man. All right, let me get up out of here, man. I've been here long enough. But hey, man, this debate was a monster. Joe Biden is looking bad. The Democrats are looking horrible right now. And they are scrambling. Tomorrow morning, y'all going to hear some splaining. Y'all about to hear splaining. They're going to try to spin it. They're going to have to get Gavin Newsom out here. You're about to see Gavin run out here. Um, they're going to get all of their Negro flunkies, the Congressional Black Caucus. They're going to be working overtime. Family, you're about to see these Twitter space rooms loaded with Democratic shills and tethers and paid ops who's going to try to discredit us, some of us influencers. You're about to see a lot of that. It's about to be on. These next few months are about to be very interesting, ladies and gentlemen. But anyway, ma'am, go to hiddenhistorymuseum.com, speaking of education, and get the children's book, Hidden Heroes from A to Z, a phenomenal children's book called Hidden Heroes from A to Z at hiddenhistorymuseum.com. Um, also, yeah, my birthday is coming up Monday, guys. My birthday is coming up, guys. I'd be forgetting. My birthday is coming up, so the birth birthday shout-outs and the birthday wishes, I welcome all of it. The cash app is dollar sign King Flex 818. A birthday blessing won't hurt nobody. Um, also, don't forget microphonecheck.com. We're going to keep you posted on when the, the pre sale tickets for the theaters are going up. It will be up at microphonecheck.com, and you got to go see that when it hits theaters, ladies and gentlemen. And also, Get your Rootwork deodorant at rootworkstyle.com. The best deodorant in the game right now. Rootworkstyle.com. Uh, cruising through in that black on black with my family. Bending corners, triple tinted with hella B. Before them, I didn't think this could ever be. Rowing up hella smart, removing any.